Hey, everybody. Um, excuse me as I fumble around with uh, everything from a technical perspective, but uh, oh, and I probably probably should log in uh, <laughs> off screen. But I wanted to get the uh, video going so you guys aren't waiting for too long. They think I'm not here. No, they know that I'm here now. Okay, so we're gonna start with the um, with the five thousand dollar buy-in. Um, all right, I feel like I should do more of an intro. Welcome everybody <laughs> to the stream. Uh, today I'm gonna be playing uh, two bracelet events online, and who knows, maybe some high stakes PLO if if, uh, if I get too bored or lose some tables. Um, and the stream's going well, but um, yeah, the, you know, two tabling, um, presumably eight, eight or nine handed, um, Nolan and Hold'em will be a little bit slow, so so I look forward to uh, messages from you all um, to to help pass the time, and uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to uh, ask me any questions you have. Um, but yeah, let's just uh, get started playing. So so this one has been going on for um, it's been going on for about an hour. And the next one is starting right now. I'm gonna just hop into this and see how it goes. Looks like the table's sitting over here. Um, I'll bring that down here. My volume is kind of loud and annoying, which might annoy you guys. Um, but yeah, excited to play some poker. <laughs> um, Doug Barr, uh, that YouTube vid <laughs> with me cussing. It was awesome. Looking forward to more. Thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I was not comfortable with it, uh, with that part of it, but, uh, but I had fun making it. Uh, Poker Dog says ready for some GTO action. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not the most uh, solver-based element hold'em tournament player because I haven't studied them. Um, I have for PLO. Um, David, hello. Bodyguard, hello. Owen, what's up, what's up? Moonlight Master, thanks for being here. Good to see you. Mukla's saying I should come to Dubai. I've actually, I mean, are there games that I could, could get into? That sounds fun. Um, I'm going to move some chat over here where I can see it more readily, perhaps. But yeah, like like I said, you know, it's gonna be kind of slow. Um, I'll I'll join the second table soon after I like play a hand or two and make sure that I know how to click the betting buttons and, and everything. Still, um, I probably should have told Instagram that I'm going live. So let's see if I can do that now. Um, I'm gonna need a link, which I know how to find because I tweeted it. Yeah, so we're on a Moonlight Master. Thanks for fielding those questions. We're on a five-minute delay, which I don't know what's an appropriate delay for these, um, but that's what I went with. Um, okay, copy link. But yeah, this will this will be fine. I mean, I. I like playing tournaments. I'm like no limit holding tournaments. Even I'm going to make some mistakes, but but I've um, I've been uh, well, not been. I was studying a little bit of heads up no limit um, for a little while, and so I am better than I would have been uh, last year, at least. Okay. Okay, so this is me taking a picture for my uh, Instagram story to tell people to show up. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> I'm kind of a fish with Instagram. We'll add the link while, um, all right, we have our first 
hand. I'm going to let it go. Okay. We did it. Put my phone down now. So yeah, I, I assume you'll be, well, chat will be catching up now to the beginning of my conversation. Uh, I'm going to just type to you guys to throw some questions my way. Because the action is slow so far. I will, um, in a little bit, add a second table. Um, definitely, hey, uh, like I said, I haven't streamed in a while. If um, audio or if anything is wrong, let me know. Um, I guess I, you probably will anyways. But Hubert, hello, hello. Thank you for the good luck wishes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I know I don't have chat up on this overlay because I kind of threw this together last minute. Um, well, but the, from, from something the Rhino team gave me. Juggernaut, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the vlog. I'm I'm hoping to do a few more WSOP vlogs, like some serious one. I did the the one kind of joke one. Uh, I'm hoping to do more serious ones, it's, uh, and I think I think I'm going to keep improving. Obviously, I'm I'm not going to play like 20 events, so I, I'm not going to improve that much. But I think each one I'll improve a little bit and get the pace a little bit faster. Yeah, Moonlight Master, some uh, some some PLO side action sounds interesting. I'm gonna. I'm going to wait until later in the night. Um, like, I, I kind of want to see how well I handle playing a couple of tables. This is, I mean, it's shockingly slow. So I guess I'll just go ahead and add the second table. I mean, I'm going to, it's not like I'm going to decide not to two table the tournaments uh, based on any information I get. Um, so we'll add that one as well. And I do have a two tabling view. I think it, actually, you guys let me know. Do you want to see um, one table at a time with you know the potential for me to, to screw up and not show you the right table, um, but the action's bigger, you know? Um, or do you just want a two table view, which is going to look kind of like this, but the, it's probably off. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to fix this a little bit. Um, I guess I can do that now. Uh, yeah, would you prefer this? I'm going to move my seat to uh, down here because that's what I like to do. Um, so yeah, let me know what you prefer. If you like looking at both tables at the same time or, um, or one at a time, I think I'm going to go with two at a time until you tell me otherwise. Uh, and then it looks like I need to move this a little more. That's probably good. Okay. Queen Jack, we can play. Um, what are the blinds? I have no idea what I'm, <laughs> what I'm supposed to be. Able to. I haven't thought about the poker for one second yet. All right, we got some questions. Um, Matthew asking some questions about how to make his COVID go away. I think you just have to wait. Um, Richard, thank you. I'm glad volume's good. Steve, thank you very much. I'm glad uh, you appreciated uh, me going out of my comfort zone a little bit. Uh, on that fake, uh, well, we'll call it fun, WSMP vlog. John, thank you. Trey Banks says, kind of specific, but if you had uh, had to start over with 5K, I assume, uh, would you play $50 tourn tournaments or cash games? Assuming soft tournaments. Um, so I would... You know, I'm not the best guy to ask because I'm, so this is a spot where like my hand is pretty reasonable bluffing hand. However, I don't feel like it's gonna work and so I'm not gonna do it. Um, that's your, your deep level analysis. Um, basically, I think that people on this turn, like I think that imposition is gonna check some aces back, but then on this turn, everybody's gonna check an ace. And aces get played. Ace X gets played a lot preflop. It's also a spot where, like, if somebody has, I mean, I don't know, nine eight, they can talk themselves into a call as well. Um, this half pot sizing. I mean, I can't read too much. I'm not going to call with queen high. Um, so to answer your question about uh, tournaments or cash games, 
it really depends on your your ambitions and honestly your uh kind of ceiling um and like how much time you can put into poker cash games i think can be more lucrative but they require you to be a stronger player than tournaments do so if you're somebody who's playing kind of part-time um or you don't want to study that hard i think that tournaments are safer because tournaments for similar stakes are softer than cash games um i think cash game like i said have, have more potential on the, on the higher end for earn however yeah it takes it takes a lot of work and it takes you know it takes like a lot of skill um hopefully that's helpful Frank, welcome. Rapunzel, hello, hello. Ross, thank you very much. Uh, Trace, never seen a solver for PLO. Yeah, it does take longer than Gnome and Hold'em solver. So Munker solver is the main one that you would see. Also, uh, however, I mean, this is this is self-promotion, but I actually think it's the best tool available. Um, Vision is a tool that's on runatonce.com that will... Um, that has the Sims already run. And so it doesn't take... Uh, really any time at all. You just look up different situations. Um, Ace-10 off is a fold there. Um, you just look up different spots that, that we've already run for you. And um, I think it's a fantastic way to learn because the interface is really user-friendly. More TBC. Good to see you. It has been too long. Uh, Hubert asked if I recognize some of the nicknames on the table. Uh, so Bodogari seems familiar. I don't. Re I never remember who anybody is. Fresh Prince, it looks like I have a note on. Hopefully it's not an offensive one. Actually, I don't even know how to click on it, so. <laughs> uh, he made a loose open in PLO. Not that helpful. Um, Doug Barras, why am I studying heads up in L? I'm gonna take on Hellmuth. Uh, I would like to, that'd be fun. But um, no, I'm, I was, I've been struggling to get a heads up PLO challenge here in, uh, well, on WSOP.com, there are some people who would play me in PLO, but not, uh, but I don't really want to travel again for a big challenge. And, uh, and so I can't like, I can't go play on poker stars, for example. So I'm hoping, I was hoping that if I play some no limit, maybe I could get like a half, half challenge here. Um, or maybe even a no limit challenge here. I kind of have put some lines out with, with no takers. So I don't know if that's something I'll continue to focus a lot on or focus on um but i've had fun learning actually okay gerhardt says uh more spencer and farah cameos yeah i think that that would be wise of me as well thank you uh trey banks am i in need of a video editor content manager honest so i have an editor and and like uh well an editor and a a very part-time kind of YouTube helper. It, I could maybe use more help during the WSOP because I know like my vlogs that I'm trying to turn around quickly, um, that's really challenging. Uh, and uh, like if I, let's say I make like a day three and I've put out, a, trying to turn, turn a vlog around in 24 hours. Um, okay, we're getting the two tables mostly. Mm. You were says three tables. All right, you guys are liking too. Cool. Um, anyways, there's a chance that I could use some help during this because, like, if I have three days in a row, basically my editor's like busting his ass to to get it out one day and then doing it again the next day, and he's pretty tired. Um, so it might help to to relieve him a little bit or to have him, uh, you know, even like an assist might be nice. Um, I'm going to stick with two for now. That seems to be the majority, although there were differing opinions. Um, but it's just less clicking around for me. More time to look at the, uh, like, more mental bandwidth to look at the chat. Trey Banks hates playing tournaments that are big gap in stakes. It feels terrible when you bust a bigger stake and then run like God in the lower. Yeah. I mean, these are, I mean, there's a big gap in stakes, however... The 500 is like, uh, I think you can enter four times. You can make it a 2K if you want to. So I'm going to try to. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, switching views will, will. I mean, I'm okay at it. I got some hotkeys set up, but 
there's definitely one less thing to worry about. And um, I don't know, especially let's say that we end up losing one of these tournaments and I replace it with like a heads up PLO cash game, then I definitely don't want to be clicking back and forth um, while making tough decisions. Not that that's a problem. I don't know if I can get action anywhere. Raz, yeah. I would like, I like I said, yeah. I mean, I you, I know you're chatting before you heard that, but I'd like to I'd like to play an NL challenge, but I need to find an opponent. Um, that's not saying I'm going to play everybody in the world, but I I would play a lot of people. Um, yeah, I play a lot of people. Sylvain, thank you for the good luck wishes. Uh, good call, Moonlight. The, so the right table is the 5300, for those of you who aren't zoomed in. I could probably figure out how to add text that indicates that. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. All right. Uh, that's, we're not going to keep it that big, don't worry. <laughs> uh, OK. I'm timing out. Uh, OK, we're calling that. Actually, my sound is actually not loud enough. Uh, Jack Deuce Deuce, so we have a spade. He's raising from the cutoff. We're going to continue against like a reasonable sizing. So this is just a check call. Um, I'll take it from there. Let's add some more text. I guess I should play my hand. Um, 500 on a turn is a really weird sizing. I, I don't, I wouldn't use this sizing. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Obviously, you get like a great price, uh, and I mean, reasonably good chance to have three outs. But yeah, I think that is. I mean, it could be a thing, but I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Um, let me put up this text I'm behind on uh, chat now, but but keep the chat coming if I miss some I'm sorry and feel free to ask uh, a question again if I If I don't answer it um, There are actually more Seemingly I, I actually I don't know the viewership numbers, but there are more people chatting than I expected. So I appreciate it. Thank you There we go. <laughs> it's not the most beautiful text, but it's going to have to work for today. I actually normally would be pretty picky and change fonts, and maybe later I'll do that if I, if I get bored enough. Um, all right, here's a playable hand. Uh, so info tab, oh, I see. Thank you for the... It's going to be kind of small, but... There it is. Uh, so we're going to three bet two. Um, don't consult. Don't don't take my sizings to the bank. I'm I. I'm not the expert at that. I mean, so we're getting four bet, and I don't think. Okay, how many big blinds deep are we? I mean, I don't think we're getting, well, we're obviously not folding kings pre. <clears throat> are we getting it in or are we calling? I think I lean towards call. Although this under the gun plus one player is in the tank. The reason I lean towards call is because I don't expect um, I just don't expect him to do this with jacks and stack off. Um, and the SPR is such, like the stacks are such that if I make it 
and what can I make it? 7K and full, like it, it just, uh, I think looks too, too credible. And so, let me make sure my time bank works. Um, I'm pretty sure my time bank auto, auto clicks, but yeah, I'll start with the call. Um, I actually don't, don't love that time banking, but I'm talking to you guys, so. Um, and I mean, he's playing very fast too. Um, I don't know what to make of that. He did have the, uh, I kind of just want to raise, get it in now, the way that he's playing, because I, I think he's unlikely to, I think he's unlikely to, to like shove uh, whatever, ace five on a turn seven. So I think it's more likely that we get it in good now, uh, like we did. And so that's a nice result. I think his get in's too light on the flop. Um, but I mean, it's a, it's a really weird spot. I don't think his four bet is bad necessarily. I think that using a strategy where you don't cold call anything at these stack depths is, is reasonable. And therefore, you want to choose some of your best hands to cold four bet, and tens is a very good hand. So I think it's okay. But but by the time, I don't know. I guess like is flop sizing. No, it's not that bad. I don't know. Once I'm in raise, like I have to make a decision. Um, I'm trying to think what I would do in his spot. Uh, had I four bet and then saw the flop. Um, I would definitely bet flop something. I'd probably bet a little smaller, but it's pretty reasonable. And then once he gets raised, I don't know. I, I think like <laughs> you have to decide if somebody in my shoes is going to, is it like, it's not a very popular spot to bluff raise flop. Um, and so, I mean, you kind of have to make a read here with 6-5 suited, happy to call. I know I'm missing some chat. I still appreciate the chat as long as you uh, have, have some patience with me um, while I play some hands. So 6-5 suited. Very nice hand that did not flop well, so presumably we'll be folding here. All right. And my master says, let's spew a little. Um, and I'm trying to scroll back up. Hubert asks, how's, how's my kid? Uh, any cool stories lately? He's great. He's, um, it's funny. He started out, he seemed like, at first I thought he was going to be a lot like me. Uh, when I was a kid, I was very, um, uh, surprisingly, I was very uh, quiet, well-behaved kid. Um, it was really like, interested in learning stuff and he he is really interested in learning stuff but he's like he's pretty wild um which has been a a surprise um but he's really uh he had a, like a early he had a phase of like being really into letters and numbers and i was like oh he's like super genius and then he kind of then he like plateaued for a while <laughs> and then everybody else caught up um but now he's just in the last like few months um, he's gotten really into this show number blocks. I think it's BBC. Um, it's so good if you have kids and want them to learn, like it's, it's teaches math really, really well. And I, I didn't show it to him. He found it on his own the YouTube algorithm, found it for him. And he's now just like, he asks Farah math questions and she thinks that he's asking for real. Cause he wants to know the answer. Like, you know, uh, well, he said, like, he'll say like eight times four, but he says, what are eight fours or what are four eights? And sometimes she'll get it wrong and he'll correct her. Um, so that show has been, been cool. And so like his hobby right now is math, which, which, you know, makes me proud. <laughs> I like math. Uh, six, five suited again. Let's, let's do better this time. Uh, hep. I'm not, I'm not going to read your name. It says, uh, what would you say is the best exploit against two wide button calling range in six max Omaha? Keeping in mind, OOP default strat is checking a high frequency. Gotcha. So if you're up against somebody who's calling too many hands on the button, um, 
or yeah, uh, when you open an, an earlier position and they call. Well, I think I think you don't need to alter like your CBET strategy that much. Um, obviously, they're going to connect with like like a very common cold calling hand is king king. So just as a percentage of their range, they're going to have king king less frequently. So you don't have to be quite as afraid as you normally would be on a king high board. Um, but I wouldn't alter strategy that much just in the hand reading. I would keep in mind that they have, you know, a much wider range as, um, as the streets progress. I would say you might, you probably want to open slightly tighter on their button, not by a lot, but slightly tighter. Um, a lot of people take the opposite, opposite approach. And when somebody's too loose, they're like, oh, I just want to get in pots with them. But the way you take advantage of somebody who's too loose is to, is to just play better hands and then their their mistake of being too loose kind of punishes itself i mean basically it punishes itself anyways even if you don't really adjust especially like flop and turn c-bet strategies but just you know hand read a little differently as it goes um so here we have an interesting spot um where i'm in a cold four bet and it's you know whatever i mean what do you want to call it it's a bluff kind of um Sizing, I'm not so sure. Um, again, like I spoke about, you know, not cold calling as a reasonable strategy. I think here, like, maybe I have a couple cold calls, but mostly I think cold forebetting when I continue and just, you don't use like polarized hands like ace three offsuit, you use just good hands. And now I have a tough decision to make. I think he's got ace king and then queens plus. Um, there's, what is that, 11, 12 in there. So I'm getting, I need 40% equity. Um, do I know anything about this? I think this is close. 40% um, equity. What are the chances he ever has like ace queen? I, I think that like, as I don't know who this guy is and there's enough of a chance that he shows, if he sh ever shows up with ace queen, it's a clear call. So, <laughs> or ace five suited, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's a call. And we're off to a pretty good start in this one. Um, I am actually going to take, I'm going to take like two minutes of this break um, and then be right back and I'll chat with you guys for a few minutes. So I'll be right back. All right, hey, um, ace five suited is a better jamming hand than ace queen, by the way. I know I said ace queen and then maybe looked surprised when he showed up with ace five suited, but that makes that makes more sense. Uh, poker income asks if I could turn up the volume. I can't by that much. Um, I can a little bit, but I'm afraid that uh, if I turn it up too much, then it like peaks or whatever it's called. Um, so hopefully the problem is like when I get close to the mic, then I'm loud enough. But when I'm back here, it's not loud enough and and i do talk quietly so i 
I understand. Uh, that is not the best, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Uh, AM asked whatever happened to the challenge with Bill Perkins. Um, it's a good question. So I, I, you know, I tried to arrange some, some more matches of like some more sessions a few times. Um, but he's very busy and, um, it's been, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, honestly. Did I ever play PLO against Sammy Farha? I did in a, I never played him heads up. I played in a ring game a few times. Yeah. He's a lot of, he's, he's a lot of fun to play with. He's, he's funny. Yeah, Trey Banks, yeah. Um, Twitter, uh, yeah, probably, so my DMs aren't open on Twitter, so send me um, a message, like a, just at me, and then I'll, I'll DM you uh, at some point. Daniel Chris says, what is this two-card game? I know. It seems to be off to a good start, though. Jay Nandez. How's it going, Fernando? Thanks for the good luck wishes. Yeah, it's fun to... I mean, I, I do miss the streaming. I, don't, I, can't, I can't do as much as you do, but a little bit here and there uh, won't kill me. <laughs> Doug Barr points out that, that uh, the guy that stacked off, presumably, maybe a different one, opened a 40 suited on the button in previous hand, which I did not pay attention to because I'm talking to you guys. Um, let's see, let's see. Any elite giveaway? You know, I didn't coordinate at all with the Run It Once team on these streams, so this is going to be presumably a, a giveaway-less stream, but I mean, maybe when, if, I, if I win a bracelet, we'll do some, we'll do some giveaways because <laughs> why not? Uh, do I want to play limp only? I don't know but I'll just limp call this one. So a decent flop for my range, not a good flop for my hand. Um, it's kind of the, the quality of hand that I like betting. Uh, like by that I mean not strong enough to comfortably check call, but almost strong enough to comfortably check call. So it makes kind of a good semi-bluff backdoor stuff going on. Um, left table, I mean, I'll, I would, I, I could play raise only from the small blind on with no ante. I kind of prefer that just because it's more interesting. Jason says, watch guy is chewy. I did not know that. That's very useful information. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we'll just give him the the red tag. I need offsuit. We'll fold. Eric, very kind words. Um, I would read. I would read them, but they're just compliments, so I'm not going to read them. But thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's see. All right, let's. I'm gonna scroll down and catch up because I don't. I don't. I just don't. I have a lot of comments now, and it seems like there are a lot of you there, which is great. It, again, if I miss something, just go ahead and um, ask again. Um, you will not be bothering me, and I will do my best. <laughs> Moonlight Master, yeah, PLO is is a little more fun. Yeah, the ace king call. I mean, I think, like I said, if he's got, uh, I kind of want to. I mean, this is too loose, but I kind of want to play it. And also, this is a. Um, this is the reentry, so I would like to gamble and get more reentries in, so I could like. Well, I don't want to reenter, but I, I'm happy to take a flip and then. Um, re-enter re if I lose uh, for the chance to build up a big stack and make this a fun night for all of us to remember. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to pull up an equity calculator because I don't know if that's against the rules, but like ace-king against against a range of 
ace king and queens plus i think would make it not a call but starting to get close and then if you add in a few other hands it, it just becomes kind of clearer so i'm gonna go with uh small sizing here i need to go that small um Bodog Ari, who I think is a regular opening the 3x, I didn't know if you, I guess this deep, it's got to be fine. Um, so this c-bet with jack-8, I mean, it's it's a value bet. Not everything's a value bet or a bluff, but um, I think I get called by a lot of under pairs. Obviously, I get called by some over pairs, like 9s and 10s and jacks. Um, but also, like, I fold out over cards, which is nice. This is a really interesting turn. Um, I can get one more street here on the turn with like against sevens and sixes, which is kind of attractive, but also I just think it starts to get too thin. So I'm going to check back. And we'll just show this down. Did not win. Um, so... Hubert's saying it's too loud now that I adjusted the mic. Please let me know. I know we're on a five minute delay, but maybe some other of you will say that. AJ asks, do we have the infrastructure in place for Rio to go live in every legal state when you're ready? Nevada is tough. Nevada is tough. Um, so the short answer is, is, is sort of yes. I mean, so we have, um, you know, Run It Once Poker got acquired by Rush Street Interactive, which um, you may know by the name Bet Rivers. They have they they have uh, online casino and sports book in several states under the name Bet Rivers. Um, they actually have some in other states under different names, but Bet Rivers is the main brand. Um, they have it. I mean, we have some expertise, but they also have, uh, well, we are they now. <laughs> um, we are them now. But uh, they also have a lot of regulatory expertise in a lot of states. And um, I, I can't say with absolute certainty that we will be in every single um, I think this is just fold under the gun, king, queen, off, out, open. Um, every single regulated state at the time we launch, but the goal is to be as many uh, in as many as we possibly can be, and we definitely have like the ability to to get licenses for sure. They've gotten licenses in uh, for for online gaming in a whole bunch of places. They've done very well with that. Um, also, outside of writing reps, what is the best way to push your state for online poker legalization? Honestly, to be honest, I, I think that I think it's really tough. I think that the 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 way that the needle is going to get moved is actually by large companies uh, lobbying um, for regulation in more states. I think as in, I, I definitely don't want to discourage any individuals from from trying to. Uh, from trying to move things forward and, and contact your reps and et cetera, et cetera. However, it's tough. I, as an individual, I don't know what to do uh, in order to, to help it out. Either jack seven seems close against middle position. Um, not sure. Small three bet on the left table. I mean, I guess we're, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're calling. It's not a great calling hand, but it's so cheap that I don't know what else to do. Right table is going to be a check call. Um, K. Gerhardt says 2, 25.50. PLO game's running. Yeah, I feel... Well, for now, I feel like this is good. Um, I think I want to have the... I'm not going to do anything here with no backdoor or anything. I think I want to have... Um, if I drop a table because I bust out of one of these, which it doesn't seem like it's going to happen for a while because I tripled up on the right and the uh, the left table is a 4x entry or, you know, 3 re-entry. Um, but if I do, then I'll definitely add a table. I shouldn't say definitely. I'll probably add a table. Um, right table now, I'm only beating a bluff. However, I am beating bluffs. Uh, he's going to have some, like, ace-king with a diamond. Um some pure bluffs, and then I also have outs against, uh, let's say, like King Queen that's going for one street, um, or whatever Queen X rather that's going for one street. Um, even have the straight flush out. I don't think it makes sense for me to have a leading range on this river. Yeah, me drawing dead, literally dead, because my straight flush out would have been a disaster. K. 
Kevin Gregor, Gregory, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, new to the channel, thanks for the stream, good luck, thank you very much, welcome to the channel. I'm, uh, I'm still figuring out this YouTube channel, um, started it last year, and, um, you know, started, like, my main focus has been uh, educational content that is not as advanced as, like, uh, you know, run at once training videos, but because I want it to appeal to a, a wider audience and people have liked them, but they haven't gotten the super, um, they haven't had the reach of, well, the, just the last couple of videos. Um, and, uh, the last couple of videos, uh, that have been vlogs, people have liked a lot more. So I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying a bunch of different things and I like to hear feedback. Um, and actually like, this is a great medium for you know, what I could do better on the channel in general outside of streams, because streams are going to be, um, you know, not super common. Um, Abud, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, well, thanks for being a, a five-year member of Run It Once, and I'm glad to hear it's getting better and better for you. Um, more five cards and six card PLO. Okay. Um, they're actually, I think will be, I think in the not so distant future, we'll have some more um, some more things for you as a five card PLO player. Um, so stay tuned. Yeah. Five minute delay as hunger panda said, and David said as well. And moonlight said as well, everybody said it. <laughs> Eric with some more kind words. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. John, Sim John Simons or Simmons Simons, I'm going to say, um, asks a very good question. He says, you know, since, you know, I'm well known and respected in the poker world, do I feel pressure to comment on the big news stories, both in and out of poker? Um, it's funny. So I, I would like to comment on it, on kind of everything that comes up. Um, cause I would like to I mean, I have opinions like anybody else, but also if I, ha if I have an opinion that I think could be helpful or some insight that I think would be helpful, I'd like to talk about it. Um, I actually get, I do feel a lot of pressure, not pressure to say things, but actually pressure <laughs> that, that works against it so that I don't say things because I, I feel a lot of pressure to be right. So I think I have the, I give off the impression that I'm very thoughtful and um, you know, I've, I've put a lot of time and energy into forming my opinions and uh, have a lot of experience in poker. So essentially, um, I feel as though m anything I say is going to carry a lot of weight and actually that creates a fear of, of sp speaking about things when I'm not extremely confident in my position, um, which, you know, I'm never extremely confident in my position. So actually there was, um, there was a video I made for you, for YouTube, like, <laughs> I don't know, at, at the time that the recent high stakes cheating scandals broke um, with some comments on it. And I ended up um, just being really anxious about coming out with it because at first I was like, okay, I wanna, I wanna come out with something soon because everybody's talking about this and I, I have some things to say. And then once I was rewatching the video, I was like, ah, oh, I wish I said that a little bit differently, but we had already like filmed for a while and edited for a couple of days. Um, and then I, I basically, I was just like, I don't feel comfortable enough that, uh, basically I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself if I do have like a public opinion about something important. Um, and some, especially if it's like somewhat, you know, confrontational, like, uh, commenting on cheating is commenting on individual people sometimes. Um, then I do want to be, <laughs> okay. Richard Simmons, I'm. <sighs> I don't want to have to block you. Okay. Thanks. Moonlight master. Uh, I have to figure out how to do that, but I'll do it soon. Okay. How do I make somebody a mod? Um, okay. I am 
I'm not great at this. Community, add moderator. Moonlight Master, is that not working? So is your name something that's not Moonlight Master? Hold on. I'll type. Okay, I think I figured it out, Moonlight. Add moderator. All right, I did it. Thanks. Um, cool. Um, yeah, uh, your boy Vic says, yeah, the straight flush versus straight flush would have been a disaster. Ace 10 offsuit, I'm not sure if I want to be playing or not. Let's just go for it. Let's get crazy. Anyway, so where I was going with that is, um, yeah, actually my, the, the pressure of people kind of expecting, not necessarily expecting me to comment on things, but expecting my opinions to to be right a lot. Like basically I, I feel like I have the reputation that, um, I'm gonna go with a small bet here. I'm not entirely sure what I wanna do or what I'm supposed to do, um, but this will work. Uh, but yeah, I think you guys get what I'm trying to say. I put a lot of pressure on myself uh, and I think that like I've built up a reputation um, by, in large part, you know, being careful about what I say and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the the downside of that is that I guess people tend to. Uh, well, now I put that pressure on on myself because people expect me to know what I'm talking about all the time, and I'm human just like everybody else, and I have a lot of bad opinions. We're actually about to, well, not about to, but we're very close to 10K subscribers, which is a pretty cool milestone um, for my YouTube channel. 9,919. Um, so if we go deep in this, I think we could we could, we could, could surpass that. Um, my play with Ace-10 there. So I don't know if this is a flop that... Uh, that I should be betting well. So I have the overpair advantage. And as far as 10x, I mean, we both have a decent amount of 10x. I think that starting with a small bet with my range works decently. Um, and then I do a lot of checking on the turn. I think ace 10 could check this turn. I do think I run into a lot of under pairs, um, which are just going to check back, but that's not the end of the world. Um, I went with two thirds, which I think. Basically, I want to pick a sizing that I can bet, like if I can can still value bet worse than 10. So like two thirds, two thirds, can I do that with kings? Can I do that with ace queen? I think so, but um, I think so. Kim used to rail on full tilt back in the rail heaven days, miss those days sometimes. I miss those days too. Those were a lot of fun uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, the, those, you just can't get well, actually, I guess I guess GG has high stakes games going pretty regularly, but it's not not as regularly as they were um, in the full tilt days. And I'm also stuck here in the U.S. Um, let's go ahead and raise nines. I wonder how many levels I have to rebuy in this one. Um, okay, I got a full day seven suited against that. Nines, uh, I don't know. I mean, I have a big advantage in um, aces, kings, and ace, king, but I don't need to bet my full range. I mean, I think this hand just wants to go to showdown. I don't need to bluff with this. Um, so I think it's just, I'm going to check down and you know, probably fold at some point. 
I mean, it's tempting. Like, I think in theory this might be a bluff because I'm so low in my range uh, at this point. But I just don't think I get him to fold enough better hands. So I'm not going to go for it. By him, I mean an unknown player. I don't have reads on him. Um, we do show down against. 8-6 suited. Um, he could bluff his hand on the turn, I think. Or, I mean, he you can do whatever you want. I don't know. Uh, Ryan, I'm not in Vancouver anymore. I was for many years. Um, but... We're settled in Vegas now. Um, I've been here most of the time uh, since like mid 2015 when I moved here and uh, my wife and I got married. Um, and I've taken some trip back to Vancouver, including for, for the Galphon challenges. I was there for five months, but I'm mostly here these days. I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess Richard's uh, having some fun. I don't think it's uh, particularly funny, but Moonlight Master is getting put to work. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Good question, Borg. So Borg asks, what hands do you raise in Omaha cash if you know for sure you'll get five to seven? Mostly shallow callers. So I'm going to three bet this queen 10 suited and then I'm going to answer. Um, the Basically, you want to be playing high cards and high suits. So like basically any four cards, nine or higher, are going to be quite valuable. Um, so this is an interesting board. Where I'm trying to think, I can't fold out ace four, ace deuce, ace six, but I could fold out some. I, I think I should bet. I'm just trying to decide what sizing. So I think I can have a large sizing and a small sizing here. Um, that sizing works to fold out like king queen. Now, I have a hard time getting him to fold this turn, I feel like, but my hand is such a good bluffing hand. I don't know. I'm going to start with a check. Um, bottom of range. It's really hard to rep this board, though. Uh, it's really hard to rep this board. I don't know if, you know, I don't know who he is, so I don't know if he's going to believe me. Um, but we got to try. Basically trying to get him to fold ace higher. Okay. Ace five to not consider folding, which I mean is fine, but he should not be calling preflop. And so that's, well, it's information essentially. Um, I'm, what color do I, whatever. Um, I think I'm okay with my play there. Yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> JJ, uh, I'm not going to do a main event giveaway seat today. Uh, thank you, some of you, for the subs. I appreciate it. Yeah, Chris Gabriel, I, I agree that a lot of people rush to get their opinions out there without knowing all the facts or considering outside factors, but... I I think, to be honest, hey, Ryan, thanks for the good luck wishes. Good to see you. Good luck this series. Um, I think I would actually be more comfortable if, like, let's say I get on a podcast and some an interviewer is asking me my opinion on something that just broke, and I can say, well, obviously, you we don't have all the information, um, but my gut reaction is this, and here's why I think that. Here's why I could be wrong. I'm pretty comfortable with that, but if there's the assumption that I've, like, if I've got time, it's actually, if I have time to do the research and come up with like a strong stance on something, then I, I feel a lot of pressure that like it better be right. Um, 
So in a funny way, I almost prefer, I almost prefer having a, um, well, coming out with a quick opinion with all the uh, appropriate disclaimers. Tim, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. Yeah, Chris, I, I agree that, you know. <laughs> Christopher Robbins with some uh, with some cheat codes to get dealt ace ace. I'll try it. You guys are talking about what I could do potentially to for the spam. Uh, how do I do it? You guys are saying a seven suit is a call. I mean, I forget how many players were behind me. I believe you though, if if a couple of you think so. It was an early position shove though, and I, I have some players behind me, but uh, I'm not sure. Brad asks if I want to play in the GG games. Uh, all other things being equal, yeah, I'd like to play high. I mean, I always want to play high stakes games when they run. Um, let's see, what can I do? All right, so if anybody has some advice for uh, how to how to better moderate this chat so that Moonlight Master isn't just scrambling. Um, dealing with this guy all night long, let me know. I can look at my um, settings and see if anything comes, anything, you know, is obvious, but I think probably there's a YouTube expert here that. That uh, somebody would know what to do better than, than I do. Oh, you know what, there is a I think there's a, like a timeout thing, right? Or like a speed option somewhere. I'm gonna check if I can, uh, if somebody knows where that is, let me know. So I know, I, I mean, I, I can handle it, but I also think it, you know, it harms your experience as well. I'm not sure if customization slow mode. Okay. I'm going to make it. Let's see if that works so that uh, you have to wait 60 seconds between sending messages. So let's see if that. If that does anything, and also, I'll ask you guys in chat. Live chat, subscribers can send messages. Well, I guess, okay. I mean, I'm, I kind of just don't want to force you all to subscribe if you don't want to. Um, Okay, cool. We'll just use slow mode. I welcome your subscriptions. I will not force you to subscribe to chat to me. Um, Matt asked if I'm playing the 25K and 50K PLO, and if so, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, those are the, the only two events that I definitely plan on playing, or definitely being like 90% plus. Um, and then who knows what else? I, I had fun. So I've, I played 25K heads up, no limit. That's the only thing I played so far. I had fun, but I was out in run, one round, so I didn't get to have that much fun. Uh, and I'm tempted to play more, but uh, I'm trying to think how to put it. To be honest, I'm, I'm kind of stressed out by the series because um, just before the series, I was doing a lot of thinking about um, kind of how, how I want to, wh what I want to focus on. <laughs> In life, because I have, uh, I have, uh, well, I have this channel, which was not actually one of the major things I was considering. But um, everyone wants training, everyone wants poker, and uh, my, my poker career. And uh, I wanted to focus on, uh, like I was saying before, studying and playing poker. 
um, and finding like a regular game to play in, whether that's online or live or something. And, um, and then trying to structure my work days, um, well, to be a little more structured rather than kind of like, uh, you know, a- any day is, is free for meetings if they, if things come up and things and, and things like that. So I wanted to kind of organize my life a little more and have certain days expected for working on this business, certain days for this business, certain days just to myself to focus on poker and, and studying. And, um, I kind of made all these realizations or decisions, um, like a month before summer. And then I was like, well, world series is coming up and now that's kind of going to set me back. I can't really do any of those things now. So I'll wait. I have no idea if a six suited is called a five suited. It's gotta be a V pip. Um, but here we are with a six suited. So anyways, actually I, I've been kind of stressed. I like having a plan and right now I don't have a plan with WSOP. My plan was kind of to play 25 K heads up the 25 K PLO and the 50 K PLO, and then kind of just stop playing everything. Um, and then get to my prior plan of, of whatever, organizing my life a little more than it has been. But now I'm thinking, I don't know, people really enjoyed the vlog, um, which has been good for my channel, which is then, you know, in turn, good for the business, uh, eventually, et cetera. I mean, this is probably not an open, but it's fine. Uh, I'm going to keep checking a six. Although betting turn to check river is not unreasonable. I think it's relatively unlikely that I'm beat, but obviously not impossible. Just give myself a little time to think through this hand. He's pretty incentivized to start betting ace, 10, ace, king on the turn, as well as a bunch of two pair hands. So gonna go for some finish value but I'm you know like I feel like if I'm beat it's by a check raise not a check call I'll put it that way um, anyways uh, so yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do I've actually considered playing tomorrow so there's a 10k dealers choice today I'm not really good at the dealer's choice, but it's a really fun tournament. Um, and I can late reg up to 2 p.m. tomorrow. So thinking about that a little bit, um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't even remember the question that I was answering, but, <laughs> but thanks for the question. Uh, am I streaming on Twitch or YouTube? Just YouTube right now. Um, Julie says, congrats on 10K subs. Hey, thank you. Thank you, everybody. As, uh, you know, the, the YouTube game is a, uh, it can be a slow grind. Obviously I have it. I get a head start because, um, you know, I have a big Twitter following and people, you know, I can, I can get videos out that way, but it's still, uh, you know, slow and steady. And so each milestone is really, uh, is really exciting. I know I never seem very excited, but I, I am excited and I appreciate it. Oh, wait, grinder. How's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, we could have gotten the boys back together for a future stream. Um, okay. How deep are we now? We're shorter now. I don't know. We'll open a 1K. It's a nice round number. Nicholas asked, how long did it take me to get pretty confident at do seven single draw? Honestly, if you're just playing, it depends. If you want to play it like really, really well, I don't think any, basically, I don't think many people play it very well. And so just learning the frequencies at which you get dealt different hands and then um, how often you hit your draws. And like, honestly, like I did a lot of pen and paper. By pen and paper, I mean like Excel spreadsheet, but not advanced Excel spreadsheet, just like kind of Excel, simple math. And I think you can, you can go a long way with the game, at least compared to where everybody's at. Because just nobody's that great. Mason asks, Phil, what's uh, K-Rab's new Rio course that is coming out? Love K-Rab, love Rio. Thank you. Yeah, I love K-Rab too. He's, uh, and Kevin Rabish, I just finished, well, 
whatever third or fourth <laughs> in the heads up event um which I, he he played great i only watched the one match because they only streamed the final four but uh or at least yeah i think they only streamed the final four here we have a cold four bet we're obviously folding king nine suited but i'll be curious to see what everybody shows down um anyways yeah he's working on a course i didn't even know that we that that was public information but i'm assuming it is because you know about it but uh i'm not going to share much more about it um, but he is working on a course and uh it's going to be very good i'm excited about that um moonlight saying this works like a charm i could probably lower it to 30 or even 10 seconds okay cool let's uh let's drop it to 20 seconds neither of your suggestions sorry <laughs> um where'd it go settings it's under settings oh no it's actually i'm in the wrong place edit we'll make it 20 seconds and uh, that should be better and allow you to talk a little a little more freely everybody thanks for the suggestion moonlight Do I still come to Malta sometimes or not so much? Now that Rio's moving to a new jurisdiction, it's been my favorite site to play on and I miss it. Thank you. Yeah, I miss being live in the rest of the world market as well. And I wish we could have uh, could have stayed live there while we work towards the US. Um, I haven't been to Malta in a, I mean, since pre-COVID. Um, but I do like it there and I have a lot of good friends and, and colleagues there. So maybe one day again. Uh, I do think, I don't know, right now we still have, we still have a lot of people there and uh, I think some will probably move to the U.S. at some point, but maybe not, and maybe, and certainly, probably not all, but maybe. Christopher Robbins says, uh, just a ballpark estimate. If PokerStars or GG had a yearly $1 million buy-in tournament, how many entrants do you think that they'd get? So the thing is, you have to run satellites, um, and that's going to, like, Every, every individual player who qualifies via satellite and or is a recreational player is going to add several pros. So it really uh, it depends very heavily on, on how well they can fill the field with non-top players. Um, and then there's also kind of a, the glory element. Like if the World Series of Poker did a million-dollar tournament, they would... Well, I don't know if they'd get more players, but maybe but they would get people like... Um, I don't know, like, you know, Phil Helmuth, for example, um, selling some action to get into that tournament, whereas he's not going to go play an online tournament. So like a lot of people who are, you know, looking to win bracelets, um, I mean, ballpark guess if GG did a $1 million tournament once a year and they made an effort to make it big, um, 45 people. But maybe bigger, I don't know. Hubert asks a tough question. Let's say you made two lasagnas in two different ovens and you put the first lasagna on top of the second. Do you still have two lasagnas or just one lasagna? And um, the answer is that you have one lasagna. Do I miss the rush of, of playing uh... Go to your home ball says, do you miss the rush? I'm assuming it means like the high high stakes games. Um, I do. But I mean, heads, I, I play, you know, big enough heads up and... I love playing, I mean, heads up poker is my favorite form of poker. Like, I would actually rather play heads up any game. Do I mean that? Almost any game, heads up, than um, than like eight-handed game of my choice um so i went with check here i'm gonna go with check call it's not you know i could do whatever massive late fee thank you i'm glad uh, i'm glad to hear you've learned Are, have you learned from my youtube content my run at once content or or elsewhere uh, and so the question now is do i value bet um i think i can but I don't know that I have to. I, th I think it gets a little thin. The problem is, though, he is going to bet check bet 10x, so maybe I am better off just small betting because now I kind of open myself up to, uh, well, so against that sizing, I think it's conceivable that he would have a hand like sixes, um, so I think it's just a very clear call. 
Um, not to mention that he can obviously be bluffing, but it's usually going to be value, I think. But yeah, it's a fine result. Not the end of the world. So 25 big blind stack from the small blind. I have king 10 offsuit. I am not super proficient in a short stack play um, or deep stack play. <laughs> but especially short stack play. So let's see what happens here. He limps. Um, raise fold seems okay. It also seems not entirely necessary. But I think it's pretty good. I think like I think he's like he's limp calling with a lot of dominated hands, and um, yeah, it's unfortunate when he limp shoves sixes and I fold equity. But I, I don't know. I think that's got to be okay. Kim, thank you. I'm uh, glad to hear you're enjoying the show, and I am doing my best. <laughs> Carpe says, uh, dealer's choice would be cool to see you smash. Apparently a ton of people jumped in 25K no limit. They didn't have enough iPads to run a shot clock on all the tables. Yeah, I know. I saw how big the fields got, and I was like, oh, I kind of uh, maybe should have considered playing. I, like, I, I don't play <laughs> I don't play no limit holding tournaments uh, particularly well, I think. But, um, but yeah, the field was so big. Um, I was a little tempted, but I, I actually had my mindset on, on playing and streaming these. Uh, so... Decided to do that instead. Harry Hartnell asked if I'm going to play in Bobby's room at all this summer. Probably not. I think that my plan is to, yeah, I was kind of alluding to earlier, um, I'm either going to play, like I'm, for the next couple weeks, I'm going to play the PLOs. I'm going to play this. I might play another one here and there. Then I'm going to decide if I want to play a lot more tourneys or if I just want to kind of retreat back into my cave and, and work on the business and um, study poker and kind of uh, be done with the series in that way. Nicolas, thanks for tuning in from Argentina, and thank you for the good luck wishes. Um, <laughs> the longer the run in the tournament, the better you can make a vlog about it. That is good, good advice. That's true. I uh, I did that wrong in my first vlog. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna play sevens uh, just for a call. I think pretty clearly. <laughs> Vlad says a uh, player should have to act as fast as Spencer decided whether he wanted to pick up those toys. Yeah, he, he knew. Um, Vlad's talking about my last vlog where Spencer made an appearance. Yeah, he did not want to clean up. Never. I mean, who wants to clean up? I never want to clean up. If you could see like my office from, from this angle, it's a huge mess, but it looks clean to you guys. Um, so sevens, we're going to continue, I think, with just a call. Um yeah, at his stack depth, I don't want to raise and get jammed on. At deep stacks, you can consider raising a hand like this. <clears throat> it's kind of a value protection play. Uh, so turn can go a couple ways. I don't think you can big bet this hand. I think you can small bet, um, and you can check. And I think either are okay. Um, I lean towards check. I'm just gonna check fold the nine seven suited um, three way. It's not a bad flop to see bet. Like I have the overpair advantage. Nobody's gonna hit the three. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, and then I'm just gonna show this down. Show down the sevens. I don't like. I probably have the best hand, but you need to have the best hand quite a bit to to bet and get called and and still have it be the best hand often enough. Ace three offsuit is pretty loose. Um, if the deuce were, if his deuce turn were offsuit, I would consider bluffing my hand, even though it's got no equity, uh, just because it's a good board and situation. But I think uh, when two flush draws turn, I can be a little more selective with my bluffs. Queen deuce suited, I guess I'm going to fold in the cutoff. I don't know. <laughs> Matt says, I don't know if the 10K dealer's choice. Be a good decision, Adam Friedman, Friedman is playing. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, someone has to beat him eventually, right? Why not me? <laughs> I 
Thank you, Christopher Robbins. Christopher Robbins for the kind words. <clears throat> a six suited flops a nut flush draw. This is actually a hand that's like I'm not going to get many. Well, I'm going to get some more sense to call, but um, I kind of like checking this back and keeping in stuff that's dominated. Um, or just like, if I bet, he's mostly going to call hands that are ahead and check hands that are behind. And then now on the turn, it's kind of weird. Um, I'm going to go for my one one street on the turn. And then obviously if I river a flush, I'll go for another street. Um, but I think this makes sense. Whereas if I had a six, no flush draw, maybe be more apt to check, but betting is fine. Anyways, I'm going to check river. I think it's close to a value bet, but uh, but I think just barely not. Cool. Eric Froelich, good to see you. Um, thank you for the kind words. Uh, yeah, I uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I. I uh, it's funny. I mean, so the the kind of uh, the fake uh, WSOP vlog I made on a whim, and I didn't have plans of making other videos like that, but it was really well received, and I like I really enjoyed making it. So now I just have to figure out uh, some other other types of content to make that are like that. But in the meantime, just doing regular vlogs uh, will be fun. Dan O says challenge Doug. Polk, we the people need to see it. Maybe he'd agree to half half. I think he probably wouldn't agree to half half, given that um I don't know, I think like Bill Perkins was offering to play him at like uh with Doug laying some amount of big blinds, but not that many, and Doug was not interested. Doug doesn't I don't think he likes playing that much. Um seven's just a call, I think. This player I don't think I took a physical note, but I did give him a color that suggests he's loose, so maybe I could have, could have played. Colin, thanks for the sub. Welcome. Yeah, I, I don't. I, uh, you know, it takes time to get the word out that I'm that I'm streaming and that I have, uh, well, that I'm vlogging. When did I turn into Wolverine? I've been, my beard length changes uh, frequently. I mean, not super fast day to day, but but it does change. Um, this is like, it doesn't get, I haven't had it this long in a little while, but I've had it much longer or like twice as long at points. Eight, nine offsuit on the button, sure. Have I played any PLO lately? Yeah, sorry, no. Um, the last PLO I played was the Brandon Adams uh, Heads Up Challenge. And uh, I'd love to play some more. <laughs> Miss it. Um, I guess we're going to fold. How are the games now during WSOP? So I don't know. I haven't played. Um, I know there's like the there's Bobby's Room mix running. I don't really like that game too much. I don't know about anything. I, basically, I. I haven't looked to play cash games this summer. In the past, like 10 years ago, I would always, like, I wouldn't play as many tournaments and I would just play cash games because there were good, like, you know, 200, 400 PLO cash games and no limit cash games and stuff. But these days, not so much. Do I miss the full tilt days playing nosebleed stakes? Yeah, I do. Versus Hanson and Antonius and others. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, it was also a different, like, I was a kid. I was, uh, you know, I still love poker pr probably just as much as ever, but it's like, I'm 37 now and I was, well, in whatever, in 2008 when it was, you know, 501k games all the time. Um, I was 23 and um yeah it was just a really fun exciting thing because i was still i mean i wasn't new to poker i've been playing like five years but it was still like i don't know it's it's it would be a little different now because like back then there were no didn't really think about the money it was just about just beating the game 
um, like it was kind of like a video game. And now I'm a grown up, I have a family, I have business. Now uh, I have to be a little more practical. <laughs> I can't be quite as, uh, take quite as many risks as I used to and uh, have to be a little bit more responsible. Like, like, yeah. There was a time back in like 2006-ish, uh, 2007, where I would just like, I, I would play whatever. I'd be playing 100, 200, and then I felt like I had enough buy-ins to take a shot at 200, 400, and I'd just go sit with whoever's in the lobby. And actually my my first ever, like the first ever hands I played at 300, 600 were uh, like, I'd been playing 2-4, I'd felt like I was ready to take a shot at 300, 600, and looked in the lobby and it was Phil Ivey sitting there heads up. And so I played him heads up. Um, and like now I have to be a little more responsible about like, now I know too much now. And so I'll be responsible about game selection and stuff like that. But, um, um, and if you're curious that, that lasted, uh, six hands, uh, he said overset me on like the sixth hand and then I quit. That felt like a bad sign. 54 Rook been a real member for seven years now just want to take the chance to say thank you thank you for for being a real member i uh i really appreciate it and uh i'm glad that you've you know gotten value out of it for so long so that that means we're you know that we're putting out content that that is good or it just means you're you just don't don't uh cancel subscriptions which is what, like i don't <laughs> murray mckinney have I ever considered running for president of the united states i don't think uh i'm too short i'm way too short i'm five foot six so I don't think there's an option. Slow Sal says, loved watching the Galphon challenge. Will we see more or nobody wants to play you? Yeah, I, I think we'll see more one day, somehow, some way. Um, honestly, I, I think what will be a big step in the Galf for the Galphon challenge and for my life and, and poker in general is um, getting into more and more states in the US because Right now, you know, I'm looking to play challenges on WSOP.com with players that are in Nevada or New Jersey, um, soon enough Michigan, I guess. Um, and some more sites will come to, the, to Nevada, but the same thing is still true as far as the, uh, the states uh, that you can play with. And it just really limits the player pool. And I think as more and more states legalize and these online poker sites in the U.S. get bigger um, and they pour more marketing dollars into online poker, then I think there'll be more players willing to play and even like sites willing to to kind of put up some money for people to play um, to incentivize more action. And so I, I'm, I'm hopeful that in the coming few years, I'll be able to get some more action without uh, leaving my, leaving my home, but we'll see. I certainly am. I certainly want to uh, want to play more. A Bronx kick says, man, you suck. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, oh wait, we're hoping somebody challenges me. We'll see. Marks asks if I've ever played against Isildur. Victor Blom, yes, we've played a lot. Um, I had my biggest uh, biggest winning day ever against him uh, back in, I want to say 2010. Um, he, he is so much fun to play against because he's such a dynamic player. I don't know if this is an open or not. Um, I'm just not gonna, I don't, I'm just, I was typing the wrong amount to open so that I took that as a sign that I'm not ready to play it. Um, he's such a dynamic player and he's so creative um, and so smart that he really pushes me to, like you just can't, you can't play your C game against him. Um, whereas some players you actually can kind of, even heads up, some players you can kind of autopilot against, um, cannot autopilot against Isildur, um, or you'll be in trouble, or at least I couldn't, I'll put it, I'll put it that way. Um, Blotters has it going, asks how come the green padded background, interested if there's a story. Um, so the, these are... They're like, you know, sound absorbing. Um, I was, we had an interior designer do a couple rooms in the house, including my office. And she asked me um, what colors I like, I like green. And she asked me like visually some things. I don't know, basically I said I like shapes. And so 
she came up with that. Um, there are three of them, and actually over here you can't see, but there are a whole bunch of hexagons in the same like three colors. Um, and so, I mean, I don't think it, I don't know how much it does for the sound, you know, like sound reflection, but uh, but they look cool, I think. Kevin says thoughts on Daniel's new beard. I saw his recent vlog. His beard looks good. Your boy Vic asks a really good question. Do you think tournament poker becoming more spectator friendly is vital for poker to have another big breakthrough? And I assume you're referring to um, kind of slow pace of play. The thing is, tournament poker used to never be live streamed. You know, um, back before, like in in the you know like 2000 in the poker boom era, like 2003 to 2010. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember when tournaments like started streaming, but it was all edited after the fact. And actually, like I as a player, I hated watching it because you would just it would just be like kings versus queens all in. There was no nothing interesting happened. You didn't get to see people maneuver. It was just like, let's go to this table where there's ace king versus jacks and they're all in. And let's go to this table where um, someone, you know, shoved light and someone called with, uh, oh, this is interesting. Um, a suited ace x I would shove. I don't really know about this. I guess I'm going for it because uh, of the cold caller. Like, he really shouldn't have me beat, and that's a lot of potentially dead money in there. But instead, he was trapping, and I'm drawing dead. <laughs> so well played him. Um, oh, I do get to uh, chop the side pot, which is a nice. We'll take what we can get. We got some. We got a little bit of our money back. Um, five minute break. I'm going to take the break, and then um, I hope I'm going to remember that question and uh, continue talking about it. So I'll be right back. All right, hey guys. Um, so I was talking about, uh, I was addressing the question of, you know, whether tournament poker has to become more viewer friendly um, for poker to have another boom, uh, more spectator friendly. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. I think that, I think the next poker boom, the next poker boom is going to depend on um, different jurisdictions uh, legalizing and regulating it. So I think that America is a big potential opportunity um because i think so i think you know people are aware that some more states are going to be um 
coming along eventually and that, you know, as we get more and more states together, we can have higher liquidity and, and traffic will pick up. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is that poker is so to to a to an online gaming company that has casino, sportsbook, bingo, and poker. Um, poker is a tiny, tiny slice of revenue. It's it's very little, um, unless you are like a very poker centric site like Poker Stars, for example. Um, but it's a really good tool for. Um, acquisition and retention. So you bring in players to play poker and some of them get cross sold your casino. You have casino players who want to play poker. And if you don't have it, they go to another site that has poker and then they use that casino instead. And so um, poker itself is not going to generate a ton of revenue for these companies, um, but it's still going to be very valuable to them. And these are companies that are massive and generating a ton of revenue through all of their verticals together. And because of that, and because poker is is still a key piece, even though it's a small part of revenue, they're going to have money to put into poker. And I think that actually what's going to cause a poker boom, um, and it's not going to be like it was in 2003, but what could cause um, kind of a, a reignition of, of, no, I don't know, I, I didn't mean to say ignition to imply anything, uh, but uh, to, uh, to like spark poker um, in a bigger way is I think once enough states have legalized it, these companies are going to have incentive to start spending a lot of money on, you know, putting poker on TV, on sponsoring players, um, on advertising poker, things like that. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, these poker shows that you watch, like High Stakes Poker and Poker After Dark, etc. Um, a lot of those are uh, paid for by poker sites. Like they were, the networks didn't pay to have the shows on, and then like they made money from the commercials. Actually, no, the poker sites were paying the networks to put it on TV. It was like an infomercial. And so that's the reason after Black Friday that there was so much less poker on TV is because there wasn't that money there to put poker on TV. Um, so I think that because of all the money that's behind these these huge companies that are casinos and sports books and, and because they have interest in poker and poker is, is, is in some ways an integral part of their business or can be, if we get it legal in enough states, um, I think that it's really the money in the advertising, the, the marketing money that will help um, boost poker. Um, I really was tempted to squeeze here, but like it's, it's kind of the wrong kind of hand. I just, I want to get my stack in there so I could double up or rebuy, but I don't think that's a, a spot for it. Um, so I kind of went all over the place with that answer, but no, I, I don't think necessarily that that the game like it needs to change too much from a spectator perspective i have some ideas about like ways that i think it could be more interesting um as do a lot of players and and industry people but i don't think that's the key piece ron swanson i miss dealing you at the bellagio phil you always take care of us dealers we thank you you're you're welcome i i do miss playing at the bellagio i hope uh i hope the players are treating you well <laughs> If, if, uh, assuming you're still there. Dan O asks, what was your lowest point in poker? Confidence, questioning, everything, etc." Um, I don't know. I'm, I guess, I guess it was actually like not too long before the Galfon challenges. So I, I moved to Vegas in 2015 and was not playing as much online then. And, and at, at that point, I, I started playing in a game, uh, a live game here in Vegas, pretty high stakes. Um, and for, for like, uh, and it was a, so it was a, whatever, 12 game mix, all big bet. So like no limit and pot limit, we call it big bet mix. So, you know, no limit hold'em, pot limit Omaha, PLO eights, um, pot limit triple draw, no limit single draw, et cetera. I mean, and like some made up games essentially. Um, and for the first like year and a half, year to year and a half, I just kept winning. I was, I was the biggest winner in the game. Um, and I mean, a, lo a lot of it was run good. I think to half pot, I'm just going to fold this in a three-way pot. Um, a lot of it was run good. Um, but also <clears throat> we were all figuring out the games and uh, it, it was like, a few recreational players, although good recreational players, and then a handful of pros 
um, who are good pros, but all who had not played online in like like five years or something. So coming fresh off of like online grind, I felt like I was sharper. And so even though we were all figuring out, figuring out the games, I think that my like, yeah, my mind was a bit sharper and, and like more used to the, to thinking through poker, I guess. Um, but yeah, combination, I, I did well. Um, and then I took a little bit of time off uh, to work on the Renaissance poker, not too much time. And then, and then I played the game a little bit more. And then over in the next year, um, I just lost essentially all of it back. And I, um, the games did get a little tougher. So some more players that, that were like, <laughs> that had then been playing online longer than me. Cause I like hadn't played in a couple of years were joining, um, guys like jungle man and true teller. Um, and, uh, and then also the game changed a little bit. Like they started adding some limit games, which I am terrible at. Um, but then I'd gone from like, well, I was on a big downswing and it wasn't like, um, falsely questioning my confidence. It was, I just knew like, I wasn't as sharp as I used to be because I wasn't like, I wasn't challenging myself online anymore. I wasn't studying the game and you know, in the post solver era, I wasn't studying solvers. Um, and I mean, at that point I just focused, I stopped playing for a while. I focused on the business. Um, and I kind of had doubts that I would ever try to compete at a very high level again. Um, here with a seven suited, um, like had he made it smaller, I would consider calling, but I think this is just too big. Um, so yeah, that was a point where, I mean, I wasn't miserable about it, but I was definitely like, man, it's, it, I don't really, I don't really have it like I used to. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a bummer. So I hope that that answers the, the question. People speculating about who Barry Sweet is. Barry Sweet is Jamie Gold. <laughs> I don't think he's Jamie Gold, but that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, Barry Sweet and Jeans are the ones, uh, the only Omaha players I remember always crushing. Yes, they're both always crushing. Barry's also Martonis. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Barry and Isildur are neighbors. Um, and then a lot of people I... Uh, I do get asked a lot if I'm going to play Barry Sweet. I think I would play a short match against him. I think he's probably the best. Um, but it'd be fun to it'd be fun to play him. He's not coming to the U.S. I think, but it, he, yeah, he'd be fun to play. I think I actually don't. Uh, I don't have. I don't have like. A lot of confidence against him. I'd be curious to see how I could do, but um, a lot of matches I go into thinking like, "Oh, I think I would be the favorite." That one, I I feel like I probably would not be. Hey Phil, when are you adding heads up turn three bet pot section in your course? He said, uh, "Heads up turn three bet pot section." I think I thought I already did that, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to check. Uh, I'm gonna have to check uh, what videos are in the course and what are not. I'm actually almost done entirely with the course. It's in early access mode. And um, I just finished, there are gonna be like 30 more videos added, um, or actually six were already added. So like 25 more videos added. Do I have any news on Ben Solsky? I do not have any news on him. I, I hope and think he's doing well. I haven't talked to him in a, a few months, but he was doing well at the time. Can I confirm if Victor Blom has retired from poker? I do not. I do not know. That would surprise me. He loves it too much. Moonlight Master, thanks for holding down the fort. Let's see what the PLO action looks like. I don't think I'm going to add it while I'm playing these two tables, but. Maybe. 
So we have a couple 2550 tables going. Um, I mean, I'm not going to do it while I'm playing these. I'd probably, we'll just see. So Jack-8 suited I don't think isn't open here, but I I just want to get, I want to get my stack in over here. How long do I have for re-entries? I, I assume a while still, given that there aren't even antis yet. Next level, there'll be antis. Um, late reg will end in 142 minutes, so two and a half hours. Um, so I, I mean, I guess I'm playing for at least, <laughs> I guess I'm playing for a while, streaming for a while. Uh, queen five off, I think is a fold, even against that great sizing. Let's see. Yeah, there are some nice commercials uh, from Poker Kim. Full Tilt made a lot of good commercials. Hubert asked about Vogel saying everyone seems to be pissed off for his tanking. Is he really guilty here or just exploiting a lack of clocks? Um, it's so t oh, I'm in a hand, it turns out. Um, <laughs> I'm checking too weak a range. I need to start, start bluffing some mans. Um, I think. It's tough because he's such a nice guy and I don't think he has like ill intent, but obviously if everybody in the tournament played the way he did, the tournament he'd play, you know, four hands an hour, literally. Um, and so it's not okay, but I mean, I, I don't wish him any harm. I think that the game structure needs to, ca needs to change because there's only so much like he's not, he's not being unethical. He's being uh, discourteous, I would say. But what he's doing is within the rules, and um, I don't know. It'd be if he if he weren't such a nice guy, it'd, it'd be easier to like dislike him. But um, he's a very likable guy. Uh, I think I think though we need uh, some kind of something uh, resembling chess clocks. And or I, I saw that Patrick Antonius ran some tournaments recently where there were shot clocks, but they were um, different for each street. So like preflop was much shorter. Like if it's preflop open decision, you you only had whatever, five, 10 seconds. And I think that's smart as well. Like actually some of the, I mean, I, I was watching his match against Kevin Ravishow. I went to bed before, um, before the match against Dan Smith. Um, congrats to Dan Smith, by the way. That's awesome. Um, I... I guess it was bad all around, but I was especially struck by like the preflop opens. That preflop opens. There's no reason that he'd be struggling with preflop opens. Um, I guess I'm gonna peel Ace Nine suited. But like he knows what to open on the button when they're 250 big lines deep. Like there's not, he doesn't, I don't think he has a limping range at that stack depth, but he was still taking, you know, 15, 20 seconds. And those are the ones that were stressing me out the most because it just, it didn't seem defensible. Like in the spots where, um, how do I want to play this? Small bat, big bat. I'm going to start with a check. I was thinking about Betting small on flop to then like try to bluff him off of better ace highs on the turn, but I think that I think that's a little silly. If I don't like if I don't turn extra equity, I don't know how much sense that makes. Um, queen six suited. Let's just raise it up because I'm trying to play bigger pots. <laughs> and ace nine, I guess I'm gonna check, and I just start bluffing here with like queen ten and the like. Um, I'll stab here where I think like he's gonna have limp called like eight four of hearts and stuff like a lot of suited hands So he'll have fewer one spade hands I Could be wrong about that, but uh, you know the c bet's obviously fine um, Take it down 
right table, we're facing a big bet. He's repping like Jack X plus, I think, probably. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna fold. Clayton asks if I have any favorite poker coaches, books, strategies, or is it mainly self-taught? Um, I mostly learn from training videos. Um, that's where I've done the majority of my learning. Learn training videos and then talking with friends. Uh, so I happen to own Run Once Training, uh, runnowance.com, which I think is a fantastic training site. Oh man, if this guy's, <laughs> if this guy's been watching, he knows that I want to gamble. Um, is ace 10 offsuit the gamble hand? It's a pretty bad hand. I have to be beat. No, I can wait a little longer. I'm going to have more opportunities to gamble soon. Too great of a risk that he just has aces and he's like, Phil wants to gamble. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not, he's not supposed to have worse than me very often. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I like to learn. I think in studying solvers and solver tools, um, I like that as well. Phil, would you play Linus heads up PLO? Um, I would heads up PLO, um, not heads up no limit. What's one of the main things? Uh, this is your boy Vic again. Uh, what's one of the main things that always drew you to PLO versus no limit hold'em? Honestly, it was not. It wasn't even anything about the game. What happened was, I was exclusively a no limit hold'em player. And then all the high stakes games on full tilt moved to PLO, and so I was like, oh, I better learn PLO. And I started learning PLO. Um, I liked it just, I mean, I didn't like it more than Hold'em. I liked them both. But then the Hold'em game, like it started dying down, um, the high stakes Hold'em games. So it was just PLO for a long time. And after a while of it being just PLO, um, what's it called? After a while of it being just PLO, I kind of like stopped. Get, like I didn't know how to play No Limit anymore. I didn't know how to play it at a very high level. And so I just stuck with PLO. I mean. I, do I enjoy PLO more? Right now I do, yeah, but I could see myself enjoying No Limit as much um, if I got to play it a lot and got to study it. Sam C asks a good question. Do you think that playing PLO helps your NL hand reading abilities? I think so. And it's not so much, um, it's not so much hand reading as it is just, you know, poker theory and understanding of poker theory. Like all, all the games follow somewhat similar fundamentals in terms of poker theory and, and understanding how the game works. And I think learning it, learning poker theory on a deep level in one game is gonna help you in another game. Um, I'd like to see how this hand played out with nines. I'm gonna open that and then I'm gonna wait until they all fold, which they did. Let's make sure I don't have a playable hand, okay. So this went three bet. Yeah, so open, three bet, call check this is, oh, this is interesting check raise call that small call check check nines ace king okay ace king makes sense does this make sense from nines check raise seems okay i mean i guess it kind of is okay yeah it's always weird to leave spr you know 33% pot on the river, but it doesn't seem unreasonable to me. James says, Jack 8, Jack 9, what's the difference? Yeah. A suited hand's a suited hand, you know? Juan says, great combo so far. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what are you enjoying most about what are you enjoying most about poker these days? Honestly, I just love playing heads up. Um, it's so fun for me to study an individual opponent. And I think there's a point in a match for me where something kind of clicks and I feel as though I understand what they're thinking. Um, and then the hand reading from that point on is, is just really, really fun. Uh, so that's, that's what I love. And I even like, like I said, even, even non PLO games, it's fun, I'm not necessarily good at them, but, but they're fun.
Yeah, Eric's saying that, oh man, this guy really wants me to <laughs> gamble. All right, let me play these hands first. But some more conversation about Vogel saying coming up. Um, I guess we're checking everything there. I mean, it's actually pretty uncomfortable already against, you know, almost half pot uh, with Ace Jack. Uh, I, mean, I feel like I have to peel one, but it's not entirely clear to me. Probably Bluff River if given the opportunity. Uh, Ace Queen here. I guess I'm going to check with this player being pretty short and me not having the. And I think I bluff ace jack. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but I think it's a... Like ace-10, I would bluff. Ace jack just feels like it beats some stuff sometimes. I guess I'm calling ace-queen against quarter pot. Um, and here's a small bet against ace jack. I'm just going to fold. Um, but cool line by him, regardless of what he has. So we got small bet, small bet here. What do I think that means? I'm going to call, but I, I'm not feeling great. Obviously, just have great pot odds, so we'll try. That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. So Eric's saying, you know, taking time to make the right decisions is a real advantage, and players are expected to maintain a reasonable pace of play. It's definitely debatable, you know, whether it's ethical or not. Yeah, I agree. I ju it's just that... Uh, probably bet bigger on this flop. Um it's just that um, yeah I just like the I struggle with the word unethical because he's not breaking any rules he's not doing anything deceptive um, I get the sense that it's not um, I think that I think that I can get this in like bet turn bet river but I'm not sure Um, yeah, it just feels to me like, you know, he's allowed to do what he's doing and, um, people are allowed to call the clock on him. I mean, I, I would hate, I don't, I would hate playing with it and I think he should stop, but I guess I, yeah, I just struggle with the word unethical, um, because he's not doing anything shady. He's just... This seems close, by the way. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's my favorite game outside of Hold'em in Omaha? Which game do you feel like you picked the most? Uh, picked up the most naturally? I like triple draw. Do seven triple draw. I don't know if I'd say I picked it up naturally, but. It's kind of a simpler game to study. Like you could just study with, with like a spreadsheet and kind of learn frequencies of things happening and figure out what to do about that. So, and and I think it's really fun. Have I ever been on real tilt? Um, you think I'm very good at managing my emotions? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I would define tilt as any time that um, your emotions are making you play worse than you otherwise would. And by that definition, you know, I think we're all tilting very frequently. Um, you can you can be tilted, like you can be sad, you can be distracted, you can be excited, like lots of things can make you play worse. Um, your emotions can often make you play worse. Do I get like, I mean, I get 
frustrated. I can get sad. I don't get, um, I don't get super angry. So like, I don't know. I, sometimes you'll play with somebody who loses a pot and they like stand up and they punch the table. I've never had the urge. Like, it's not like I have an urge to punch the table and then I hold myself back. I've just, I don't know what that feels like to want to punch a table. Um, so I definitely don't experience the, um, the kind of height of anger that I know some people can feel, but I definitely feel all the emotions, uh, to an extent. And I definitely have played worse, uh, many times as a result. Borg asks if I can upload my Twitter video explanation of realize when you see someone make a mistake, you're better than they are to this channel. I think so. Well, that like I'm, I'm a YouTube noob and I'm nervous about like messing with the algorithm. Um, but maybe I could throw it up as like a YouTube short. I know that they have those things, or maybe I could just redo it as a, uh, redo it better as a YouTube video. But I assume that means you liked it, so I'm glad. I don't think I described it as well as I could have, so maybe I could, maybe I should do a better one. Sam C, you're welcome. And Jasbo, pilot of Chatsville, MBC, <laughs> number four. Um, thank you very much, and you're welcome. I'm happy to be streaming. Uh, King Jack off, I guess I'm just gonna fold. Do I think the WSOP should have banned Ollie and Jake? Um, you know, it's tough for me to say, not understanding the full depth of the, you know, potential legal risks for them. Um, if there were no risks for them legally, then yes, I think so. Um, but, uh, but even with that, like it's a slippery slope. Um, you know, with those two, I know that there's uh, very, very convincing evidence uh, even though it hasn't been shared with the public, I know it exists. And so I think that should be enough, but you need pretty, you need strong evidence to ban somebody from WSOP. So it's, it's not a decision they should make lightly. Big Bear123 asks, if there's a tournament course on Run It Once and what about a high-low course? There, there are a couple of tournament courses. There's um, From the Ground Up MTTs. Uh, actually, there are a few. There's From the Ground Up MTTs. There's From the Ground Up Sit and Goes. Those are both, I think, $150. And then there's... Um, and there's pads on pads, which is what Spencer? Don't close the door. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to keep it open. Okay. Okay. I'll remember not to close the door. Okay. Oh, I close it a lot, don't I? Yeah. But you have to keep it open so it doesn't get scared. Okay, I'll keep it open. Now I'm scared. This has to be with. That's my son. Now I'm not going to do that. That never talks to me like that. Okay, you can leave it open if you want, bud. All right. Oh, it's too bad. I wanted to play this hand in some form or another, but I'll let that go. Um, okay, where was I? I don't know. I think I kind of finished that thought. Oh, is there a tournament course? So um, from the ground up, MTTs from the ground up, sit and go, and then um, pads on pads, which is our like most comprehensive advanced tournament course, which uh, is off the top of my head, I think $1,000 compared to the 150 of the other two courses. It's really, really good. There's a ton of content in there. Um, it's by Patrick Leonard, who's an absolute legend. Um, so if that's in your price range based on the stakes you play or your bankroll, then um, I would highly recommend it. But if not, the, the other courses are great too. Okay, a couple of good questions that are going to be hard. Okay, so uh, first, uh, Chris asks, Chris Ruff asks, I mentioned Deuce 7, no, no Limit Deuce 7 earlier so that people play it poorly. I seem to indicate that it's people based on based on people not understanding frequencies. Yeah, well, it's more just that the strategies are not super complex and everybody kind of, a lot of people that, like most people, most new school people don't play that game because it only runs in like mixes and most of the people that play it are, are very old school players. And 
I think what they what they mostly don't understand is like sizings um, and frequencies too, but like sizings. So in spots where it's really obvious that somebody has like a jack or a 10 and somebody else is drawing to an eight, then the bet sizes should be like massive, like whatever, 5X pot, depending on how likely it is that the person was padding like a really strong hand. And I think that people, everybody sizes too small in that game. Um, and so there's a lot to be gained there. And then also I think people kind of mess up the, some people end up with kind of predictable calling frequencies and stuff, spots where you should over bluff a lot, or uh, I, I think people just don't get it quite right. Um, then there was a question about balancing work and family. I mean, that's, it's tough to do. I don't know that I do a fantastic job of it. And I think that I, I do okay. Um, it's really tough too. Like during WSOP, it's extra tough because there's no schedule during the, the rest of the year. I have a pretty strict schedule where I'm in my office from like, uh, 6 AM to 4 PM or so. And then, you know, outside of that, I'm with the family. Um, and so that gives me, you know, three and a half, four hours before my son goes to bed and then also the weekends. So I get a lot of time with him that way. And, you know, I, I, I'd like to say that I'm completely checked out of work at that point, but I'm not, I mean, I still get emails and stuff, but, um, but I do a pretty good job of that. But like now, I mean, like I'm not spending the evening with my family right now cause I'm streaming and playing these, um, if I play the event tomorrow, same thing. And so it's, it gets a lot harder when I'm, when I'm on a later schedule, because like then I'm sleeping in. So I'm missing some family time potentially in the morning. And then I work during the, like, basically it's, it's best for me if I wake up when my wife and son wake up, see them go work and then finish and have several hours. Like we all go to bed at the same time when our schedules don't match. It's a lot harder to, um, to balance both. And like, my most productive hours are in the morning. So I don't really want to like wake up at, let's say I'm waking up at noon or something. Um, then go spend four hours with them and then work. Um, that's, I mean, that's actually what I end up doing with tournaments like this, but, uh, that's not ideal. Uh, so I get checked to here with ace nine. I'm going to check back with queen nine. Guess I'm going to check back as well. Um, I feel like I'm just always checking with bad hands, but just, you, you do some of that in poker. I guess I lose here with ace nine, but I'm not going to bluff with it. Queen nine is tempting. Um, It's a little less tempting now, actually. So I, I feel like people are going to, um, so we're all limping now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think this is a spot where you get hero called a lot, actually. Um, when I check back twice, cause I don't think it looks like I have a high club very often. So I get like check called by any club and then by a lot of like even some ace hacks, I think. So I'm not going to bluff. I'm just going to check and lose, which is okay sometimes. Kind of, if I had a calling hand, I would call this. It's basically, I think he might be over bluffing for this sizing, um, just given the pot odds he's laying, but I can't quite put that into words as to why I believe that. Matt Ryan, what am I going to have Mikey Stotts on? He missed all the table days. Yeah, those were fun. Mikey Stotts is still a. Uh, Still a good friend. Still, uh, he, he, he works at Runa once. So he's still around. He actually helped. He wrote all the, if you've seen the jungle man promo videos, he's, he's the genius behind all of those. Some dude's dad. Good to see you. Um, and thank you for the kind words. And you guys are catching up on <laughs> Spencer laying down the law. 
Burton uh, asks, hey, Phil, playing my first two WSOP tourneys in a couple of weeks. Any sound advice for a WSOP newbie like myself? Yeah, um, I think the most important thing, I, I think the worst thing that can happen coming to your first WSOP is that you are, are uncomfortable and um, like uncomfortable and scared and, and as, because of that, play worse and and like don't have a good time so um i don't know how much tournament you know live tournament experience you have in general but definitely things like well first of all keep in mind that a lot of people um a lot of players uh like to present as if they know what they're doing all the time both in terms of strategy and like i don't know tournament procedure they just like people like to present a front that they they know what's going on all the time, but a lot of people don't. So if you feel like, man, it seems like everybody here is uh, is really experienced at this, and they're gonna be able to tell that I'm a newbie, and like, you know, what if I like do something stupid? Like maybe there's a specific WSOP rule that I that I don't know about, and I I like make a, an action out of turn. Let's do something wrong. Um, do what obviously everybody's different, and the way to kind of rid yourself of that is gonna depend on who you are. Um, and your experience, but I would say make it a priority to get comfortable and, and kind of get rid of those any of those feelings um, so you can just show up and have fun and play your game. I wouldn't worry. Like, I think that's going to be so much more valuable than, um, you know, making your strategy 10% better, um, like your understanding of the game 10% better, for example. Um, if you got some friends in town or um, even like acquaintances that you can meet up with uh, in the poker community, I think that would be great to do beforehand to play. If you could play like, if you have the opportunity to play, you know, like a couple hours of a cash game or a satellite or some, like some small tournament before you get into um, the bigger tournaments that you play, I think that would help as well. But yeah, far and away, just, just make yourself comfortable. And part of that is also just like getting to know the venue a little bit mapping out like where you're going to go to the bathroom on breaks and where you're going to go get water if you want it. Um, I, th I think that actually, I know this sounds like silly and, and not like the important stuff uh, for like tournament strategy, but I think this is way more important. Like it's much more, you're not going to um, between now and then um, learn a whole bunch about like, you're not going to make massive strides in your game. So the place you can improve is in your performance of the game that you already know how to play. Um, and just executing what you already understand, the knowledge you already have. So just put yourself in a position to execute um, by being comfortable and and uh, and by having fun. Oh, hey, grinder! I just <laughs> you uh, you said uh, you basically said exactly what I said in, in far more concisely. So props to you for some good advice. I think. Uh, Gordare Sano asks, Phil, how many, how much really of like bankroll and percentage should we invest for a single MTT session? I'm not the person to ask. Um, so I'm not so much a tournament player and I haven't studied that so much, but I would recommend you go to, um, uh, primedope.com and check, uh, I think there's a tournament variance calculator and you can see. Um, you can plug in like certain expected values and like ROIs in the tournament and um, see like, you know, how large of a swing you can go on in one direction or another. And that could give you some idea, but also ask like on, on the, whether it's social media or like poker forums, I think it'd be good. Danu asks, uh, from the ground up MTT, then pads on poker. Is that a good path for a new player? Yeah, I would definitely start with from the ground up MTTs. And um, yeah, pads on poker is a great next step. Um, there's also, I mean, you can watch Run It Once, uh, essential and elite videos. But I think that uh, starting with a course is a great is a great way to go. Um, personally, like I learn, I, I do like to learn from courses, but I, I like to watch people play, and so live play videos um, I find more interesting personally. And so you'll get more of those in like uh, Run It Once, essential and elite than you will in um, from the ground up MTT, but. Um, but actually pads has a lot of those as well. And it just depends like how you learn best. Nick from Chatsville asking for a drink. Um, we're all out of gin. I think 
king 10 or king deuce suited as an open. Moonlight Master, thanks for the congrats on 10k subs. I appreciate it. I'm excited. Uh, guy asks, is Ferris still playing in those high stakes live games regularly? How's she been doing? She hasn't been playing much lately because um, our son, who's uh, almost three and a half, she's been spending a lot of time being a mom. Um, this guy, I feel like I can get this in against him. So she she would like to get back into it, and she's played she played a World Series event. Uh, she's one for one. She cashed, um, and she'd like to play some more. But yeah, I she and I would both like her to get back into the uh, high stakes cash game scene. Um, but it's it, it's more complicated when you when you've got a kid. So we're figuring it out. All right, so we get called. Jack of Hearts was nice, but the rest of the cards not looking so good. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how to play this spot. Um, do I see about full range? Do I check? I mean, I think I think checking makes a lot of sense because does it? I mean, I can see about range. I'm just gonna check. Um, I think checking makes a lot of sense. I was thinking because like he's gonna check fold ace six suited, but not ace jack or ace seven. So there are like I fold out the dominated hands. This turn's really interesting, um, and then now like it's tempting to bet like two k for value slash protection. But I think I just check again, and uh, I don't know. I mean I, he's gonna have some like five five. Um, but also a lot of like king queen and king ten suited and stuff like that. Um, we'll check. I think we win, but I'm certainly not going to value Betty's queen. Okay, we sort of win. Uh, ten nine suited will play. I don't know what to open to in these games. <laughs> I guess I'm min-raising. <laughs> I'm mixing. I'm using different sizing every time. By the time we get deep, I'll have figured it out. I'll get a little more serious. Steve Goldie, thanks for the congrats on the 10K subs. Dun, 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 dun. Ferret tweeted another WSOP issue a couple minutes ago. Oh, is she trying to play? She might be trying to play the 500. Um, let's see. 10-9, uh, this is kind of awkward. Um, but let's start with the bet and, you know. Take it down. I'm trying to find Ferris tweet. See if I could help her. <laughs> I actually put so I put Twitter on like a. To, I make it lock me out. But uh, then you can just click and open it again, like click 15 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's talking about something else. I guess I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that's in reference to, and I'm a little too distracted to figure it out. But I stand by whatever she said. Moonlight Master, thanks for being on top of that. Let me know if I should go back to uh, slower. Um, Nick asked the most famous player I played with or was starstruck to play with. At this point, I've played with everybody. Um, 
the I guess I mean the player who I was most starstruck by generally was probably Ivy but in my very first tournament that I ever played live or not my first I played once in um in the Bahamas, Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. But when I turned 21, I went to play a tournament in Tunica, Mississippi. I got sat at the same table as Daniel Negreanu, and he was super friendly, and um, and I was super uncomfortable. Um, and so that I think that was probably, given where I was at in my career, uh, that was the most starstruck I was, I think. And I was like generally more starstruck by Ivy, but by the time I played with him, it was a little bit later. I'm very I'm sorry very sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, but uh, I'm gonna go see how. Um, how much of a, a data driven a data driven approach do you use outside of poker? For example, running run at once or um, YouTube. Not as much as I should. Um, so like my uh, at run at once, I'm not the data guy. We have guys that analyze data, um, and I kind of am as far as running business. In general, I'm a product guy. I focus on creating a product that I would want to use as a user. Um, and of course, with, with feedback from, from users. Um, so not that much for me personally in, in, in terms of business. And then YouTube, I mean, I'm trying to learn, honestly, like right now I'm trying to learn, but uh, I haven't gotten too far. All right, that's kind of fun flop. Um, SPR three. This is kind of an awkward stack size. Um, I honestly don't know how to play this spot. I guess I'm gonna be I'm gonna be saying that a lot, but I think I'll do fine. <laughs> Blood Moon asks Phil, "What will it take to get you on Hustler live stream for the big game?" Um, I've been so I've been thinking, especially recently, as these um, well as my first WSOP vlog was more popular, speaking about YouTube uh, analytics. Um, it was a lot more popular than my other content. I've been trying to think of, outside of WSOP how I could do some content like that. And so I've given some consideration to trying to play in more like TV or stream cash games so that, um, so that I had something to vlog. <laughs> um, not just for that reason, but for that reason, in addition to others. So we'll defend here with King Four Suited. Relatively standard. Gonna check to the preflop razor. Um, but right now, I think like to travel to LA to play, if there was like a, it doesn't even need to be a good game, but like a game that's gonna get a lot of viewers and like be fun and exciting, I, I'd probably do it. Um, all right, king four suited. We're not folding. What is he doing? I mean, I guess I just call because it's like pretty weird stack size to do anything else. I mean, I could raise. I don't know. I don't think he has ace queen. Shouldn't have a lot of queen. So like I don't think he has a lot of straights. I think he has a lot of jack x. He could have king jack or king ten somehow. But I mean I think I'm gonna value bet if check two. He can certainly have seven x, but I think he's pretty likely to bet seven x. This isn't a river where when you have seven x you go for a check raise. Um I mean now I'm gonna call and I think probably lose, but uh like now I I only be bluffs. And I just, for some reason, don't think he's bluffing, but I'm not going to fold a king. Okay. I was right that he wasn't bluffing. with choosing a different sizing every time. If 
Sarah letting me know via text that she's not trying to play the 500. Um, fold 10-8. And she's giving me some strategy advice. Thank you, honey. Victor asks, in desperate need for advice, how do I trim my beard? Um, I have a <clears throat> beard trimmer <laughs> that I just set to... Uh, so like w where I struggle is if it gets longer than this. Um, but at this length, I just go... So I mean, I, I go shorter here, shortest here, and like a little shorter here, and then this is all kind of the same. But that's, you know, that's, that's, I'm not an expert. That's the best that I can offer. I think actually, so one time I, I went to a barber and had it done, and the thing that struck me was he went really short on the mustache. And I was like, oh, I like that. So um, I'm always shorter here than everywhere else. Nathan Gamble, Moonlight Master and 08 Grinder in the chat. It's just like the good old days. It is just like the good old days. Thanks for being here. How's it going, man? Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate you too. place am I in each of these? So in the, uh, and how many are left? So on the left in the 500, I'm 806 out of 901. Um, we still have like two hours of re-entry, which I plan to do. Um, on the right in the 5K, I'm 25th out of uh, 114 remaining, 194 entered. Um, which is actually more people busted than I expected. 30 spots pay. I mean, we're obviously not anywhere close to that, but it's a lot. I mean, that's 15, more than 15% of the field. Um, but I mean, to be perfectly honest in the, not that I have a disregard for the money. And I mean, at the final table, the money is definitely significant here, but I'm, and, and like 5k is a big buy-in, but I'm, I'm playing these for the bracelet. So we're not going to worry too much about the money, money bubble. Ivan, thank you, um, and you're welcome. Uh, I am doing well. Thank you for asking. I was get, I was getting into a little earlier that I'm uh, finding like the sum, the summer more stressful than it should be. I need to figure out kind of a plan. I was talking to Fair about this yesterday. That uh, well, that I either need to make a plan, uh, like make a plan for what I'm going to play and what I'm not going to play, or and then what I'm going to do when I'm not playing, or I just need to except that I don't know what I'm going to do each day, but I need to cut myself some slack on being productive every hour of every day um, because like playing tournaments throws me off my routine, but tournaments in their own way are productive, you know? around on the internet, see if anything's going on. Just looking at Twitter. Not a lot of, not a lot of mentions, but I mean, there are a lot of you here. I really appreciate you being here. Um, it's hard to get this many. I mean, it's very hard to get this many viewers when you're not streaming regularly. So um, thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. I hope that I can make it interesting with a deep run or with some high stakes PLO cash or at the very least with some answers to your questions. Adriano, first of all, I, Adriano, is, is it Adriano or Adriano or something different? I'm gonna go with Adriano, but I, I 
you know, see you in the YouTube comments all the time. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, so do you think your game changes live to online? I feel like live people play more honest. I think people, for the most part, I agree that I think people play more honest live because I think they're a little more afraid of being, well, two things. I think they're a little more afraid of somebody picking up a tell. Um, so they kind of talk themselves out of plays uh, due to fear, <clears throat> even if that's not the conscious thought. Uh, and then two, or B, I forget if I said A or one, um, online games are generally tougher and with players who play closer to optimally and who bluff more. Um, however, sometimes, especially online players um, like myself who show up live, um, you know, it can end up feeling like, you know, there are all these spots where you'll, you'll bluff some of the time, but because they happen so frequently or so infrequently per hour compared to multi-tabling online, your frequencies can get a little bit off. And so I think sometimes people, myself included, will, <clears throat> you know, four bed bluff sometimes too often in spots or uh, check raise bluff flops too often, et cetera. JF said, what would the lineup need to look like for you to travel to LA and play at the Hustler? Give us some names. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I need to, let me get through the World Series of Poker and then see if it's something I wanna do more often. The, uh... but it's, it's not that, I mean, it's not that bad of a flight to fly to LA from Vegas. Um, so, I don't know. I think there's like, basically, I, if it's not like a just a normal everyday night. So like, you know, if, if they're having like Ivy show up or they're having a, like a bigger game, I, I don't know, something like that. But, but maybe even, maybe I'll just do it sometime anyways. All right, we got a another break i suppose i will take it um what time is it seven o'clock trying to decide when i'm going to eat something probably not for another hour or two um but i am going to take a short break i'll be back in a couple minutes and uh see you all soon uh if you leave some questions now i guess a couple of minutes after the tournament resumes i will i will see them um cool how do i do this there we go
All right, I'm gonna try to stand up for a little bit. I have a standing desk, but if I raise it, then the camera will get knocked over. So it's gonna be a leaning desk right now. <clears throat> I'm gonna make chat a little bit bigger. Okay. Thanks again for being here, everybody. I appreciate it. Brydav says, can't wait to hear about that awkward conversation with your kids when they want something in the house, you say no, and they remind you of your two-story slide. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd put a slide in this house. It's, uh, you have to talk to Farah. It's shockingly, well, maybe not shockingly. I thought it was pretty inexpensive. And I mean, not inexpensive, but if you're put, it's like the same as putting a staircase, so. Why not, right? Brandon West asks if I consider myself more GTO or instinctually based player. Um, I so in today's modern poker era, I think you you need an understanding of GTO. Um, but I would definitely consider like so I give respect to optimal play and I study it. But I would definitely consider myself more instinctual or I wouldn't use the word instinctual honestly. I would say um, like. I mean, I'd say exploitative. So just making reads on players' tendencies and adjusting um, based on that and uh, rather than try to play close to what I think a solver would play. It's the highest buy-in tournament I ever played. I played the $1 million buy-in at, um, the it was one drop at WSOP, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And I did not cash. Did I have some poker buddies while I was in Vancouver? Yes. Um, the ones who you would have heard of um, were Jason Kuhn and Ben Tolerain, Ben86. Um, um, hung out with them a lot. Um, both excellent, excellent guys. Massive late fee with some very kind words. Thank you very much, and you're very welcome. Dan L says, you often say, I don't know if I'm playing this spot right. Would it be logical to say that if right is widely accepted, that doing otherwise would become an edge? No, not necessarily. So if right is, if right is optimal, then not playing optimally would not be an edge unless you have a reason um, to deviate. So an example of a reason to deviate would be my opponent overfolds flop so I'm going to bluff with hands that I shouldn't and I'm actually going to slow play more than I should um, but the idea of playing um, playing things wrong to be unpredictable um, that doesn't really hold water if you if you um, it's good to be unpredictable but you can be unpredictable by playing everything the right way actually um, because the right way includes, you know, full balance. Um, so I'm not going to make Broadway's fold. I think I'm going to bet anyways. I think this is a... So, like, these guys have a lot of pressure on them because of this short stack and the big blind. So I think I can bluff a little bit more than normal. I don't think this is a, like standard bluff necessarily I think you usually want some kind of like backdoor something something um, I could have the best hand here the problem is <laughs> I mean I think that I I don't think the short stack has me beat but this player called um, with two players behind him so he's pretty likely to have me beat and I also think he's really unlikely to bluff this turn so I'm just going to try to take this to showdown now <clears throat> and, and probably lose, I think. Even though I bet, like, quarter pot, um, he can't call super wide on the flop. And yes, he'll have some, like, jack nine suited and um, some queen ten and jack ten, uh, all of which I beat, but he's not going to bluff with those. So I think I can safely check fold. All right, so... I mean, I still don't think I can value bet. And I still don't think he's going to turn a nine or better into a bluff. So I still think I can safely check fold. I'm 
That said, though, it's kind of weird that he's checking turn with, like, King Jack, King Queen. Right? Why is he checking turn with a better hand than me? I get, well, I guess this guy's short, but he's also, like, I can check shove and he's in an awkward spot. So <laughs> the question is, am I going to go back on what I said, which is that I don't think he's going to turn, like, Jack-9 into a bluff. Um, <clears throat> I don't think he's going to value bet Queen-10. I don't think he's going to slow play the turn with a set or better, or like two pair or better. So I think he's got one pair. King, queen, king, jack make a ton of sense. Does he check turn with king, queen, king, jack? And then if the answer is no, what is he bluffing with? <laughs> ace three suited. Three combos of that. My ace of clubs doesn't block those. Um might talk myself into a call here. King Queen. Is he checking turn with King Queen? I don't know. I don't know. He's three suited. Nine X. I think he is checking turn with King Queen. I don't know. Eh, I don't believe him. Damn. <laughs> so the reason I decided I uh, I didn't believe him in the end is that I, I think his, uh, I kind of felt like his sizing was like targeting putting that player all in um, to kind of like, I don't know. I felt like it kind of looked stronger, but or like he wanted it to look stronger. Obviously, I was wrong. Um, he just had king queen, which made a lot of sense. But... I don't know. Um, I know he's a regular, so I know he's capable of doing some stuff. Um, so went against my initial read, or not read, my initial plan. Um, but, you know, I'm okay with that. All right. Pretty behind on chat at this point. Hey, Palix says, uh, appreciate the stream. Would love to see in the PLO cash streets right now. Yeah, maybe if I keep bleeding chips in this tournament and bust out, then I'll, I'll add some PLO cash. Victor, I feel I was young and ran good on attorney. I used the money for Rio after a few years. I quit because I had the money to pay for college. I'm graduating this summer. I'll be forever grateful. And I love you. Thank you very much. I love you too. And I'm very, very happy to hear that. Um, congrats. Congratulations. That's so cool. Uh, Bro to Pro Poker asks uh, if I had ventured to guess at the time frame for wide regulation of online poker in the U.S. I did not. Um, I mean, I think it's going to happen slowly with like a few states a year. Um, and then... There might be a tipping point. I'm not an expert in this, by the way, but I, I I think there could be a tipping point when like a couple of big states legalize it. Like if New York or California do, then I think a lot of others will follow. California is like far and away the biggest market um, in the US. And if they legalized it, it would make a huge difference in the liquidity. Um, if they legalize it in shared player pool, that is. Robert Warnack asked, "Why does Jungle Man call you the Falcon?" Um, so there's a there's a group uh, there's a group thread for people who play like mixed games in uh, Bobby's room, and the I think it was David Oppenheim was texting something in the thread and. Um, his phone auto-corrected Mr. Galfon to Mr. Falcons, and uh, we just went with that as my as my nickname. Uh, so after betting this flop, I mean, I think I just checked back here, but a reasonable chance I had the best hand. 
um, and some equity to improve if not. Um, so I beat 10, 9, 10, 8 um, floats with like queen jack backdoors. I think there are a decent amount of those. King X, does he bet this way? 7X, sure. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to call here. Um, because I think a lot of King X check actually to induce. So I'm going to go with a uh, hero call. I'm um, just thinking that he doesn't have enough value hands until he'll have enough random bluffs. Um, Chris Manley says, hey, Phil, love to see you streaming. Big love from Lexington, Kentucky. Don't know if you know this, but it's my wife's hometown. So shout out to Lexington and, and to you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Uh, Mikhail asks, uh, Phil, where's the rage tilt and stuff we all saw and loved in the first WSOP vlog? I can't, uh, I don't want to get into character without like a big disclaimer on the screen that it's not really me. I was, I was pretty nervous to release that for a couple reasons, but one of them being that um, people will think I'm an asshole. So the next time, I don't know, I wasn't really intending to... to bring that character back but i think given the reception i'll have to find out i'll find a way to but um i'll have to be in a controlled environment where i where everybody knows what's going on and it can't be clipped and <laughs> uh and used against me brian asked what websites programs do i use to understand hands and how to play hands so i think um i'm gonna i'm gonna give you okay so PO Solver, Monker Solver are the main two solver tools that uh, that people use to solve hands. They're both expensive and um, they have a high, like, uh, steep learning curve. There are a lot of no limit solver tools out on the market that make that easier. We don't have one um, right now, but we have PLO uh, tool that makes it easier called Vision uh, at runaonce.com slash vision, I think. Um, and that's uh, admittedly not cheap, but cheaper. Um, and like the work's already done for you. So I think that that's what I use to study PLO for the most part. I also use Monker Solver sometimes, but pretty rarely. I mostly use Vision. Um, and then there are a lot of tools like that for No Limit Hold'em. I'm not affiliated with any of them, but um, if you just Google, or actually some people in chat, what do you use for um, a Vision-like product for like pre-solved stuff for No Limit Hold'em? So there are a lot of good ones out. Um, that's what I'd recommend. And then training videos. I, I, I always learn well from training videos. Jamie Burry, Phil, have you ever tried psychedelics such as LSD? No, I haven't. Um, they've come highly recommended, though, um, so we'll see. Uh, but no, to this to this day, I have not. I'm not very. Um, I just realized my hand looks pretty awkward here. I'm just holding on to this mic. Um, haven't used drugs. I, I mean, I, I drink, but I don't really like to. I kind of like being in my natural state. Um, but I know that uh, psychedelics are a lot different than like alcohol. Nine six off. I think it's just a fold. Although I am trying to get this stack in somehow, some way. Uh, Gory Days twenty eight, good number twenty eight. Um, says that the MC four chess guy is one of the players he played PLO cash with on stream before. I think yeah, I do recognize his name from there, and that's why I. I mean, I should know who he is. He's he's a known player, I believe. But um, that's why I gave him the respect to uh, of being able to turn like Ace three suited or eight eight or something into a bluff there. CC, thank you and welcome to the stream, and thanks for the good luck wishes. James Yang, I have not rebought yet. The the one on the right, the 5300, is a freeze out, so no rebuying allowed. The one on the left, 
I very much would like to, well, I wouldn't like to rebuy. I intend to rebuy several times if needed, but uh, haven't been able to get the stack in yet. The blinds have been too low. And I've been too nitty, I guess. D. Krumpenstein asks, strawberry jelly or grape jelly? I would say grape jelly for sure. Dan L says, seems to me like GTO or balanced play ends up becoming like an arms race where everybody is in a stalemate and no one has an edge in the game anymore. So that's what I used to think before I studied solvers. Um, but in actuality, what I've, what I've realized is that solver strategy is um, far too complex for humans to execute. So what you have is people attempting to implement solver strategies, but not being able to. And um, it doesn't take much deviation for you to be very exploitable. And so I think um, as long as you're playing against humans, um, humans are not capable of implementing full software strategy and they're all going to have pretty big leaks. Like I've played against the best players in the world and everybody has big leaks um, and, and everybody can be exploited. So I think that uh, if you study your opponents enough, you will find ways to deviate um, and take advantage of their play, even given e even when they're studying so, so much and the tools are getting better and better. There's just only so much you can keep in your brain and, and execute. Because if you think about it, um, you know, there are so many, I mean, first of all, position versus position, there are so many different spots like that. Then there are so many different flops. And for each given flop, there are so many different courses of action and then different turns and then courses of action in different rivers. It's just the game's too big. Um, the game tree is way too big for humans to be able to to execute it well. And so they all, they all end up with leaks. Loom Juice asks, what's the best way to run up a roll online? Depends where you're starting from. I know a lot of people who started with, you know, with nothing and started playing free rolls. Um, if you have It depends where you are and what games you have access to. Take a look at what's running regularly. So if you are in like, like I would imagine if you're here in Nevada playing just on WSOP.com, there are not enough tournaments to sustain, like for you to just play tournaments all the time. Um, if you want to, I, obviously there are unregulated sites you can play from the US. And I, um, I mean, you know, a lot of them, some of them seem like they, you know, haven't, haven't screwed people over but they are unregulated you do have to be a little bit concerned and as a representative of a regulated poker site i'm not going to uh, endorse them publicly um but so it just like given the options you have it, it depends but find the games that are running regularly that, that regularly that you can see kind of the trajectory or the the stepping stones up to higher stakes so if if the sites you play on whatever have uh 25 nl running but then if you move out to 50 NL, there aren't many games, then then maybe cash is not a good option for you. I don't know. Um, or like maybe that's the case in PLO, and so PLO is not a, PLO is not a good option for you, but in No Limit, there, there are more games to play. So King-Queen suited from the big blind, I think, given that he's opening a middle position, is just a call, and even still, I mean, like I have this guy beat, but I don't know. Um, I'm just going to call, but I, I don't know. It could be a three bet. It's a very uh, fun flop. Uh, my wife Farah just made her first royal flush a couple of days ago, so uh, in a live in a live poker tournament. So it feels like one's coming, right? <laughs> Matt Femright says, "Vision got me divorced. I love it so much." All right, so we've got a 40% pot bet. Uh, I mean, I think this is just a call. I don't really see doing anything else. Um, yeah, what else would we do? Yeah, some people throwing out um, some suggestions for tools they use. GTO Wizard, DTO Odin, Simple Preflop, Flotsamal for MTTs. Yeah, there are so many good tools. GTO X. Um, there are a lot of good tools that uh, take solver inputs and uh, or 
rather take solver strategies outputs and and put them in, in a more easily consumable format for you so you don't have to do all the solver work yourself all right so we're not folding the question is are we doing something besides calling which would be jamming i don't think we jam i think like king five suited might make a better jam although i don't know how much it matters um and i don't think we're leading any rivers but i'm not sure about that uh we have the nuts now obviously i, I don't think we lead a heart it's just like very little of our range is going to be hard he had ace jack offsuit so yeah that's kind of the hand that i'm would be targeting with a check jam on the turn um and it makes a ton of like he's usually going to play this hand this way um but i still don't think it makes sense to lead rivers um yeah i mean i think i played the hand fine i think he played the hand well i think i could consider jamming turn uh and then otherwise you know seems pretty good Um, it's kind of a bummer that we have Jack-10 suited and we're not going to get to play it. I mean, obviously, we're allowed to if we want to. Um, no, we're definitely not allowed to. Massive late fiasco. How do you handle a middle stack in the bubble stage of a tournament? Um, it depends on the tournament. Like, it really depends. So... If you're playing in a like WSOP main event, or if you're playing in a really soft live tournament, there's so many people who just want to make the money that even with a middling stack, you can bully people. Um, just know, like, feel your table out and see, uh, get get an idea of who who's gonna get out of your way and who's not. Um, but in a tougher online tournament, I mean, you just have to pick your spots, and you know, you have to be somewhat tight, and that's okay. Um, feels like. I don't know. I feel like getting a little frisky. Um, then facing this, I mean, I think we can jam eights. So we could also induce. Uh, that's unfortunate on the right table. I'm going to raise and call it off. I mean, it's by the time he shoves, I'm not thrilled. Instead, he snap calls. It's a very good flop for us. Um, Jack-8 suited is going to hit the muck. Right, we have seven. Yeah, can't call. I'm actually going to bet pretty big here with eights. OK, I was not going to get through. Oh, we're so live, though. Of course. Um, but yeah, I'm fine with my play. Gory days. So what does 28 mean to you? So 28 was always my number uh, in sports. And then um, like on Poker Stars, I was Mr. Sweets 28, or am still. Um, 28 was for my favorite football player, uh, Daryl Green played for the well the Washington football team they were the Redskins in the past um and I was a big fan growing up and uh yeah he was my favorite player and so then yeah I was always 28 G Cash asks uh why don't I play Triton I'm not basically I've like I get I think a lot of people don't know this about me but I haven't played No Limit Hold'em seriously since um, like 2009, and I haven't played tournaments seriously, like No Limit Hold'em tournaments seriously since I don't know 2007. So I'm not good at I'm not good at them. And those players like playing in the 100Ks and the 250Ks, um, I'm just not good enough to to compete. And um, you um. Well, I'm also, so like, I'm not rolled to play 
250k buy-in tournaments and i mean most people aren't but most people can sell action and and have some swaps and i'm not good enough to sell action and have swaps so um do i think i'm capable of getting good enough and study yeah i think so but it's not what i i don't really like to travel that like it i'm not making excuses i'm not i'm not as good as those players are um at tournaments and do i think i could get there maybe but i don't know that i don't know that i could be as good as them um but yeah i don't that's not really what i want to go after so i'm not i am not dedicating myself to getting good enough for that at that format because i you can only be so good at so many things matt van dam asks top two restaurants that you like in vegas that's tough that's very tough i really liked sage it's gone now east at aria um there's a really uh my favorite date restaurant is hugo cellar it's downtown in the four queens um it's a steakhouse and like the food is very good it's not the best food in vegas it's good um but the atmosphere is really cool it, it feels to me like like what i would imagine fine dining 60 years ago in vegas looked like um and then i mean this one's fancy but i i, I went once to uh, e by jose andres and it was really 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 cool um it's really tough to get a reservation there you have to like book months in advance um and it's expensive but it's not like for what it is compared to other expensive restaurants like i think it's a good deal if you're if you're looking to spend uh, like a couple hundred or a few hundred dollars on a meal um i think it's better than the other options that i've been to but it's still expensive of course so i'll go with those for my answer open with eights it's starting to get a little more serious. I might at times slow down the uh, conversation, but keep them coming. Oops. Phil, what was your first car? I had um, an Isuzu Rodeo that... Uh, I used my bar mitzvah money and split a split a, for a used car. Split it with my dad because he had a he had a two seater sports car that uh, could not handle like the snow or anything, and so we split that car. And I used it most of the year, but when he needed a more seats or he needed to drive in the snow, he took it. And that was when I was you know sixteen, seventeen. And then after that, uh, and actually we traded that in for. A Nissan Pathfinder uh, because the rodeo was a uh, stick and I learned I learned on it but I but I didn't like it <laughs> so we switched for an automatic and then uh then I didn't have a car again until I was uh well till 2015 Brett asks is it possible to be a successful poker pro without being damaged emotionally by all the bad beats to get there yeah I think so I think that the I think bad beats don't damage you. I think they make you stronger. I think that I think that uh, 999 out of 1,000 people don't understand how chance works. And um, a career in poker gives you perspective on something that, that very few people have. And I think it helps, um, it helps with decision making uh, elsewhere, and it also helps, like, processing things. I think it makes you stronger emotionally. Tall Paul Poker asks, what's the worst cooler I've ever put on someone or been on the receiving end of playing live? Honestly, I don't... I don't really remember. There was a... The one that comes to mind is in a game that I would bet nobody in this chat has played, so it's not, it's not gonna have like full relevance. So uh, in a 12 game big bet mix, uh, cash game, we were playing no limit or pot limit, double draw high. So it's five card draw, um, pot limit, you get two draws. And blinds were 
300, 600 with a 600 ante. And basically three of us got all in after the first draw for like 200, like a little over 200K each, um, which is a lot of big blinds. But like there was a lot of preflop action then then a lot of it went in, or pre-first draw action. And we all had uh, trips. And I actually had the highest trips, but, well, actually we didn't get all in on the turn. We got like 60% of stacks in on the turn or 50%, and then the rest in on the river. Um, and I had the best trips, but then one of the two of them made a full house. Um, we all we all put the money in on the river. I think the guy that made the full house bet and the other the two of us called. But um, that was like, I mean, I could I obviously had had an option to fold the river, but I, I thought he could be value betting worse, and uh, could potentially be bluffing, but probably not. But that was. In that game, that's a very big cooler to have it like trips versus trips is a really big cooler, but to have three people have trips so that so much money goes in um, is a big cooler. But nothing else is jumping out at me. Can I play some cash for the boys? Asked Poker Kramer. Not while I'm two tabling tournaments. I have to think too hard to uh, to play no limit tournaments, and I mean I think we're stuck with tournaments for a while. There is, I mean, at some point in the night, right? I'm one of I'm gonna bust out of one of these, but not the other, and I think that's our that's our moment. Jay Pizzles, Daryl Green was always so fast. Yes, he was. I liked him because he he was he was quick and he was a little guy like me. Oh yeah, they're the Washington Commanders now. I forgot they they have a name once again. <laughs> I mean, I eat limp rips. I have been saying I want to get all in. This is always a good hand. Like what? What can he have? That's not good. But I do want to gamble. How much? How many? How much more? Lay reg. Oh, lay reg ends in sixty minutes. We're definitely all in. Yeah, that's fine. And he sat out. I think that I should win no matter what. If he sit, if he sits out during the all in. G Cash Money asks, um, "What I think about short deck? I've never played short deck. Um, I don't. For some reason, I don't really like watching it. I find it kind of boring to watch. But I know it's an interesting game to play. So I don't know. I, I'd be it'd be fun to learn if I had like an opportunity to play it in some games. But I, I haven't had the reason to learn." Uh, easy it off. We're going to play. Obviously, lucky there with the ace jack suited. I knew that I was behind, but we need to gamble. There's only one hour left to, to re enter three times. Who would win an MMA fight between Bryn Kenny and Daniel Negreanu? It depends how much time they have to train. I have a feeling Bryn's been in more fights, but I think Negreanu would, would train harder and train smarter. I don't know. I mean, Bryn's bigger, right? I know Negreanu's in good shape, but... He's a short guy like me. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> My friends with Lucky Chewy. I mean, yes, so we're very friendly, but um, like we've probably hung out outside of poker twice. Um, so I wouldn't say, you know, close friends, but he's a fantastic guy and uh, nothing but respect for him. 
and enjoy being around him. So, I mean, I, I hope he would say somewhat similar things about me. But it's weird how, you know, there are so many people in poker that you get to know a little bit. And, like, yeah, we would be friends, but we just, we just you know, we're busy and we do other things and we don't run the same circle fully or, I, you know, stuff happens or doesn't happen. Neo Ray uh, says, I'm, are you, you are a Jew? Love you from Israel. Yes, I am Jewish. And uh, actually, my cousin's in Israel right now. Um, or maybe he just, he was there for a long time for like a work study program. Uh, he might have just stopped. He might have just came back to the US. But hey, thanks for being here. What time is it in Israel? Oh, I guess it's morning, right? Victor asked a tough question. How, how do you think poker sites will get better at banning RTA? Um, I think some of, the, some of the biggest sites are pretty good at it right now. Um, PokerStars specifically is, is really good from my understanding. Um, GG has done a decent job, clearly, um, or at least there have been a lot of public bannings. Um, I think that the interesting thing that, that makes me a little bit optimistic is that, you know, poker RTA, like solvers and, and bots from a strategy perspective, they're about as good as they're going to get. Um, they can make small improvements, of course, but they're about as good as they're going to get. Um, yet, as technology advances, um, machine learning and uh, you know machine learning detection, uh, I think is only going to improve. Now, could these could these people or developers who are developing RTA and, and bots put a lot more resource into obfuscation and and hiding from the detection with with the same technology? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but. Um, but at the end of the day, the accounts have to, like, if you're going to use, if you're going to be a bot or use RTA, right, you have to play well. <laughs> your tr the goal is to play well, and playing near optimally is detectable um, and is getting more detectable as time goes on and technology progresses. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about our ability to combat it um, as, as time goes on. CC asks, hi, Phil, what would you say is the biggest mistake most PL PLO players can make when starting? I'm tight and selective and have watched tons of content, but I still lose. I'm very frustrated. First of all, thank you for, um, well, you should thank yourself for admitting that a lot of people are, have too much pride um, and ego to say, even here publicly, like uh, under a, a pseudonym that, uh, that they're not winning even after trying. So props to you for that. Um, I think what I would have said is to be more tight and selective, to play hands that that make, um, you know, nut flushes, nut straights, top sets, things like that. Mm. It's a little loose, but I think it's, you know, whatever. Um, the next thing I would say is think about, um, I think one one area where people struggle a lot is in evaluating their hand strength on the flop. Um, think about what your hand is going to be on the river. So a lot of times people get carried away with weak top two pair on a dynamic board, um, like queen 10, eight, seven on eight, seven, three, two spades is a pretty weak hand. It's top two. It's probably the best hand right now, but think about by the time the river hits, how often your hand is going to be the best hand. Um, and use that as kind of a guiding principle to deciding how much money you want to put in on the flop. Uh, I think I want to bet kind of big enough to to fold out the hands that dominate me, like King Jack and King Queen. Like I, I want to make sure none of those float. If I get shoved on by this 20k stack, I mean I'm calling, but it's, it's a little unpleasant. But I have enough equity at that point to go with it. I get called. Just a little surprising. I guess my hand wants to shove. It's a pretty awkward stack to do something else. The problem is, like, I think kings would bet smaller, but I'm just going to shove and hope for the best. He probably has a nine or seven, like fives. Does he have a three? Sometimes, yeah. I'm just trying to think what he's folding. I'm not sure that he's folding enough. I'm not sure that he's folding. I'm going to check. I think like also if he has um, 10, seven of hearts, I would 
well, it's it's debatable what I would rather do. I just think on nine three three specifically, I don't know. They're just not enough like, and the four turns too. So like four four, they're not enough like five five hands that have tough decisions. So I thought it was like too much nine x. Here on the, I mean, I'm just gonna check. Obviously, I can rep the ace, okay, but I can beat a flush draw. I don't think like he's gonna have some ace high, and he's gonna check when he hits the ace. He's gonna check, and I think he might hero call a nine after my like big flop bet check turn because I'm not really like. It doesn't look like I have an ace, honestly, the way the way that I played the hand. Yeah, that would have called off. So I think I saved some money. My class, don't pick yourself. Who do you think will be will win PLY this year for WSOP? I'm gonna go with Scott Siever because he's off to a head start. He plays all the games and he plays them well. And it seems like he's planning to, to really grind the series. He's played in a lot of them so far. Frankie B asks, does Farah enjoy No Limit Hold'em tournaments? Yes, she does. She loves them. I try to convince her to play more cash than, than tournaments, but she, she really loves them. Any comments about PLO 5 card? I, I basically haven't played it. Um, Hold on, let me play this hand out. Um, so I think it could go either way on this flop. I think I'll go bet flop check turn. And I guess I'm folding 7-4. Funny. So, like, I think some people make the diamond makes them want to check. The diamonds make me want to bet. Um, because it's just more equity. Um, I don't know. So, in PLO, having like the value hand plus additional equity means that you should bet more. In hold on, I'm not so sure. The reason is in PLO. The reason is because like equities run so close, and like it's just more equity tacked onto your equity. Um, in Hold'em, it's a little different because like when he has sevens, how much does it matter that I have the flush draw? It doesn't. Um, but I don't know. Like I like to. Th I think of it as like more more rivers I can value bet after building the pot. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll fold Queen Nine off here. Um, Yoav, love from Israel. All right, a couple people, a couple people from Israel. Good to see you guys here. Uh, max value, ask if I ever play NL Cash or just PLO. Mm, no, not really. I've practiced a little bit of NL Cash, but no, I just play PLO. Riggins asks, what are the best events for low-skilled Rex to play at WSOP? I have a friend who plays 1-3 and wants to come out this year and play a few events. Looking for a good weekend, Colossus or Millie Maker. I mean, really just base it off of the buy-in. Um, <clears throat> obviously, like those, the Colossus and the Millionaire Maker, they have a lot of promotion around it. And so those are the biggest, softest fields. So I would go with probably one of those. Um, but generally, just pick the lower buy-ins. Low, like the skill scales pretty reasonably well with, with buy-in level, with the exception of those where like there's a lot of promotion put into them. So yeah, I, I think one of those is a good choice. A lot of people picking Bryn to win the the fight. Uh six four suited. I don't I don't think I'm supposed to raise this, but we're going to. Don't tell anybody. Just bet 
this flop. I've been playing, if he's been watching the stream, I feel like I've been checking a lot of weak hands, but I think that uh, you're actually better off checking a hand like, um, like ace four that blocks check calls more than six four, which, you know, like my six is, is present in a lot of my bluffs. Uh, so now I think we go for stacks, although that's tough. Um, for some reason, I think he'll believe me too much if I'm going for stacks. I don't know. I'm just going to bet the size I think I should bet. Um, did I ever regret not building another slide in my home or condo for my little one? No, but I would like to have one, but I don't think my wife likes the idea. She likes a nice clean. It's It doesn't like... I mean, the one that I had looked pretty nice, but... I don't know. Neuralink might destroy online poker, Russell says. RTA in your brain. Yeah, I mean, if we get to the point where where we actually have chips in our brain um, and or, I mean, like Google Glass kind of things where we have a computer on our eyes, um, that obviously could be very bad for poker. I mean, that, that could be watched and regulated or, or, you know, just required to take them off. But chip, once there's a chip in the brain, I think it's, it's GG. Would I rather be able to speak all languages or be able to speak with animals? I think speak with animals because nobody else can do that. I can talk to people. Um, so yeah. Curls Gone Wild. Um, I like that name. Is it common for high stakes pros to purposely use more than needed time? Is there a benefit to doing it at all? So what people try to do is um, they try to, okay, I think I know a couple of these players. Um, uh, they, oh man, crap, okay. This doesn't look like a good table. Um, I think, um, what was I saying? What people try to do is they try to balance their timing. So in some situations, they really need a lot of time. But then if they have like an easy hand, they don't need time. But they don't want to make it obvious that, that they take different amounts of time when they have an easy decision and a hard decision, um, which I think is very reasonable. Some people take it too far, obviously. Um, and I think that like one thing you could do is you could make sure to take like the maximum amount of time with every hand, like take 30 seconds every time because you know that with a tough hand, it's going to take you 30 seconds. Or you could just take 15 seconds most of the time and then with a tough hand, take 30 seconds. And then occasionally with a hand that's not tough, take 30 seconds to kind of balance it out. Um, that's a little more, I think, respectful. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Thanks for the, the kind words. Let's see. I guess maybe on a break, uh, I should tweet that we're still doing this. Um, oh, wow, we're up to 1,500 viewers. That's awesome. Thanks for being here, everybody. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I've, so I never streamed on YouTube before, but I've streamed on Twitch, and then 1,500 is, is really hard to get there, and I thought maybe even it would be harder on YouTube. Um, so that's that's really awesome. I'm uh, flattered that uh, as many of you are here. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Um, if not the uh, actual poker playing, which is so-so, uh, um, the discussion. So A7 offsuit. Once again, I don't know. 
I mean, I'd obviously ace 10 offsuits and open, ace 9 offsuits and open. I think ace 8 and ace 7 are fine. Um, we get three bets. Obviously, you can four bet bluff this sometimes. Can't call. Um, Mm. Stacks are pretty awkward to form a bluff, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try it. I'm going to get some more water. I think I maybe went a little too small. That's pretty reasonable. All right. Anthony, rather, would I rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? Um. Can I pick both? I feel I'd like to look like what I feel like. Ryan Miller asks, thoughts on Omaha 8? Um, I think it's a really fun game. So limit Omaha, I, I really like PLO 8 and I think I'm pretty decent at it. Limit Omaha 8, I also really like. I think I'm bad at it, <laughs> but it's a really fun game. Um, that said, it starts to, it gets really boring when it's nine handed because you just have to play so tight and um, yeah. I think that Limit 08 is really fun heads up, and it's okay six-handed, and it's great like four-handed or less. All right, so we got tens. I know he's a regular. Oops, that's the wrong color for a regular. Uh, hold on, let's play this hand. I mean, I'm going to three bet now because of this guy, and we're just going to try to get it in, so... And if we're beat, we're beat. Um, what was I going to do? Change this to the correct yellow. Uh-oh. I do not like that call. <laughs> I do not like that call at all. Um, for some reason, this feels strong to me. It looks so weak if I check. <laughs> um... But what's he going to do about it? I'll check. Let's see what happens. OK. That also looks weak when he checks. That looks strong. <laughs> so like he, with this short stack, like any king x, I think he's going to bet. He doesn't have queens or jacks. So I think I have spacey beat most of the time. Um, other than some slow plays, Marty Cohen probably has me beat. I mean, what is he shoving with here? Like ace queen with ace of diamonds is what I'm hoping for. If he has a king, 11 outs, I'm hoping, but he could have like king queen with the queen of diamonds. I don't think, I don't think I can call. Max Value says, uh, have you ever questioned choosing poker for a career path on a particularly bad downswing? Or have you, for the most part, always been able to accept the swings and move along? I guess I've never questioned the career path so much. I didn't have, I mean, like I, I started playing poker when I was a college student and I didn't have like a career path planned out. So I'm, I was never, I've never been like comparing it to something else. Um, I'm actually just going to slow play this because I think that um. So this is an unknown. I think unknowns, like the average player is going to struggle to call flop and like make enough tough plays. But sometimes when you check, they, they do crazy things. 
Um, so that's what I'm gonna go for. And I'm actually gonna keep checking. And now I'm gonna call. I mean, I think I have the best hand, but uh, I don't think, I think he has air. So. By the way, when I say I think, this is not like a confident read in anything, just it's what I think is happening most of the time. And so I'm, I'm that's me abbreviating my thought process so uh, to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, pretty weird sizing, because like anything better than my hand should bet bigger than that for value. King X nine is flushes. I don't know. I mean, he shouldn't be. I don't know what he's representing, but he he should bet bigger than that if he has me beat. So let's try to put some more money into the pot. Um, obviously, like he could be a really strong player, or he could be not, and I don't know that. So I have to kind of plan for all types. But if he's a strong player, like <clears throat> I don't think he's expecting a check raise there very often, and so I don't think he's trying to induce it with a smaller bet. Eight five, eight five off, I don't think is a defend, but it could be. Could also three bet bluff. Oh, we are on the bubble. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm such a fish. Um, we are not on the bubble, I take that back. We're not close. 89 remaining, 35 cash. I was just looking at my position, 32, and thinking that 32 were left. That tank is, I don't know, makes me like not want to bluff as much, but. All right, and we'll go on break after this. All right, I will see you all soon. Uh, I'll be, I mean, it's five minute, four minute break. I'll probably be back before then. See ya. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm actually going to try. Hmm. I'm wondering if I could get the um, something on the screen for you, because people keep asking about the players remaining. So let me see if I can do it. Um,
Okay, so we'll add a something, something. No, I guess you're... Is that the right one? And then make it smaller, right? Alright, so what if we just hmm. move these closer together? And put this down here. I mean, it's not beautiful, but you know, it's something. That works, right? I mean, you guys are on a five minute delay, so you're gonna be telling me later, but I think this is good. enough <clears throat> okay back to the action Christopher Robbins full ring 08 is my least favorite game by mile yeah it's too bad because it's a great game shorthanded um, I feel like I've missed a lot of chat I'm gonna keep up with the uh, I'm gonna be paying attention to the current chat but if I missed your question, feel free to re-ask it. Um, just don't want to get too far behind. We're talking about gas prices. What's going on here? Michael Neal asked, when I decided to devote a lot of my time to poker and become a professional, was my main way of studying. So back then it was different, right? I, this was in, um, you know, 2004. So I picked up a couple of poker books. I found the two plus two forums where, and I just read strategy posts. It was not like, but that's not what I would recommend doing today. Today I would watch training videos. I would watch, I would watch training videos. I'd watch streams, but actually I would definitely, if you can afford it, um, watch training videos somewhere because there's a lot of good free content out there because good player stream, but the the number of hours you're going to put in learning from streams compared to the numbers, number of hours you'd put in learning the same information from um, like a structured training course that you have to pay for, I think it, it pays for itself. Um, you know, you might pay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use our courses as an example, but there are tons of good courses. I think from the ground up, uh, like No Limit is $50 or $100. I mean, uh, and then some of the other ones are 150, but let's just even say $150. If that's going to save you, you know, 15, 20 hours of study, um, and potentially even 40 hours, potentially studying a different way is going to send you in the wrong direction rather than from somebody who's, who's kind of vetted as a good teacher, um, by us or by another training site. Um, so that would be my advice. And it, but if you're working with no bankroll, then absolutely like streams and, and watching people play. I think it's a good way to start. And from watching streams like this, you can interact with people like me, um, find out how they like to learn and ask more specific questions about, you know, where you're at and, and what you should do next. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Scala 13, what's up? Gulping water ASMR. Am I? Are my gulps loud? All right, Queen Jack suited. I'm gonna call. How much time left in the re-entry here? The problem is I have more than a single stack now. Um, late red. Okay, for 28 more minutes, I can bust. <laughs> uh, it seems like PLO cash is completely dead though. So I think. We'll continue going to a little more than 
men for no particular reason. I do drink a lot of water. So buckle up. Um, I mean, no handboard interaction. I'm just going to give up Queen Jack, even though it's like a board where he's going to whiff a decent amount of the time. If he's a good player, he's going to check a lot of good hands here too. Um, Queen 10 suited is always a defend for a normal size three bet. This is a really big three bet in position, which is unfortunate. I don't know if I am supposed to call my hand or not. Is there like a find this player? No. Uh, easy call on the turn there, obviously. So I mean, he's three xing, which just seems a little big. Queen 10 suited is a good hand. I'm gonna check Queen Jack. I don't think he should bet Ace King on the turn. Um, I mean, how much does it matter that he's going bigger than, like, by 2K? I don't think it should matter that much. Obviously, not a good flop for me. Um, if he bets that amount, I think I need a call. Um, could also raise, of course. Yeah, I'm gonna raise. You don't need to raise that big on these boards. Uh, God, it's very hard to type on this site. This is what I would do with like Ace Queen. Um, I think you you do a lot of like small raising on boards like this where it's hard to have a continuing range. Um, at least you do a heads up. I don't know about. That's that small on the flop. Still calls. I mean, I think one more barrel, but I'm not thrilled. What am I hoping he's folding? Whatever, whatever that hand was. <laughs> All right. Um, JJK says thanks for streaming this. You're very welcome. Hopefully, we make a, a nice, nice deep run at it. I feel like chat's gotten uh, <laughs> gotten more random, and, and do we have more viewers? Is that what's going on, or it's just getting later? We actually have fewer viewers. Some of you left. I was too boring. I understand. Um, whoops. All right, let's play these hands. King nine off or king nine suited on this board, I think, is a good c bet. Can maybe go a little bigger, but this is fine. Our Vandalay, I cannot believe how cocky we're in that driving video. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was a different me. Um, six, seven suited, definitely gonna play. This guy, I'm just gonna call. I think it's like it's a pretty good three bet spot, but I don't wanna get blown off this hand and I feel like I've seen him make some erratic plays, but I, I might be mistaken. I might be, I haven't been paying very much attention.
Chris Mace, Phil, what are your thoughts on the Texas poker room movement? I don't have many thoughts on them, honestly, uh, on it. Honestly, I don't know a lot about it. Um, <clears throat> I heard that they're like, that the laws there are very strange and that you're like, my understanding was that most of the rooms are, it's kind of thing, I could be completely wrong here, but my understanding was like most of the rooms are doing things, are like not supposed to be spreading poker in the way they are, but it's like a an unspoken thing that it's, that it's fine. So that was certainly worried me about, uh, but like I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not in that business and I'm not gonna learn I'm not going to get into that business. I live here in Vegas and I'm, I've never opened a, like I have no experience with a brick and mortar business as well. Why do I play online, not in person? I play both, but I actually, I, I prefer online by quite a bit. Um, I like being, I like being at home. I'm a homebody. Um, there's a lot of stuff you have to deal with playing live, especially cash games, like getting on lists and waiting and, well, especially in the like the the private game world, like getting into games or semi-private games or attempting to. I mean, I I don't get into them. Ace two's offsuit. I don't know if th this is probably not okay, but I've made a lot of plays so far that I don't think that that are cuspy. Um, if you couldn't tell, I like to mix it up a little bit. Um, but I don't know. I think I'm not trying to play badly. Obviously, I take this seriously, but I am willing to gamble. Um. But yeah, I definitely like being at home. Uh, I also find for me personally, like if I'm at a casino playing, I have to think about other things and even things as silly as like, you know, when you're in public, you have to think about what your face looks like. You can't be making a stupid face. And that's true here on stream as well. But I think, um, yeah, but I, I mean, I still make stupid faces from time to time, I'm sure. Uh, but you just have to think about your presence and not only that, but like, staying still, not giving off tells. Um, I find at home, like just relaxing and like honing in on the game. I get so hyper-focused on the game and I just love being able to do that. So online is always my preference. Um, but I like live poker too. Check this down, of course. Brett McNary, uh, I love watching good players like you stream. Thank you. I'm not that great at this game, but... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is it, isn't it tough playing and streaming for a long time? Has to be exhausting. Yeah. Um, honestly, for me, kind of similar to what I was just talking about, I, I have so much experience making training videos that playing while talking about what I'm doing is pretty easy. And I also like answering questions doesn't bother me so much. However, there is an element to streaming where it feels more social um, because I'm here with you guys right now. And um, that drains me more than the other parts of it, playing and, and talking about why I'm like, if this were pre-recorded, somehow it would be less um, less exhausting on me. But that's just just me. I think everybody's a little different. Gcash, how do you like the new location for WSOP Valleys compared to Binions in Rio? I never played when it was at Binions, although I've been to Binions. Um, King Nine Offsuit, I guess I'll fold. Um, I've only played one tournament. It was it was a better experience overall. Um, one thing that I really, really like about it, which is perhaps a small difference for some people, but for me makes, um, I think like aesthetically and just the vibe is much better. The tables are more spread out. Um, I think things like that, like little touches that make it feel more high end uh, go a really long way. Um, so overall, I, I definitely like it better so far, um, but we'll see. I've only played one event, but m it seems that most people agree. Most people are saying, Similar things. What's the craziest prop bet I've ever done and did I win it? I don't know that I've, that I can think of uh, any. Uh, I'm gonna three bet this, I think this guy's opening a lot just cause every time I look at a hand I might wanna play, it seems like he's opened. And this, I mean, this hand's fine to three bet anyways. It's probably a little bit too loose. Okay. 
Will these tourneys complete tonight or will they be a day two? Asks Daddy Zillian. These will complete tonight, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Viewer numbers are fluctuating, says Moonlight. Yeah, I think I think I might lose viewers when I go on break. Um, <clears throat> is that what's happened? Does, does it seem like that's what's happening? Uh, I guess I call this off. We are flipping. We are no longer flipping. Now, unfortunately, it was not for the full stack, so we can't rebuy. Moonlight Master, thank you for fielding some questions. I really appreciate it. King six suited. Seems close. Let's do it. Because we still have 17 minutes to get all in. If I'm only in this for one bullet, that's... Well, it's not what I set out to do. And I'm not even, I don't even have a big stack. Unfortunately, I, so I was thinking if we bust out of one of these, I'll pull up a PLO table and see if I can get some action at like 51 or 100, 200 PLO, but there's nobody playing any stakes, so I don't think it's going to happen. But I'll try if, if I bust out of one of these. Ant and Connor talking about the, uh, the, uh, the Queen 10 suited bluff. You know, maybe he had King Queen with back doors. Um, or like seven, seven, eight, eight. But he assumes he folds king queen. No, he probably does float king queen with backdoors on the flop. Um, honestly, though, so the the interesting thing about this spot on the turn is that if he has just like ace ten, I'm representing better than ace ten. So he just has to decide how often I'm bluffing. But you you can conceivably fold ace ten here. But you could also, you know, conceivably decide to call with six x or something. It's just a you know, need to decide if I'm bluffing or not. But I'm representing basically stronger than ace-10. <laughs> Justin says, my bar mitzvah was February 5th, 1994. When was yours? Um, I don't know the date, uh, the exact date, but it would have been in um, 1998. And actually, like in the earlier part of the year, my birthday is in January, so I think probably sometime in January, maybe February. Sebastian says, thanks for seeking discomfort, Phil, playing and streaming for us. You're very welcome. I uh, I do enjoy it. Like, it, it, it distracts, or it exhausts me, but, uh, and it's it's hard, but, uh, but I enjoy it. Um, yeah. Eric Smith. Yeah, Ted Cruz was on Poker After Dark. That was, it was unfortunate timing for this, for that to air. Um, Connor, hello. Connor just saying hi, Phil Yalfond. Hello, hello. Uh, what's the craziest prop bet you've ever done? Did you win it? I don't, I haven't really been involved in, I've witnessed prop bets, but the craziest prop bet I've been involved in. I mean, I can't, I honestly can't, I'm not hiding anything. I can't think of anything. I haven't done any cool, any cool prop bets. Victor, you're very welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I guess I'm going to keep opening. I feel like I've played a lot of hands on this table. I mean, I had I feel like I know I've played a lot of hands on this table. A lot of them have been cuspy, maybe slightly too loose, um, but they don't know that. But they certainly people are gonna notice. I think that I'm playing a lot of hands. Um, I don't know if you check range here, but I'm gonna check. King 10, I guess I'll check and maybe call. I don't know. And Queen Jack, probably, that's uh, tough. 
That's tough. No, I'll fold king 10 to that sizing. I mean, I can just concede the am with queen jack. I think that's okay. I think that waiting to bluff river is not going to work super well. I think like bet turn, bet river makes more sense, but I don't have um, great cards for it. some reason actually even when I'm not streaming my uh, my right shoulder gets very unhappy about me playing poker all day uh, Frabru uh, says how many events are you planning to play this WSOP I don't know I talked about a little earlier in the stream that that I don't really have a plan and it's kind of stressing me out that I don't have a plan um, but I don't have a plan Robert, glad you're enjoying it. Keep crushing a 25 PLL. Good luck out there. Yeah, we're on a five minute delay. Penbar, have you ever gone broke in the first years? No, I never went broke. I did lose half my bankroll probably three times. Um, but I always just stepped back down and, and got back to the grind. Um, but I mean, going broke, the way to handle going broke is like the way to handle being at the start of your career without money and deciding, deciding what to do. Meanwhile, we've, we've hit a flop. I feel like I've checked every single flop when I've been weak and now I'm betting when strong. I'm very cognizant of that. <laughs> and, uh, but I think this hand really wants to bet. Actually, it's not the worst hand to check because blocking eights, eights are a hand that calls. King X bets a lot as him. So I don't know. But I think this just is going to do better. Especially being like second out of three, you don't want to avoid, like to not have the opportunity for this to happen. Um, I guess I just put the rest in. I don't. I don't think it looks... Well... Now I'll just call. My hand's so strong. Just a gut shot. That's he might be trying to rebuy. Cause I'm pretty sure he's a reg. So he might be going. He has ten minutes left to re-enter, and he and I respect that. <laughs> you guys saw me do it with Ace Jack when I was pretty sure I was behind. Gcash says, I remember watching you when Binions used to televise their cash games. Yeah, that was the first uh, TV cash game I ever played on. Uh, it was, I forget what it was called. It was 100, 200, No Limit Hold'em. And um, I met a couple people there that I stayed friends with for a long time. So I care. What's your strategy for the main event? Right now, I'm leaning towards not playing the main event, actually, which I know sounds crazy. But it's... Um, It's, it takes so long. It takes so, so long. And um, I don't know. I guess it'll depend how many other events I play leading up to it. If I play a lot and I'm just on the WSOP schedule, then I'll probably play it. But if not, I'm going to be like, my initial plan was to play the, uh, why did he bet so big? That's sad. Um, I mean, I think I just need to fold. Feels tight, but I, I don't know. It's a big bet. Um, my initial plan was to just play the... I played the 25K heads up, did very poorly, <laughs> and then uh, to play the... the um, 25K PLO, the 50K PLO, and then just stop, and then 
go back to my regular life where wherein I'm waking up at a this is close to waking up at uh, 6 a.m. and going to bed at right now <laughs> um, and if I'm doing that you know the WSOP is not what do I do now do I shove I mean what's this guy I don't know I'm gonna call and let make him act on the flop before I do um, This is a weird spot. Um, I think it's hard to get people to put money in um, after you've just called flop and there's a completely dry side pot, so I like raising flop. Anyways, um, if I'm on like that early schedule, I don't wanna have to be off schedule for like six days uh, if I go, and that's not even going that deep in the main. Um, with the breaks included, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kevin, have you ever been on the receiving end of a Helmuth meltdown? I have not, no. Adam Smith, are you related to Farrah Galfond? Uh, I wasn't until I married her. Curls Gone Wild said, Galfond Challenge had pretty cool prop bets. I'd say, yeah, that's true. I, I had bets, a lot of side bets on myself. Uh, yeah, Ryan, Ryan the Plant. Hey, good to see you, man. Um, pointed that out first. Charlie Sheen, why do you receive only two cards? I don't know. I I uh, I thought I was going to be playing a PLO tournament. This is this is really upsetting. Christian, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, for following and subbing, and uh, glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Matthias Lundgren says, what made you decide to stream on YouTube over Twitch? Not questioning the choice, just curious. Many thanks for the stream. You're very welcome. Um, I So I last year, so I've streamed on Twitch in the past. I never streamed on YouTube before. Last year, I launched the, this YouTube channel. And I've just been trying to grow it. And I thought that, um, I thought that streaming would be, streaming here would be more beneficial to growing it. Um, obviously, I, I could have streamed on both, I think, although I think my account's like a Twitch partner and they don't let you multi-stream. I might be misremembering something there. Um, but I don't know. I, I just wanted to, like, with YouTube, I'm such a, I'm such a noob, but it's, uh, it's cool to try new things and see how they work. Um, so that's, I wanted to see, this first stream here, I wanted to see how it went. Um, it's going well, I think. And, um, you know, what it does for my channel if I get uh, a lot of subscribers and, <clears throat> and, uh, th and in turn people watching more videos and, and whatever, whatever, <laughs> um, et cetera, then, uh, then I'll probably stream more often. I don't know. <laughs> Thomas H. <laughs> the four card enforcer, the short stack Sultan. I don't know if I like short stack salt, but I'll take it. Two card Titan, I'm striving to be. Oh man, you guys are asking some uh, some tough questions. Biggest light bulb moment early in your development as a player. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not trying to avoid the. Well, okay. I just I'm gonna miss some other questions trying to think of the answer there. Um, I think once I, I mean, this is pretty early, but I kind of learned roughly about like comp hand combinations. And so, for example, on uh, nine, that's too bad. <laughs> on a uh, nine, six, five, when you get check called, there are so many gut shots that check call you because they only need one card to have a gut shot. Obviously, this depends on preflop ranges. Um, but in spots like that, they have so many more potential bluffs on the river after you check back turn, for example, than they would if, uh, I think Ace Deuce is a fold here, than they would if it's like, you know, 9, 8, 3, and then they, they, there are a lot of two card straight draws to have, but it's so much easier to have a one card straight draw. Um, so just kind of like combinatorics, I think was a big light bulb moment for me. 
even if not, like I still don't, I don't count combos, which a lot of players uh, at a high level do. I just have a rough idea, and I think that goes a long way. How much was my starting bankroll? So I deposited fifty dollars. I lost it. I deposited a hundred dollars, and I didn't lose it. Um, I was, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have, like, I was in college, and my college was paid for by my parents, and my, like, room and board was paid for by my parents. So, I did work on the side, and I didn't have living expenses. So, like, I didn't really, I didn't have a clear bankroll, but. I could lose a little bit of money and be fine because my expenses were taken care of. And most people are not that fortunate. And so I was very lucky to have, um, you know, d despite the fact that it was only $150 that it took, um, I was lucky that I, that I was able to take that risk and, you know, could have risked more and still had a chance uh, to do it. Whereas, you know, a lot of people, well, the, the overwhelming majority of people are not not that lucky. Um, I guess I'm calling King Jack suited. Um, yeah. Jazzbo is really putting in work for me. Smash the like button, all you poker fans. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I, I have not worked myself up to asking for likes and subs, but maybe I will one day. Eric Smith says, was one of the times you lost half your bankroll on high-stakes poker? No, it wasn't. They were all online. Very interesting flop. So SPR four. I mean, I think I just need to start putting money in. Lose to ace ten, ten nine. I mean, Paul G is not gonna have kings or queens. Is he gonna have jacks? Possibly. Probably not. Um, I lose to King Queen. I lose to Ace Ten. I lose to Nine. Um, I mean, there's no folding this hand. I, I think I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud, without a real uh, direction. Well, let's start with a small bet. Get called. And turn is interesting. When it's this draw heavy, we go a little bigger. I don't think we want to go geometric. So 16, 16 would make it. I mean, this seems right to me. Not the river we were hoping for. Um, if check two, we just check. What does he have that he could turn into a bluff? Queen ten, but I don't. I don't think he's likely to bluff with queen ten. I mean, I think I probably lose, but I'm. I mean, I'm not going to bluff with king jack. Okay, cool. Like he needs to start considering turning that into a bluff, I think, for me to consider calling with King Jack against a bet. Deuces, I think, are just a fold. Um, 
Douglas, have you ever played in the New Hampshire area? No, I have not. Russell picked up 600 subs in four hours. So I guess this does, uh, <laughs> I guess streaming is good for my channel. Robert Savy, as a prodigy, how long, how low did you play when starting out? How long did it take you for your progress? I don't, I wouldn't consider myself a prodigy. I think I learned at the pace of my peers. Um, at least like, I mean, my peer, when I say peers, I do mean the ones that ended up going, going pro. But uh, I was not like standing out um, in my early years. Um, I played, yeah, I played small. I played sit and goes first and um, kind of moved up the ranks there. Slow and steady with good bankroll management that I learned from two plus two and, and poker books. Um, Ace four. I think I'm just going to raise now. I'm used to um, obviously calling it off. I'm used to uh, deep stack play. And deep stack play, you end up like, well, you don't slow play very much. I think with short stacks, you probably do a little bit more. Um, so I'm just you know, going to be doing some guessing. <laughs> um, obviously, these are going pretty well for me now. Um, seventh out of 69 in the 5K, 70th out of almost 800 as uh, late reg is just closing now or just closed. Yeah. Matt Collins, I'll give you an easy question. Thank you for the easy question. What's your favorite poker room you've played in? Um, I like the Aria. Uh, that said, actually, I, I recently played at um, Resorts World, and it was really nice. Um, maybe even... No, I think Aria, like Table 1, Ivy's Room, um, is the nicest place I played. But Well, actually, I played one game at somebody's house that was probably nicer. But, but yeah, I'm going to go with, with Aria. <laughs> Mr. Scott R says, uh, if the poker thing doesn't work out, you can make a living recording audiobooks. I don't know if I would do great with uh, reading. I don't read. I can read. But... Moonlight Master says, yeah, definitely more beneficial to the YouTube channel and multi streaming. Maybe an issue for Twitch partnership. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I, yeah, I guess I am a Twitch partner, I think, or at least the run at once channel is, I think mine is too. Jens says, uh, jungle's introduction with the Falcons on his pod is just priceless. Yeah. His, uh, I think not a lot of people watch that podcast that he did with me, but it was, it was really, it was funny. EH asks, should low bankroll start in small cash games or tournaments? Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's a clear answer. Here's what I, an answer I gave at the top of the stream that I'll give again because I think it's important. I think it depends on your, um, well, first of all, it depends what you like to play. I didn't mention that. You should play what you like to play because enjoying what you do is really important. It's going to help you progress more um, and help you withstand you know, emotional swings and all, all the hard stuff that comes along with playing poker. Um, I think that cash has a higher ceiling. I think you can earn more in cash if you are going to work really hard, study really hard, and if you're you know, like a high aptitude person. If you're gonna play somewhat casually and or don't like to study that much and or you know, are somebody that doesn't think you're you know, much above average, which is totally fine, but nobody ever likes to admit that to themselves. Um, then I think tournaments are better because I think they're more beatable um, with a pretty good game. But I think that with a very good game, cash is worth more. I hope that made sense. Uh, Francisco says, what's your most memorable moment in Bobby's room or another big Vegas cash game? 
That's a great question. And I feel like there have been a lot of memorable moments. But I'm not, I don't know. I feel like there have been a ton, but nothing's like, nothing obvious popping into my head. Uh, let me play these hands and then hopefully, maybe I'll remember uh, to answer. So Jack's here, it's 40 big blind stack. I mean, I think we're getting it in, I don't know. And queen 10 suited, I guess we're just gonna call. Interesting flop. We'll open with jacks over here. Or sorry, ace jack suited. Um, with queen ten, we're obviously not folding. Um, I think I like if I raise to like thirteen, it's forty in the pot. Uh, I can't quite jam turn. Does that matter? It kind of does matter. I'm going to check call. Because now I can check jam. Which I think is what I want to do. I mean, people are not bet folding Gaze Jack here. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> Doesn't seem like he's folding. Uh, here he shoves basically for 30k. That's tough. These are tough spots. I mean, I'm going to jam queen 10 because what else am I going to jam with? I have to hope he's bluffing. And with ace jack, you don't really know. Um, yeah, I didn't think I was getting that through, but I, I don't know. Queen 10 suit, like... Can't have more outs than that. So I think I think I'm fine with that play. I really didn't like seeing his like huge sizing. And then here with Ace Jack suited, I mean I think I'm supposed to call it off. I'm running out of time bank. I need to be aware of that. Is there anything I could do? To, I, I don't know. I, I like my play. It's fine. We'll open Queen Eight. I mean, so ace track suit, it's pretty weird. I mean, I maybe could have just shoved it in pretty. I don't think either of them, well, they could have ace queen that I maybe could have gotten them to fold. Queen and offsuit, I'll fold to the three bets. I mean, this is a weird, it's just a weird spot. Usually you see somebody shove that stack in and now unfortunately with a player behind me, I have to fold the 10 4 3 flop. I don't think there's any consideration there. Curious to see these hands. Okay, that makes sense. Curl's gone wild. Do you have a stable? No, I don't. Um, so the if so is. is uh, no need to answer. Mitchell Tate, thank you for the uh, for the very kind words, and you're very welcome. Do I track my downswings? What's the longest dry spell you've had? So the longest one time-wise was like a year and a half, but it was live cash and it wasn't that many sessions. So in terms of hands, I don't know, I don't know. Depp, what is your favorite food? Um, I don't want to talk. I'm going to get hungry. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> F 
Frabru asks, um, so my, uh, my mini challenge against jungle, I made a call where I said I have a good calling hand and he had potted three times. I only had top pair. Why was it a good calling hand? Do you remember the hand? I don't remember the hand. Probably why I said that was I probably unblocked a lot of draws that he could have. Um, meaning that, you know, cards that his bluffs, cards that his bluffs would contain, um, I didn't have, but yeah. <laughs> Moonlight Master, yeah, the double stream was, was so fun. I mean, jungle stream was amazing. Douglas English, here's a question. I'm on the bad end of a swing, second bad end of my semi-career after a very good run before and a very good run to start. I'm tired. How do you deal with the swings? First of all, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. We've we've all been there. I think the if you're able to take time off, I would definitely say take some time off. I think taking time off is the most valuable thing you can do if you have the option to. Um, just get some distance between you and the swing and kind of reset mentally. However, that said, when you come back into it, don't think that the swing is like, what can happen is you're like, okay, I reset. Now I'm going to start again. And you have one losing session and you kind of deteriorate because in your mind you're expecting to win from then on. It's not bad to expect to win, but just be ready for that, um, that, that like backslide kind of, because I've had that happen to me. But I would say take some time off and do some studying. And honestly, even if the studying doesn't actually improve your win rate that much. Um, the confidence that it gives you uh, in your game and, and in yourself for working on your game, I think will pay off and, and help you withstand the emotional swings a little bit more. You got an all in. The big draw now does not get there. But yeah, I mean, it's important to also keep in mind that sometimes, you know, some swings are downswings and sometimes you're actually an underdog in the game. And I never want to just give blanket advice saying like, oh, it's going to turn around and you're going to win because it might not be true for everybody. And I mean, it's not true for a lot of people. Um, if you've had a long track record of success, then you know, you have more reason to have confidence in your game and that's great. And I would, I would look back at, at your track record and, um, go to, uh, like primedope.com variance calculator and plug in like what's happened and see how improbable or probable that could be. Uh, I just want to see this action. Very interesting. I think the turn bet doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but the flop bet certainly does. And the river bet certainly does. And it's certainly not that bad by any means. Yeah, the jungle challenge was hilarious, Frabru. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's he's very very funny. All right, this player just open jammed a lot of big blinds. I'm just gonna note that. He could be a maniac. Robert O'Brien says, Phil, do collabs with other poker pros and maybe play on some of the big streams, Hustler Live, Live at the Bike in the Lodge, your subs will skyrocket. Yeah, I've been thinking about, uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, someone asked about going to play in the Hustler. I, I've, I would consider it. Um, yeah, I'd consider it. Uh, or I am considering it. Alexander, hey Phil, I'm studying for the Nevada bar exam while watching you play. It's definitely keeping my brain active. Good luck. Good luck to you. Um, I'm not sure that uh, that watching poker streams is while while studying for the bar is GTO. However, if it's working for you, great. Um, Amir asks, is this tournament just for? the WSOP Las Vegas players. It's Las Vegas, uh, or sorry, Nevada and um, New Jersey. I don't know if it's anywhere else yet. Uh, Michigan, I don't know if they're, I don't think they're sharing the player pool yet. All right, ace 10 off suit easy open.
And at 40 big blinds, I mean, I'm not shoving, I don't think, over a raise. Or no, 20 big blinds, 20 something. All right, that's a good flop. Um, I don't think I want to be checking this back. I kind of do want to. I don't think I'm supposed to, but for some reason, I think it's going to play out better if I do. So let's do that. Um, King eight suited seems close here. I didn't think this through all the way. I thought that if I um if I uh well, this is a flop where I think like, you know, I check a lot of like eight four suited and seven six and stuff like that. So I think I look like a lot of air, but I might double check those and then go for the bet on the river. So by the time I bet turn, I don't know. Whatever. I, I mean, my hand's supposed to be a bet. I think the EV is going to be pretty similar. Um, so I don't mind checking if I think it's going to make something good happen, which I did. Was I wrong? Who knows? Mike, do I always like chocolate nuts for pregame? I don't know. I don't, I, I guess, I mean, no. <laughs> Max Value, what do you say you spend more time focused on poker or business these days? It's a great question. I think in, um, in 2021, it was definitely business. In 2022, it's been kind of split. I would like it to shift more to poker than it has been. Um, Ace Queen offsuit here is dicey-ish, because I don't think I can raise fold it. I guess I'm just gonna call. Um, I guess I'm folding deuces. Always makes me sad to fold a pocket pair, but just a little bit sad. Let's see if this player has played any, has shown down any other hands that might teach me anything. So the ace jack, that was all in pre. Queens against me, bet big. Here's king 10. He check called, he check called, and he check called and all in. Okay. Um, ace queen, interesting. I think I start with a check. Betting is fine. Um, and now we're just trying to get stacks in. If we're beat by this is up, so be it. Or I mean, whatever. If we're beat by something, so be it. I don't know what to make of that. It's really went in the tank before checking. Um, I think he's folding. That's my. Although now that he's not snap folded, maybe not. I was right. <laughs> Eric Comp, Phil's been unblocking back to her since two thousand two. That I have. <clears throat> Brendan Royston, rank these movies, Dumb and Dumber, Old School, Caddyshack. You know, I haven't seen Caddyshack in a really long time. I haven't seen most of those in a really long time, but Dumb and Dumber is my favorite. Um, 
I guess I'm going to actually rank them in the order you put them. I know Caddyshack's a classic, but Dumb and Dumber, Old School, then Caddyshack. Um, fun, uh, fun fact, I proposed to my wife, Farah, after, um, after we watched Dumb and Dumber 2 in theaters. Not immediately after, like two hours after. Tyson Ingram, would I recommend online play or live casino play and for what reasons? Totally up to you and what you like doing. I prefer playing online. A lot of people prefer playing in casinos. I think one thing to keep in mind is that um, online games are going to be a lot tougher for similar stakes. Um, so I usually use a, uh, a 10x multiple. Um, so like playing 10, 20 live is going to be play, like playing $1, $2 blinds online in terms of toughness. Um, I know that sounds kind of crazy if, if you haven't played both, but that's definitely how, how it tends to be, you know, give or take. Uh, let's start with the check here. But <clears throat> that might make you say, well, why would I ever play online? But the fact of the matter is, you know, you can play, I mean, you could play 10 times more hands online than live. So actually playing one, two and playing 10, 20 live with similar win rates um, you might actually do a little better online um, and with fewer swings or smaller swings, I should say, not fewer. Um, checks flop bets turn. Kind of don't believe that he has. Kind of don't believe him, but I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so we're going to go on a break. I'm going to, <laughs> because my theory is that I've lost, uh, I've lost viewers every time that I go on break. So what I'm going to do is just leave the, uh, leave this on. I'm just going to leave my desk for one minute and then come right back and see if we uh, cannot lose viewers. Hmm. I kind of just think I'm getting called here. I know I, I'm kind of being a nit, but there are just so many like king x hands that check here, nine x hands that check, queen, queen eight and stuff like he just check calls a lot of stuff so decided not to go for it now he's trying to make me fold a chop i'm gonna fold it uh potential chop and i will be back in one minute All right, how do we do? We did not lose viewers. Thank you for sticking around. Brandon asks, is WSOP going to upgrade from the 888 platform? Um, I hope so. Um, Justin Mills, what's the, most, what's the best way to study effectively? It depends on the game you're playing, but I actually think a combination of three things. Training videos, 
uh, solver based tools and poker friends, uh, I think is, is, is huge. Moonlight master just saw me, uh, lose half my stack with queen 10 suited. It's all good. It happens. Perry Lee asked if I thought about trading options. Um, not really. I had a, um, I once played in a charity tournament with, um, uh, and, and made friends with somebody who runs a hedge fund. And he told me that I have a job whenever I want it. Um, this was, this was like 2009. Um, I didn't really think about it seriously, but it was nice to know there was like a backup plan. And, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I've, I've enjoyed poker too much. I think John Coyle, good luck to you as well out there in PA. Curl's gone wild. If I take this down, can you give away a free month of Elite on Run at Once? Um, I didn't know you offered a free membership on there. That's cool. Definitely plus EV signing up. Yeah, with, with uh, well, first of all, if I win a bracelet, yeah, I'll, I'll give away some stuff. <laughs> um, and if I do win a bracelet and I forget to give anything away because I'm distracted and excited and exhausted because it's going to be way past my bedtime, which is now, then uh, you guys can remind me on Twitter. Um, and I'll just go back to the to the stream chat and decide who to give it to uh give different things to um uh, nisha thank you very much i appreciate it all right ace queen offsuit and the small blind it's kind of embarrassing but i i'm <laughs> i wish that i had a a converter to big blinds so that I didn't have to think about it every hand. I guess we're just calling um, Mace Queen off here against Under the Gun. Yeah. All right, so left table. Uh, we're not folding. I think probably just call. left <clears throat> for some reason I kind of don't believe him though why don't I believe him why don't I believe him because I just don't And then on the right table, um, Brett McNary. Yeah, the sequel to Dumb and Dumber wasn't as good. I guess I'm folding Ace Queen here. Is my okay? I got called. Is my screen? I think my screen is getting like yellow. Can you guys see that? Uh. I didn't believe him, but then I thought he was going to fold. <clears throat> I mean, I have a good bluffing hand, but... Got to try, right? What am I drinking? Just drinking water. My favorite drink. I drink a lot of it. Um, so, if you want to why I said why I said it's a good bluffing hand on the river, it's because I unblock. Like I don't have spade any spades in my hand. So he's going to bet call with some spade hands. Um, I also think he's like 
a little more likely to bet small on the turn with, um, I mean, I guess maybe he's not opening ace four offsuit, but like lower ace X than I think like ace 10, ace queen plus. That's why I didn't really believe him because I thought he would bet bigger with those hands. This is very attractive to bet bigger with those hands, get called by nine X and like you're folding out air anyways. Um, move the replay or it shows up over the tournament lobby. Yes. Sorry for the delay there on that. Chris F., you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. Ricky asks, uh, asks Farrah if she'll scream, stream an MTT. She streamed once on Run It Once Poker. She hated it so much. <laughs> Not Run It Once Poker, just the streaming part. She didn't like, so I don't think she's going to do it again. <laughs> AM says, Phil, what if you buy a cat so it can sit in the chair for those five-minute breaks in order to avoid losing viewers? That's a pretty good idea. I have a dog, but... She wouldn't. She wouldn't stay in the seat. I think. Thank you for being on top of uh, the uh, the chat, Moonlight Master. Elba Falls says, "How do I make poker friends online?" Yeah, I think online's a great way, or at your casino. But I, th I think online's a fantastic way. Now, see, now we're losing viewers once again. I guess it's kind of random. I don't know. We still got plenty. Thank you for being here. Michael Nedwick, how many bracelets do you have? I have three bracelets. So we're now getting kind of short on the right table. Um, 42 out of 56 remaining, 35 cash. It's too bad. This guy's opening to, I mean, I really want to play <laughs> seven, eight suited against him, but I don't know. I'm just gonna sit back, relax a little bit. Will I be playing any of the high roller WSOP events? I'm gonna play the PLO high rollers, 25K and the 50K, but I do not intend to play the, um, the 50K plus no limit tournaments. I don't think I don't think I'm good enough. <laughs> Poker income. Was that you playing Venetian tournaments 15 years ago wearing all Texas football outfit? That was not me. <laughs> uh, you know, any comment on the Vogel saying tanking every hand? I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, I think we need to change the rules. I think I think we need chess clocks, basically. Um, I think it's I think it's uncool what he does, but I also think intent matters and I feel like just from the little bit I know about him as a person his intent is not to tilt people or to like angle shoot um he's actually just trying to be balanced and he's a, a slower thinker than the average player but I think something needs to be done so that you can't do that, basically. Um, and, and regardless of the intent, the result is really bad because obviously if everybody were playing at that speed, um, poker would, would die. Because <laughs> ima imagine an eight-handed table where everybody takes 15 seconds pre-flop and then whoever sees the flop takes you know, like each player takes two minutes. Um, and then whoever sees the turn, each player takes three minutes. Now you're just looking at like a hand that sees the river is, you know, literally going to take 18 minutes. So you play, you know, six hands, seven hands an hour at a, at a full table. And that's <laughs> just, uh, there's the, that that's the end of poker so it doesn't really work um for poker but i i don't uh 
It's unfortunate. I think I need to fold, even though I have a suit in hand. Um, but yeah, I think the rules need to change. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I don't think he has Ill, Ill intent. But I, I, you know, I don't know that. But I, I don't think so. Okay, if you can't see the nightlight setting, then good. I, I don't mind seeing it on my end. I just don't want it to ruin the experience for you. Do you, uh, Antoine asks, do I play on GG Poker? If not, why? I don't. Um, I don't because I live in the U.S. and I don't want a VPN to GG Poker, despite the fact that uh, the rest of the world does. Okay, Ace King offsuit. This hand, I know that we can get in pre. That's that's got to be too wide, right? I think so. Fortunate to hold. I mean, hands like that become a shove if I'm opening like a decent amount too wide, probably. And maybe I am. <laughs> he certainly has reason to believe that I am. All right, ace-queen offsuit on the left. Probably going to be playing in some fashion or another. Lucas has any tips for improving at games that aren't common, i.e., stud high low, bidacy, archie type mixed games. Yeah, because there, there's not a there's not a lot of good content around those games, as you mentioned. It's pretty tough. Um, I I don't have any great wisdom for you, honestly. I think that playing um, and reviewing hands in whatever tools you can find, like there's Troutulator and uh, like. Pro Poker Tools, uh, Odds Oracle, and I don't know what else there is out there these days. Um, Invoker saying something in chat. Hey, hey. I don't even know how you. Can, I don't even know how to say something. Um, Ace Queen offsuit against this sizing, I think, without a backdoor is just a fold when he's opening an early position. But I don't know. I could be wrong. The bubble for the 5K, uh, Joshua asks, is 35 players. So we have 51 remaining. So we're getting kind of close. And I mean, I think it's important to keep in mind because it's a high buy-in tournament and people are going to be interested in the cash. I mean, there are, people are always interested in the cash, but uh, I'm interested in the bracelet. So <laughs> I, I think I can push people around a little bit more than normal even. Um, if I bubble... That's okay. I don't know if this is a call or not, but pretty good pot odds. And I, I, I mean, I think the average player in this is going to be on the weaker side, and so I am trying to get involved a little bit more often. I don't have any reads on these players in particular. Check through. King turn is not ideal, um, but I mean, I have hearts. kind of tempted to check raise but I don't have a great reason for that <laughs> um, the main reason is that the board is so draw heavy that I just think a bet is uh, like a, this sizing bet is not going to get through very often that's I guess what I'm trying to say so I will go for the check raise I think we go pretty big. Our value hands here want to get all in on the river. And so I think they want to go 
you know, 25, and then jam river for whatever. <laughs> he clicks it back. Uh, so now I have to do math. So I'm getting uh, one, two, three and a half to one. Um, no, I mean, I'm only going to hit like 20% of the time. I need, f it's a little bit close, but he could also, ah, it's a little bit close. It's a little bit close. Implied odds. I mean, what is he doing, th choosing this sizing with? I kind of want to shove. I'm going to fold, but I really, <laughs> well, was not expecting that uh, that play. <laughs> so props to him. Um, I'll move the replayer off to the side this time while I think about it. So I call 25 to win. Eh, maybe I'm supposed to call such a weird spot. No, I, I mean, whatever. I'm fine with my play all around. Did I play the 25k no limit? Ask Rec. I did not play the 25... Uh, I played the 25k heads up no limit. I did not play the... Whatever. Uh, ring no limit tournament. <clears throat> Go for a seabed, even though my hand's pretty bad for it. Um, any chance I sell some action on Pocket Five for the big ticket PLO tournaments, just so the fans can get a sweat? I thought about it. I kind of just haven't gone through the hassle of doing it, and also like there's a chance I don't play, and I, I don't know. I guess I could still do it and then refund, um, but I kind of haven't gotten around to it. Maybe I'll give it some consideration, uh, or some more consideration, I should say. Um, I don't really want to bluff this player after <laughs> after the last hand. He wins. You you beat me. You got it. Um, yeah. Shut down. Okay, that makes sense. Would I play Ivy heads up, half PLO, half short deck? That's an excellent question. Um, if I could have three months to study, I would. But I've I don't but right now no I don't play a short deck. Jack seven offsuit I think can call against a button open. We flop a pair. Um, he's going big-ish. We'll obviously be calling seven with the Jack of Diamonds. Paul has asked, what city? I live in Las Vegas. Uh, so right table's gotten interesting now in that it's really hard for me to have bluffs when the 10 and the 9 come in. And so I should very seriously consider bluffing my hand. I am very seriously considering bluffing my hand. Um, I think I'm going to just check. But I, I think it's, you know, like I said, well worth considering a bluff. Check, check, I win against 4-5. So, I mean, somewhat noteworthy that he doesn't bluff that on the river. Um, not extremely noteworthy. It's not a mandatory bluff, I think. I don't think he's making a terrible mistake. But noteworthy that he, that he played it that way. I mean, his play is fine, for sure. But some people just always bluff there. Um... Michael says, good luck, Phil, big fan. 
Thank you very much. Um, been grinding 200 Zoom. Do you feel I'm at a level where I can start playing some live games? Cheers. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, 200 Zoom, if you're beating 200 Zoom, um, I mean, especially if it's on stars, and they, I think their games are tougher. It depends where you're playing. But if you're beating 200 Zoom, I think you can be playing um, somewhere between, you know, 510 and 1020, maybe even, depending on where you live, uh, live. Like, you're definitely good enough for, um, you know, 500 and now live, for sure. Um, and, you know, maybe start at 500 and now live. Um, d d it depends where you live and the quality of the games and the availability of games. But start even just your first session or two as you get comfortable with live, I would start there. But then, yeah, the 200 Zoom is, is relatively tough compared to I mean, it's definitely a lot tougher than a, an average 500 NL game live, uh, you'll find. So if you're having good results, uh, or even like break-even results over a decent sample, um, I think you're definitely ready to play live, for sure. <sighs> this is going to be a... Uh... <laughs> I mean, hopefully we go deep and it's going to be a tough night because uh, I'm tired. This I'm, I'm an old man now. I wake up at 6 a.m. with my son and my wife and uh, 9.20 p.m. is past my bedtime. I've been, intention I've been intentionally not eating yet, too. I mean, I've had, I had lunch, but I haven't had dinner, um, which I normally would have had a while ago to kind of, I don't know, trick my body into thinking it's earlier. But I'll probably have to eat in front of you guys in the near future as well. So you have that to look forward to. Okay. So we're approaching the bubble for both. Um, 290 cash out of, well, 488. I guess it's not that close. It's kind of close. And then um, 35 cash with 48 remaining on the right. Admittedly, honestly, especially when I'm uh, talking to chat, when I play online a lot, I, I don't pay attention and I don't realize when we're on the bubble, <clears throat> which is pretty terrible <laughs> because it affects the way everybody plays and it affects the way I should play as well. B asks, what are, what are my interests outside of poker? That's a good question. Um, these days, I don't have a great answer. Um, these days, I don't have a great answer. It's time with friends, good conversations. Um, defend, induce, four suited. Flop a pair. It is a pair. Not enough. Justin says, thoughts on Phil Hillman's heads up, sit and go televised run. Um, who'd you like to see take him down? Scott Seaver was fun, but the player was pretty passive for the viewers. I think Scott played really well. I think Scott has a better chance to take him down than anybody else so far. Um, I think Phil is uh, obviously very unorthodox, but I think supremely talented in, in his own way. I think he reads players extremely well and he um, <clears throat> I think no matter how flawed your fundamentals are, which his are relatively flawed, um, if your river decisions are right eight out of 10 times, then you're, you're impossible to beat. So, um, not saying his are right eight out of 10 times, but they're right more often than not. And I think his, so, so I think he's obviously he's on a, a bit of a heater. I don't think his expected value, cause like these are sit and goes, they're, they're, they're high variance, low edge. His expected value is not to have won as much as he'd won, but I think I think he's better than people think he is, or better than a lot of my peers think he is. I think Scott has a good chance of taking him down. Uh, actually, I think Scott has a very good play style, and like I think he plays very well um, against Phil. But, and I actually think Scott or... 
someone like Scott, who's like, has enough live experience, but also has played online. I think someone like Ike or someone like Fedor would have a really good chance to take him down as well, like would play good strategies against him. Um, I think some of the pure online guys would not do as well, even though obviously they're super skilled. But I think you, you somebody who's um, an online guy with a lot of live experience, I think is kind of the ideal candidate to to counter what he's got going on. And somebody with a lot of um, kind of a, somebody who's a pretty brave player, I would say, because you have to, to beat Phil or to kind of counter what he does. There are a lot of spots where you just have to have to like put a lot of money in. I, I know that's counterintuitive given the way he plays, but I, I think there are a lot of spots where you just have to put it in um, with some like weak ish, like some thinnish value hands because Phil does all the, like he'll like, you know, value protection raise bottom pair and like all this stuff where the punishment for that is actually to just go bigger, like to, to three bet top pair, like top pair, second kicker. Um, here you check down King 10, which is, you know, fine. Um, just like to get reads. I mean, I've had the worst hands in the small blind ever. I would normally V pip a lot from the small blind when folded to, but I feel like I've been folding every time. Moonlight Master, thank you for soliciting the, the subs and the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we are almost at 2K viewers. That's awesome. Thank you guys for being here. I hope it's been entertaining or educational. Um, knowing myself, probably more of the latter <laughs> than the former. We'll open a six. SK, that's an interesting question. So he says, let's say you play 500 hands of heads up PLO versus a new guy, and you thought he was tough. What would you do away from the tables before playing him again? So 500 hands is not a lot. Um, so if I had played, let's say, 3,000 hands, I'd be looking at some stats. But at 500 hands, the stats aren't going to tell me too much. So I'm going to look at every showdown hand that he played. Um, something I, I like to do is just filter in my database for saw showdown. And then just like just rewatch the hands several times, actually, um, kind of zone out and then just like not even stopping to analyze things and take notes, just just watching and trying to get a feel for how I think he's thinking. Um, and so 500 hands, not enough for a lot of stats to be uh, too useful. So yeah, I would just look at showdowns. What's on the menu for dinner? I ordered a few things like that I thought I could eat pretty easily. I've got it in the, in the fridge now. So after I got lunch, so I have a, a couple of salads. I have a, a chili, a turkey chili. That sounds good, but I think it'll be a salad, a steak salad. Although that sounds hard to eat on like slow. It sounds slow to eat and kind of loud. Tim, fasting creates mental clarity. Yeah, I definitely think I, I stay more alert when I haven't eaten in a while. Um, sometimes after a while, I don't feel like it's... Uh, like there's a difference between um, being awake and alert and being sharp. And I do think sometimes if I go too long, I lose the sharpness. But it kind of depends. It depends a lot on what I've been eating lately, I find with like, I'm not an expert in any of this, by the way, but definitely if I've been eating like, um, like fewer carbs in general, then fasting, I can stay sharp for longer. But if I've been eating more carbs, then I feel like sometimes I, I crash a little bit when, when fasting. Um, not an expert in any of this. I don't have any wisdom for your, uh, I don't have any diet wisdom. <laughs> uh, Harb says, I think Ivy would beat, uh, 
Good to see you, Harbs, by the way. Um, would beat Phil. I assume you mean Helmuth, not me, obviously. Uh, would beat Helmuth in the duel. Yeah, I mean, Ivy's, Ivy would play well, but actually I think the... I think that Phil's style is um, is really counterable if you study it, and Ivy would show up without having watched a single match. Um, I just know he wouldn't study it, so I actually don't think he would have the best chance because he wouldn't he wouldn't study. Um, and that's like Tom Dwan did the same thing; like he showed up without watching matches. I'm, I mean, he said that on stream, and I know him. He, he, I'm sure he didn't. Um, you got to watch the matches, I think, to to have uh, the best counter for the way Phil plays. When was my worst downswing? Um, w well, the worst feeling was was the the Venny downswing. Honestly, it was uh, right after I decided to come back to poker after years off, and I was playing on a huge stage. I challenged the world, and my very first match um, was just getting crushed. So uh, that was my toughest, and it was whatever ten thousand hands or so. Um, Dollar-wise, I don't really remember. I know that my worst day, um, I've twice lost 1.1 million in a day. Um, but I actually don't remember my longest, like my the from peak to trough, uh, the most I've lost, or the longest time period. I bank MTTs. Thank you very much for the kind words. Um, and thank you for being here watching and uh, for watching my training videos and falling asleep to them. Thank your wife as well for for putting up with... Uh, well, she just had, she had to fall asleep to my voice as well, I guess. Jeff Canal asks, are you the next Phil Galfond? I think so. What about Doug Polk? Do you think he'd be able to beat Phil H? I think actually, yeah, he'd be a pretty good candidate for it because um, I think he would take it seriously and study. And I think Doug thrives as a like a an exploitative player who 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 um, like obviously he's theory he's a sound player, but I think he's very good at at picking apart people's games and figuring out what the right counters are. And I think that you know Phil's a good candidate for that. Um, so actually, I think yeah, Doug would be. Someone who have a very good chance as well. Would I ever play Helmy from the Heads Up Challenge? I would. I think it'd be really fun. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm. No, I mean, I think I do as well as some of the people I'd mentioned. Um, but I'm unlike some of my, I, I think some of my peers would think they would have a massive edge against Helmuth Heads Up. Um, I think, well, in that format, I mean, I think in that format, they don't have a massive edge, and I don't think I do either. Um, so there are a lot of people who I think are more, would be more excited to play him edge wise, like perceived edge wise, than I would. However, I would still be excited to play. Like, it's a really cool stage to play on, and I, I think I can handle it, like, pretty well. I think I can play pretty well. Um, I guess I'm calling here. King Jack off, I don't normally open in this spot, but we're approaching the bubble kind of-ish, and my stack is decent-sized, so I think these, these guys have to be a little bit tighter than normal. I was just trying to think, what do I do against that? I think I have to call. It's going to be 15K more to call. Yeah, I mean, I have over two to one. So call, I mean, I'm probably beat, but pot odds. Here are they, seven offsuit. I guess I'm folding. I'm not, I mean, no backdoor or anything. It's not the shape I hope to be in, but... Still not losing that much on that call. It's not too bad. 
sometimes that happens as well. <laughs> Michael Lee asks, what major adjustments would you say need to be made between 200 NL Zoom and 500 NL Live? So like I said, I think that if you're beating 200 NL Zoom, you'll crush 500 NL Live. You need to be prepared. I mean, at 200 NL Zoom, you do play like, like there are a handful of, there are a decent amount of weak players there. You're going to see a lot more weak players. So don't try to play like an optimal strategy. Get used to, get ready for people to open to different sizes. People open much bigger live. Um, pots go multi-way a lot more often. So it's kind of about just like mentally preparing, game planning for different situations than you're used to. If you're beating 200 NL, Zoom, you have the aptitude and the knowledge base generally to, to, to crush 500 NL live, but you might not have studied enough, you know, five way to the flop spots and you might not, not navigate those as well. And you might not be as good against, um, certain kinds of weak competition and, or I think like the pros that you see at 500 NL live are a different kind of pro as well. And, um, are going to because the games are softer, they're going to be weaker and they're going to be more exploitative and less theory driven. Um, so it's just an adjustment, but I don't think there's like, it, it's getting used to the kinds of players that you're playing against and not so much, oh, you have to study this spot or this spot, or you need to do this differently. It's just getting a feel for the way people play. And I think in the first couple sessions, um, like I would, I would advise you to be a little bit tighter pre-flop than normal in the first couple sessions and just pay attention to everybody around you and what they're doing, because you can make a lot of mistakes just by like having just wrong assumptions about the way people play. Um, and, and you can catch up fast by just paying attention to showdowns and the way people are playing and even the way people are talking. So queen jack offsuit going to be calling against this open, I think. Vegan world asks, is it mortal to eat animals when we have other choices? So I, I eat meat. I am. Um, I think that being vegan is um, better. <laughs> uh, like uh, I, I view it as a, a sacrifice that is a good thing to do and uh, one I have not been willing to make. Um, but all the respect in the world for people who do. Um, but as far as morality, um, I mean, I, I, I think there's uh like, I don't think it's bad, like wrong to eat meat. Otherwise I wouldn't, but I do think it's less good, I guess, than not. If that answers your question. Uh, who did I lose 1 million to both days? First time was against um, David Benjamin online. And the second was, it was mostly against uh, Victor Blom, Isildur, and then partially against um, player Kagome Kagome um, at limit triple draw. So I was playing limit triple draw in PLO, not at the same time, <laughs> but one after the other. Um, Benjamin, I don't even remember what I was playing him in. I think it was like a mixed game. Midnight Macro Podcast, thank you for the kind words. Eric Smith, nobody asked his biggest upswing. My biggest win in a day was 1.6 million. That was against uh, Victor Blom at Heads Up PLO. Dean Berger, do you think we're still feeling the effects of Black Friday? I think absolutely. I think that the, I talked about this. Um, I don't actually know how it works on YouTube. Uh, I know on Twitch people can clip things. I think I said, uh, I think I said some inter interesting stuff about the industry uh, earlier in the stream um, that I 
don't want to spend 10 minutes repeating, but essentially when the, the element related to what you're just talking about, when, when Black Friday happened, a lot of marketing money left the US and left televised poker specifically. And poker on TV has never been the same since. Um, now, what would poker on TV look like if, it, uh, if that never happened? I don't know, because the landscape right now for televised poker is a lot different than it was uh, 10 years ago or 11 years ago, because now we have streaming. Um, we have a lot of shows that just get streamed on on YouTube or on Twitch. We have uh, Poker Go, which is an app behind a paywall. So there, there, there are different uh, media for people to to watch poker through. So I don't know exactly what it would look like, but I know there would be more money in in televised poker, and so it would have uh, continued to be more popular. There'd, there'd be more like more production just like even even just the regular shows you're used to but also perhaps more money and time spent exploring other other types of content whether it's reality shows about poker players or getting to know poker players you know away from the table better than than we have now the only way you get to do that now is through streams like this and and you know people like people's vlogs who, who just kind of take the onus uh take it on themselves to uh introduce you to them uh, because the the poker on TV is not doing it. fluffiest walrus has is zoom just online so we're talking about zoom and now no so zoom has to be online zoom refers to kind of online poker where it's fast fold so when you get your hand and you don't want to play it, you click fold and you're automatically at a new table and dealt a new hand um so it, the play is much faster hey there's berkey how's it going i can't chat with you but maybe is berkey streaming I can't watch a stream while I stream, but I'm just curious. It might be fun for you guys to watch both if he is. Scala 13, can players become semi-pros in poker or is it only rec versus pro? Yeah, you can become a semi-pro. I think that it's very difficult to become a semi-pro online. I think you need to be a semi-pro live. Maybe MTTs online you can, but basically to compete in high stakes cash games, you're gonna have to take it kind of seriously or very seriously. I guess low stakes cash games, you could be a semi-pro and just do it part-time, but you're gonna be at a disadvantage to the people who are studying day in, day out. Ace five suited, we're gonna play. Blinds are high. Juan Reyes asks, how did you and your wife meet? We met on Twitter, uh, believe it or not. Back in 20... or 13? I think 2012. We had a bluff over here that I'm interested in seeing, but I'll play this hand out first. Okay, he timed out. So what did ha what happened here? So Jack Five suited defended. Yeah. Jack Five suited defended pre. Check called against half a little under half pot. I think it's a little too loose, but it's not ridiculous. And then overbet river. Um, the river overbet's fine. That's not that bad. Um, I just want to note that he's like capable of that. I mean, if he's watching the stream, then he's going to just overbet me for value pretty soon.
Uh, Sahaj asks, I'm from India, so games are very soft here, closed market. It's 25 buy-ins, bankroll management, a good idea, and move down if I lost five buy-ins. Yes, so <clears throat> 25 buy-ins is, is not enough traditionally. However, if when you lose five buy-ins, you can move down and you have the availability of games to play and grind back up, and you're mentally, emotionally willing to do that, so you can step back down and you and you don't like chase your losses moving up or staying at the same stakes, then yes, I think you could do it with 25 buy-ins. That said, I think most people, I don't know if King is suited, but I think most people will struggle to step back down, uh, to, to, to move down um, after losing a few buy-ins and they'll chase. So I would normally not recommend that people do that. Um, but given the way you pose the question, it sounds like you think you're, you're more than capable of stepping back down. And so I think that 25 buy-ins stepping down if you lose five i think that's a perfect number uh, i think that's that's good but be honest with yourself and everybody else who's watching and considering that be honest with yourself because 25 buy-ins is not is not a lot to work with if you're not going to be able to step back down if you're not going to be able to take it seriously when you move down <clears throat> so we get called in two spots it's a it's not a bad flop for us. Uh, I guess we're min raising here. Um, you know, they're going to have some low, like pocket fives that can fold and uh, a seven suited that can fold. Uh, here we're going to have to raise fold, unfortunately. We're getting quite short. Uh, okay, we bink the second nuts. Unfortunately, we don't run into a lot of, uh, like, we don't run into sets here. We don't run into, I think, deuces are a fold there. Um, but I still think... Just go kind of geometric-ish. I guess I should go a little bit smaller than this, maybe like 35 Jam River. That's too bad. Oh, Invoker's Joe Kata, cool. Andrew Milsk, Milsk ask a great question. Uh, listen to this. What, what type of consideration should a new player put into live tells? Essentially none. Put none. Um, you could focus on trying not to give away too much, but you, you are going to just confuse yourself and um, trick yourself looking for live tells because very few players can do it well. Um, and it takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice. And what ends up happening for almost everybody is you notice some things, you make some guesses, you see a showdown, it confirms your read or it rejects it. Or, uh, but, but like over time, basically you just see too much noise. So you're never really going to know. Um, and actually our, our minds, we, we seek patterns. And so we, we find patterns that aren't real. And so what'll happen if you're focusing on live tells when you're not that experienced is you're gonna think that you've learned something when you absolutely haven't. And live tells are very nuanced. They're not just, he looks like this when he's weak, he looks like this when he's strong. They're maybe he does this when he has a tough decision or he does this when he's really sure what he's gonna do. And then that actually just plays a part, that's a part of hand reading. Um, but the hand reading then requires you to also understand the game deeply and to understand well, what hands would have a really tough decision here? What hands would have a really easy decision here? And then going back from like, okay, so he bet the flop and he had a really easy decision to bet the flop, but then he bet the turn and I could tell it was a tough decision to bet the turn. So now, rather than all of these hands that I'm eliminating, I have to eliminate, I can eliminate a few more because I know that, that I have those, or I, I can guess that I have those, those additional reads. Um, here, so if we three bet, it's to like... Two, 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 two hundred. Is that right? 
and then fold. I mean, that's fine. I'm just going to call, though. Uh, hopefully that made sense. sense. Andrew says, I think streaming has replaced poker on TV somewhat, but it's more of a niche audience, less likely to convert casuals, obviously. I think not necessarily. I mean, it is more niche, but casual players, observers, are on YouTube and on Twitch somewhat. I mean, older people, not as much on Twitch specifically, but everybody's on YouTube, kind of. So I don't know. I think it's not uh, It's not clear to me. I don't, I'm not saying I think you're wrong. I just, it's not clear to me at all. And he says you should show some more enthusiasm when you take down a big pot, get your viewers hyped up. Yeah, that's kind of uh, something I'm lacking as a streamer and a content creator is, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I do care, but I don't uh, show it in the same way that, that a lot of people do. Um, it's just how I am. I think this is a fold, ace-nine offsuit, I don't know. Um, and ace-jack, I guess I'm folding, but it's not the worst call. But yeah, I think I could. Uh, I should definitely strive to not hide any emotion, like intentionally. But I don't. I don't think I am. Maybe I am. I, I'm. I, I'm bad at showing emotion. <laughs> I know that. Um, you know, when you play a lot, you kind of train yourself. So this is kind of funny. So um, what I was going to say is you kind of train yourself to not suppress emotion, but just not get as affected by it and just move on and focus on whatever is uh, whatever's going on, your next decision, etc. cetera. I, um, so last year, I'm going to open this. I don't think I should, or like I don't think it's theoretically sound, but I haven't seen these players involved in pots, and I don't know. Um, so last year, just over a year ago, my dad passed away unexpectedly. And I was <clears throat> I was talking to my mom and I was saying that I uh I'm very self conscious. I was very self conscious about not showing as much emotion um around the rest of the family as as they would because even though I have the emotion, I, I just I think that my I think that I've learned to well basically I said because of poker, I've learned to kind of move past like process emotion faster and then focus on things that I have control over and not dwell on things I don't have control over and I also don't show as much emotion and my mom said Phil what are you talking about you were that way since you were five years old and I, I guess I didn't know that I thought that poker taught me that but um, I guess that's how I was born um, so yeah that's that's the way I am um, I can't act as excited as I would like to, I guess. But I do care about uh, I do care about succeeding here and winning. Uh, like winning one of these tournaments would be amazing. I'd be really, really, really happy. And uh, I'm actually I'm really happy that we're at two thousand viewers. Um, that I crossed ten thousand subs. Like I'm I'm genuinely happy about all those things. I'm. Uh, I'm never gonna uh, like scream about it. If I do scream about it, it's gonna be fake. Uh, so this guy's shoving too many big blinds, I think, for me to call with a seven offsuit. If he had my stack, it feels a lot closer. But I think at his stack, like, it's just too much, like, pocket eights and base ten. Uh, Sayed asks if I meditate. Um, no, but sort of. So I've I've never really meditated, uh, but actually in like I've tried a couple times. Never lasted longer than a week. About uh, two months ago, um, I started to try like a daily schedule that included meditating in the morning. Uh, obviously I'm all in here with, with King Queen off and 
wish me luck. Um, and so in the last two months, I've probably meditated 90% of the mornings. So for the first time in my life, yes, I can say that I meditate, but uh, I'm not, I'm not a lifelong meditator. And, um, you know, I haven't had, uh, here's, I should scream, right? <laughs> because I'm upset. Um, all right. So that's GG for me in the, uh, 500. 333rd place, which is just outside of the money. That's okay. Um, I don't need this. So here, let me uh, uh, switch to this. And do I want to... Is this what I want to switch to? I think this is what I want to switch to. This is 5,300. We're the only one left. I think now it's also big enough up here to see that it's 5,300, so I maybe don't need the text again, but let me know if you think I should be showing something else. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Say, why are, now, why are you not playing? Oh, I was talking about it. Uh, why am I not playing high stakes PLO at Aria? I didn't know it was running. Is it running? Um, Can can Phil use uh, Phil? Can someone use a VPN to play on WSP if they're outside of legal zones? I think not. I think um, I mean it, probably there's always a way, but WSP software is like they're very good at detecting stuff like that. I've been surprised like all the time they'll be like, oh, you can't play. You have something open, and then I look and I have like some kind of screen, like some kind of software that could possibly be used to control screen. Um, so they're very good at. At detection for all of that. Two K viewers says Moonlight Master. Yeah, nice. Thank you all for being here. Moonlight, you're slipping on on Richard Simmons. Oh, you'll see him now. Uh, we're on a break, so stay right there. I don't want to lose <laughs> my 2,000 viewers by uh, by switching to a screen. I guess I'm going to get some food and bring it back, and then uh, you guys get to watch me eat, which will be really fun. I actually don't like eating in front of people, but I have no choice. Hello, hello. All right, two minutes left. I will, after I eat, I'll, I'll try to add a PLO table. Um, I think, maybe. Hope everybody's having a good evening. So we're seven out of... Uh, 38 remaining, 35 cash. We have our table covered. Oh, except for the guy on our left. I feel like I haven't seen him play a hand. 
but I'll maybe take a look at that now. do get uh, well sometimes when it, when we get when I get deep in a no limit tournament I get a little uh, self conscious because like now the decisions really matter and I don't don't totally like I haven't studied um, so I get like a little more worried about that but uh, given the limited amount that I know sorry for the noise I uh, I'm pretty happy with my play so far. All right, so hopefully that can continue. Matthew Wood, thanks for the sub. Midnight Macro, thank you for the very kind words. I appreciate it. And appreciate you all being here. We did not lose any viewers while I went to get food. Let's see if we lose viewers when I eat in front of your face. I want to see before I do, I want to see if, I don't know, if there are any interesting hands that have gone on at this table. Um, I'll, if I find one, I'll bring it over. But. No, so I haven't been at this table long. That's why I haven't seen Cherry Hill play. Any hands? Because I've been at this table for like 10 hands. Yeah, that is the real Matt Berkey on the, in the 5K. I'm pretty sure. So everybody wants to see the tourney lobby. So I'll switch to two table, the two table view. Um, I'll take away that. I'll move this here. No, wrong one. Um, now you can see some chat down there actually, which is not my intention, but maybe that's a nice little uh, side benefit. <laughs> We can keep that there. I know you're on a moonlight. All right, so now you can see the payouts. I'm going to just remove this other uh, text because now that the other text is gone, and I guess I'll move this table to the left. OK, we're hand for hand. Monster Poker Community, I'm glad you liked that video. I had fun making it. Remove the mic away from my face so I'm not eating as loudly. I can actually switch. My input. One second. If the audio suddenly goes out, <clears throat> let me know, but I think this should be fine. Um, I use like a, a filter that, anyways, cancel background noise. So like, So you can't hear me clap. So maybe you won't be able to hear me eat. I don't know. Um, 
a full Jack 5 offsuit. Russell, I did close the door, but Spencer's asleep, so don't tell him. Rob says, never had turkey chili. I'm going with salad. This is a salad with steak. It's from a Protein Source in Las Vegas, which I enjoy, not affiliated with. Show the food. Well, I did. All right, we got a playable hand, folks. I love you, Berkey, but I have to three bet you. It's just the right kind of hand to three bet. Not sure about sizing. I think it's fine at this stack depth. I can go a little bigger. Sorry if I got quiet because I'm moving the mic away from my eating. What are you guys eating out there? V says, dinner with Phil. Can you light a candle, please? That's a good idea. I should, next time. <clears throat> Josh asks about uh, playing poker with a child. Hold that thought, Josh. Hold that thought, Josh. I have pocket rockets. Ace, ace. Um, I'm not going to slow play. Raise it up. Um, <clears throat> we're two away from the money, so it can certainly look like I'm applying a lot of pressure to this player. But I mean, I'm just five aces and I'm three betting. It's not, we don't have to make it more complicated than that. Okay, I get it in good. Very good. And we're going to take it down. We're going to be pretty high up in the uh, chip counts. <clears throat> It'll take us to fourth in chips, third. Not bad. Chris says, Berkey not streaming, but gave me a retweet. Thank you, Berkey. If you haven't um, checked out any of Berkey's streams, or actually the Salt for Why YouTube channel, um, the Only Friends podcast is fantastic. I highly recommend it. Um, but don't go watch it now. Stay here with me. <laughs> uh, Josh, so I play, well, I haven't been playing that often, but it's more, it's not just because of having a child, it's because running a business too. So kind of both things combined. Um, it is the stone bubble, so I should be opening a lot with big stack, but queen five off, I'm not going to take it too far. And the food is good, Nick. Thank you. Um, 
it depends on you know how much time you have available um, if you have a partner and how much they can help and if you are able to um, you know if you have a kid in school or uh, a nanny or babysitter it all just depends um, I've been fortunate that my wife is willing to do a lot so like I kind of have my days to myself like five days a week and I just oh wow these so one PLO table filled up someone's sitting alone at 51 I would play 51 but actually I mean I'm eating now and we're kind of deep I don't know you could hear me clap I guess it wasn't working well um, Anyways, yeah, it just varies so much based on your situation, but it definitely has become harder since becoming a dad. Um, it's a lot harder. Appalachian news. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you guys are cool with me eating. I'll probably eat something else after this in, in an hour if we're still around. We'll see. We're going to open wide, but I'll queen three off suit. Um, I busted out of the 500. I mean, I was chipped down to 10 big blinds after that failed 7 5 of hearts bluff. And then um, I got in with king queen against queen 10 and did not win, but. I didn't have any chips, so even if even if I double, that'd be kind of short. So people don't want the lobby, or they do want the lobby. Are you eating yogurt? What kind of yogurt? Greek yogurt? I eat a lot of Greek yogurt. Cold nuts and pizza. That sounds nice. Mike Jones, okay. All right, so on the direct bubble, we have a very short stack opening. Um, I mean, I'm going to call, but it's going to be a tight range, right? I mean, we're not going anywhere. <clears throat> Big bet. I'm just going to raise and get it in. I mean, I'm not thrilled about it, but I don't think he's going to bluff it off with no equity on the turn. And I do think, like, raising flop to, is min raise the right size? I think it's fine. Um, 14, he calls 14. Yeah. I think min raise is the right size of this stacked up. <clears throat> and here we go. Yeah, that's too bad.
I mean, I don't think he has a strong hand, but let's just see a flop. Could we be the bubble boy with the six biggest stack? Let's find out. <clears throat> um, so this is a check call. Okay. He checks back pretty quickly. Um, I guess I'm betting. So weird. I mean, I'm calling, but <laughs> I think he has a 10, probably. <clears throat> Maybe not. The question is if I hit a flush, um, am I leading? Maybe. Or do I try to induce? I don't think he's going to bluff it off, though. What do you have? OK. <clears throat> Actually, that makes a lot of sense. Um, OK. Uh, are we still? I mean, do we open the button with 8-3 off? Like, <laughs> after he lost that pot, he's not going to do anything reckless. This player has a very comfortable stack to not do anything reckless. It's cool. Mm. Yeah, I think I raise. I'm sorry, I'm kind of slow with chat right now as I'm eating and had a few hands. When you say turn the mic back on, do you mean so you can hear me chewing more or is it not loud enough? Mike from Chatsville, I agree. Um, I lost. I've had some bigger swings than I'd care to admit at Blackjack. I think I've lost like 100K once. But I don't really, I mean, I play like, actually that's been, that was like nine years ago. Um, and even then I didn't play that often. When I play pit games now, it's just with friends, like for fun not, and not for a lot of money. Salad was a bad choice. It's very slow. 
Now very crunchy. We're on the stone bubble for a long time. I think I start with the bat. <clears throat> it does get interesting on the turn, like SPR. Like, I guess I keep betting because of the bubble pressure. But he's already going to overfold the flop because of that. So people seem torn on the... I mean, most people like seeing the lobby. I wonder if I can please everybody by... Um, what time is it? No, no break coming up. Interesting flop. Um, <clears throat> he's going to have pretty good calling hands. But I want to start with... Uh, well, no, he's not going to bluff me at this, like, given the, the ICM implications, I think. So I can start with a call and then just check it down and fold. Check and I mean, I think I had the best hand on the turn, but I don't know. I think this is the way to play it. Probably a sevens or something. King queen. Okay. So I thought he would have a lot of king queen type hands. I didn't think he would start bluffing with them, but he did. As kind of like a protection or I don't know what. It's fine. Okay, we're done eating for the time being. Not thrilled about having him defend here, but... He's going to have a lot of, like, jack-8 suited that has to fold. <clears throat> Gaucho, good to see you, man. Thank you for getting me uh, introduced to that, to, uh, that professor. I really enjoyed that talk. <clears throat> that was super cool. Um... I'll switch in a minute. I'll try to switch to uh, one table and still show the lobby, kind of like I'm showing the chat here. So let me um, let me fold a hand first, and then we'll we'll go for it. Uh, 
Uh, was I counting when I lost to blackjack? No, I was not. Just having fun. <laughs> All right, so 5-7 off. <clears throat> Berkey, come on. It's very rude to attack the big stack. It's very, very rude. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can do this. So we'll go to here, and then let me see if I can add. Actually, wait. Let me... What is this one? Nope. It's this. Okay. Um, copy. Paste. Let's move this down here. Uh, <clears throat> all right, we're in the money. And the question is, can I make this? Can I make this work somehow? I mean, this is not super attractive, but I guess we'll go with this and then move it beneath the table, but over the overlay. Wait, how do I do that? No, I can't do that. Hang on, sorry guys. Um, <clears throat> okay, I mean, that's good enough, right? And then I'll move the table back here. Um, I'm gonna, should I? No, I should focus. I was gonna say I'm gonna sit at a 100, 200 PLO heads up and see if anybody shows up. I think I'm not gonna get action, but if I did, it would be like, just noticing I have a lot of texts. couple people telling me who they are. <laughs> <I'll>, uh, <laughs> I'm bad at responding to texts while I uh, stream, but uh, I will hit you back. And thank you for letting me know, someone at my table letting me know who they are. Um, <clears throat> nothing's wrong with this this mic input, right? I had switched from a different one. I mean, this one is one that uh, it filters out some sound. Oh, I put my overlay below my picture. That looks bad. <sighs> okay. There we go. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Scroll up on the payouts to show first. That's a good idea. Thank you. When's the last time I played high stakes with the big boys? I don't know what counts as high stakes, but... Uh, I mean, I've played high stakes heads up online um, PLO matches, but... Not a uh, last time I played high stakes live poker. Is, I mean, it was pre-COVID. Do I currently back any players? No, I don't. <clears throat> Oh, Eric, for a lot of people, yeah, people are still, like a lot of these people that are playing me, I forgot about that. A lot of them are playing live, like some are in the 25K, some are in the, uh, potentially in the 10K dealer's choice. Can you 
King seven suited. I guess this is a fold. It's sad though. See, I'm showing emotion. Sad about folding. Heather, thank you for getting excited for me. I am excited. I mean, we're we're deep in this. We're in the money. <clears throat> I'm second in chips. 35 remain. This is like legitimately, it's a pretty good bracelet shot. You don't get these very often. Um, still a long way to go. But I don't know, five percent chance at a bracelet. It's exciting. <clears throat> Cameron, no problem. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Omniscient, thanks for being here. Thanks for following me since the BFP days. Uh, Daniel Boatman, so I actually never read Mathematics of Poker, but <clears throat> I've talked to a lot of players who have read it and actually ex explained things in it to me. I think it's probably the best poker book that there is based on not having read it. So take that for what it's worth. Take that with a grain of salt. chair comfortable All right I mean I don't love having this down here um, below me because that doesn't fit in the overlay it's not very pretty but I don't know I mean I can't show everything else otherwise I guess I could show maybe I hide uh, the other stacks and just have this. This looks less bad now that it's contained in the overlay, kind of. Hurts my soul less. So let's go with that. Justin Scott, the vibe is off now. Is the vibe off? What do I need to do? Everybody wants PLO. The problem with playing PLO is that it's going to take all my attention away from this, and this is actually more important. Um, if I were like... If this were a smaller tournament with a larger field, I would feel differently. <laughs> like Master, let's just torch some... PLO stacks, yeah. <clears throat> no, the problem is I'll probably focus on PLO and play PLO well, and then uh, and then play this tournament worse. Um, not get as many reads on players, which is pretty important. Hey, Berkey, welcome. You're on. Okay. So you're in the in the money on the other table, or the other uh, tournament as well? Oh no, are you playing live? Uh, Hector, no, I don't back any players uh, currently. I want to see PLO be your second chips in a bracelet event. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I'd love to play PLO, but I'm second in chips in a bracelet event. Third now, actually. So. <clears throat> I'd like to see how this hand played out. We do not get to see a showdown though, which can only learn so much when I don't see the showdown. 
That was a limp small blind check back. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Could raise fold. Did we ever get shoved on by a worse hand? Maybe. I don't know. I just check. Vegan world asked if I didn't play poker for a living, what else would I have done? I don't know. Um, I think I might have ended up being a teacher. You expect to see a lot of c bets on this board. I think with the ace of clubs, I have to peel. I'm not thrilled about it. I'm going to check back and uh, hope to show down a winner. Um, I have a club, I have a heart. I don't think that matters too much. <clears throat> Envy, very kind words. Thank you. You want to see me? someone else wants to see me and Berkey heads up? Yeah, I'd like that too. Let's get heads up and uh, flip for the bracelet. Uh, I'm going to show down ace five. Ooh. I guess he's going for the turn check raise. I don't know. Do they mail you the bracelet? I don't know. I think you, uh, well, if you're in. Um, <clears throat> If you're in New Jersey, then they must. Um, otherwise, I think there's just like a bracelet ceremony here in Vegas. Do I have all of myself in this one? I do. Okay. Yeah, I'm in Vegas. Now, I, I live in Vegas. I'm here most of the time. Do I play with a mouse or controller? So I actually, playing with a mouse now, I like to play with a controller, and I have in the past. I have a controller, uh, like an Xbox controller, but it's not set up for uh, um, for this site. And um, but yeah, I have a I have a weird mouse. It's called a roller mouse. So like you'll notice, I'm right-handed, and I'm not using my right hand because uh, this mouse is like. I can't move my camera to show you, but it's like, uh, I don't know, just look up contour roller mouse. It's pretty weird. Uh, but I have pretty, I have really bad wrists and it's better for me. Um, I don't think it's amazing. It has some bugs sometimes, so it's not like highly recommended, but I like it. Omniscient, yeah, I do. I did have to fix the overlay thing. <laughs> Fluffiest walrus. I mean, I, I don't honestly these days I don't do that much else besides poker, dad, business. Um, I used to watch a lot of TV, but since becoming a father, I just don't have time, which is too bad. Maybe one day again soon. Jamie says, "Don't play PLO. It'll take your attention away." Yeah, well, thank you. Um, Riley's life journey. Any ballpark estimate for when Rena wants online poker for us will be live. Um, not close enough to have a no. I don't have a good ballpark estimate, unfortunately. I would. I. I wish that I did. But uh, there's a lot to do. A lot to do still. Does my wife care? 
that I play poker. She likes that I play poker. Actually, she um, she encourages me to play more World Series events. I don't like to like I I like to play uh, online and online cash. And she would like me to play more World Series events and to get out there in the world and be in front of you like this. So um, if you see me at at, at the at the live World Series, you can thank her. <clears throat> Let's look around for any showdowns. Just important to get reads as you get deeper. Not seeing many showdowns. Would I tank for nine minutes with the nuts against Matasau? No, I would not. <laughs> okay, so let's watch this hand play out, or I will watch it play out off to the side if anything's particularly interesting. I guess I can show you now. Um, so we had a big blind defend against the cutoff open. Cutoff open, jack 10 offsuit seems normal. Check call against quarter pot. <clears throat> Lead. Okay. So that is interesting. I'm just going to take a note on that. Basically that exact action. That's a useful read to have, just because when you see somebody lead in that spot, you have never seen it. But like you, you, when you have no context, it's hard to 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 guess. And there's a little bit. Yeah, Adam says maybe some quiet background music. I think that would, would have been a good idea. I've never streamed with background music, and I think I need to. Um, but like right now to set up, I would I would want to find some uh, what's it called like copyright, uh, whatever whatever, so that I I don't get uh. Like, so I can use the clips later, potentially. Moonlight Master, thank you for the uh, the sub or like request. Um, any other pros I know here other than Berkey? No. So somebody at the table texted me who they were. Um, uh, Paul G's is Paul Volpe, I'm pretty sure, up here. And then I think I know who one other player is, but I don't know. He texted me privately, so I'm not going to say. Just in case, um, John V says, didn't you sell me 50% of this? Oops, I, yeah, I forgot. Jacob, thank you for the kind words. All right, Berkey's all in. Good luck, Berkey. All right, King 10 off. <clears throat> Openable. Uh, Nikos, okay, now I can't play. I'm actually leaning towards not playing the main, but I might change my mind. Jeff asks if it's bad risk from playing poker. Yeah, I mean, from being on my computer all the time. I can't hold the mouse up, actually. Uh, Dan, man, it's stuck under a, like a, it's, it's, I can't. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird. <laughs> Uh, it's not pick-upable. 
Phil, you look like you're working at the Frontier airline counter. I don't know what that means. I mean, I do. I know what all those words mean, and I know, uh, but I'm not sure what I, what that means. I look like. So we're gonna open threes. I'm not sure that I'm supposed to. Um, just looking pre flop here. Yeah, I think king queen suited is probably right to go with by Cherry Hill last hand. Ah, uh, we get shoved on, so we're gonna have to fold. Ah, uh, it's a pretty big shove too. Nice hand, Berkey. Oh, I spoke too soon. Unfortunate for Berkey. I actually would have beat him with threes, but it's neither here nor there. He'll open king nine suited. Does Farah, Ricky asks, does Farah ever want to work in film again? Probably. She definitely, um, like, she's been spending most of her time the last few years being a mom, and she certainly misses pursuing a passion, whether it's poker or acting. I know she'd like to get back into one or the other or both. And right now she's kind of slowly trying to get back into playing poker. Seven eight is. I mean, I think I can defend. I'm trying to decide if I want to three bet it. It's kind of nice to three bet. Um, okay, or timeout. I did not know that I was out of time bank, so that's unfortunate. I mean, not that like that's a. That hand is printing by 3-betting, but uh, I certainly would have played it one way or another. I'm glad that I found out in a relatively small pot that I have no time bank left. Because that could obviously be catastrophic in a larger pot. I don't know where I used all my time bank. Maybe king-8 suited hand? I don't know. But that's too bad. I wanted to 3-bet that. <laughs> Is Mattis Howell at the table? I don't think so. I think his... I feel like I've seen his screen name before. I would know it if I saw it. Something with the mouth, I think. Make sure I have no time bank. Well, I just want to see it show up as okay. It doesn't show up. That's why I didn't notice. They need oh okay, 90 second time bank. I guess it doesn't kick in when you haven't v pipped. That's why. So I had plenty of time. It just doesn't kick in until you vpip. So that makes sense. I got we have four and a half times the pot here. I don't think. I mean, I think I'm just supposed to get it all in with this hand. Um, let's start with 14. Like, he's not going to have ace-king or ace-queen. He's maybe not going to have ace-jack. The seven is obviously not ideal. Don't know if we get three streets now. Um, I just don't think I'm getting raised, so I think getting this street now, whereas, like, if I check back, 
I mean, I, I'm, I'm overthinking it. Honestly, you can get this tree now. You can get it on the river. Um, feels kind of fine either way. I think uh, sometimes I get in my head and I'm like, well, if I check back and then value bet river, then he knows I'm capped and now he can check raise. But I mean, that it's, it's a rare occurrence that people go for that. Obviously, I need to be somewhat selective with my opens when there are two short stacks, but it, it like that you're committed against. Uh, so you don't want to open quite as many like seven five suiteds, but it's not a big deal. You had 4-4 four, four Berkey when you jammed a lot of big lines in my face. <laughs> That's rude. Um, you've got a decision here. You're deciding whether to put it in pre or wait for the flop or whether to call or fold. Oh, the green thing in my wall for Frontier. That makes sense, yeah. <clears throat> Just thinking about the stop and go. This is a tough one. Pocket Blake fives make sense. So against fives, I have 20 some percent equity. Am I ever good? Probably not. Like, is he doing this with Jack eight of hearts? With Queen Jack of diamonds? Hmm. And then I feel like it is a lot of like pocket fives. Um, it's never going to be like, I guess it could be like king three, but not king ten. I think king ten probably checks and jack ten probably checks. So I think I have two live over cards. Um, <clears throat> but the problem is I just don't think he's tanking pre with like six four. So I don't know what draws he has unless he's shoving, you know, jack nine. Which I don't just don't think is the case, so I'm gonna fold. Nice hand breaky. Um, seven five suited. I'm just gonna fold. Stacks are pretty short. Twenty-four players remain, but a decent chance that there'll be one or two fewer after this one. Queen's in great shape. Fours have a little hope. And I think now we're down to twenty-two players, which is, well, I guess, we're already on three tables. But we are closing in on a potential final table. CC, I understand. Good night. Thanks for the good luck wishes. I uh, would be going to bed too if I were not playing and streaming right now. So I've worked you all in. Good luck. <clears throat> flip. Just happy to be in a flip in that spot. 
Nice hand, nice hand. Yeah, that looks right to me. And seven off, I think, can be defended. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a defend. Gavin, no, not... I haven't really thought about, you know, getting into the Texas card room business. Okay, so after it goes raise call, it's a little different. Um, I honestly have no idea if this is a call or not. I think 10-9 off suit would definitely be... Um, and go for it. Uh, I'm gonna be paying attention right now if this is complicated. <clears throat> potentially, or I'm just trying to think. I think I have the best hand, but... I mean, I don't like this. So the problem is now if Berkey has, like, if he checks with Queen Jack of Spades, now he might just rip it in, whereas if I just called, he probably just calls. So I don't know. I don't know how to explain why I think I have the best hand, but I did. But now Berkey's in the tank, and it's not ideal. <laughs> Yeah. So I think Paul's folding. I think I didn't beat. Okay. Queen Jack of Spades. Jack's. Um, I just feel like Paul had like sixes. Um. <clears throat> I think the number of uh, this is very 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 close to be right one in mm, like half the time right like half the time maybe but like no, because it's only spades. It's not, I don't think he's shoving, you know, ace queen there. So ace ten, five x, jack jack, queen queen, king king, ace ace, and then yeah, he'll have some spade spade hands. But I mean, you can even have king ten, queen ten. So I think I like my fold. I have one minute on break, so I'll be right back.
All right, all right. <clears throat> Brent, thanks for the good luck wishes. All right. Kareem, got work in the morning. You're on the East Coast. Thank you for sticking with me, although I apologize for, for tomorrow. Yeah, Sam, would, would be sick to final table the first time I've streamed on YouTube. Um, hey, Deuce, I guess I'll fold. Take a picture of the mouse with the phone. Show us the phone screen. Let's go. <laughs> um, I can do that. Where's my phone? I'm going to fold a deuce. Show you guys this this mouse. So no, now it's turning. I have to lock it. Okay. That's what it looks like. So the uh, <clears throat> the thing in the like the black tube you. That's the mouse that you move, and then the buttons are beneath it. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Or I mean, I don't know. Probably most of you don't care. I don't. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, Berkey running it up, which is very nice. Timo thinks I should have called. Oh, maybe you mean preflop 10 is a call? I don't know. Or post I don't know. The bracelet still means something to me. Would I rather win 250K plus bracelet or 270K in a different tourney? Definitely 250 plus a bracelet. I think bracelet, bracelet still means a lot to me, yeah. Do I think any of these guys are watching my stream? Yeah, I think so. Um, probably not all. I doubt all of them are, but I think a few probably are. I guess I should probably, since I'm deep, uh, tweet that this is going on. Eight five suited. Hmm. I think it's an open. I think I'm going to open is what I mean. And now I will fold. Get a link to my stream. Copy link. Thank you all for being here. This is this is fun. In three offsuit, fold this, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I can't do two things at once. Tweet is out, so some more people will find out about it. Um, Did 
did Berkey say what he had? He had a better 10. Nice hand. It still had to be a little bit uncomfortable for you <laughs> with both of us in there. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got a call. He's relatively short, too. So post-flop play could be kind of interesting. I mean, I think I want to bet. I do have no time bank now. Before, it was just that I didn't activate it, but now it's that I used it all up in that pot against Berkey. I mean, I'm basically hoping to fold out like the ace force of hearts and stuff like that. Um, this player played one hand pretty unorthodox. And so I think he's probably playing preflop with some hands that he shouldn't. Happy to take it down. Always happy to win a pot. Rai asks, am I familiar with Kevin Martin and his stream slash recent development as a player, thoughts on his game, and or if you think he'd become a top tier player in the near future? Um, I, of what I know about Kevin, he seems awesome. And um, I've only watched a little bit of his streams. I know that he's been having more and more success, um, but I, I really enjoy it. So I haven't seen many of his, his streams. I really enjoy his tweets and um, I'm rooting for him, but I, I don't, I haven't watched his game enough to see if, uh, to have an opinion on it. He also, I'm sure he's a better no limit tournament player than I am, so I, I mean, I wouldn't be judging it anyways. Um, but from everything I can tell, he seems great. Everything that's a keyboard. Yes, I showed you a key. <laughs> It's a keyboard. The mouse is right beneath the keyboard. Um. <laughs> Can I add the chat window to the available blank space? Potentially, yeah, let me... Um, I mean, this is a call. I'm just not thrilled about it. It's just not the hand to do something with. I'm always a little tempted, but the Kevin man asks, what about 250k in a bracelet or 500k no bracelet? Um, <clears throat> I think I'd go 250 in a, a bracelet, but that's about you found like the right. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> you found the right uh, split. So, I mean, I, I think 10-6 uh, suitor is good. Che, thanks for joining me. Welcome, welcome. That's too bad. Uh, I think I just have to fold to that sizing. Can I paste here? Like, if I just hang on. Uh, so where is this relative? Excuse me for a moment while I find the chat. I can fold queen seven off. Um, let's see here. So it's not gonna be very big. You guys don't need to see me potentially chatting. Yeah, I think that probably works okay, right? Cool. Um, had four four versus Malibu on the ace queen. Oh, I didn't. I saw that hand, but I didn't watch it play out. 
how many spots are getting paid. Um, we're already in the money, 35 spots paid. Yeah, I'm hoping for a final table too. Jasbo, thanks for the support. All right, so we're 5 of 20. I have chipped down a little bit. I had, I mean, it doesn't matter what I had. Um, but still in, in, sitting in a good position. Above average with 20 remaining. There's a little bit of yellow showing at the bottom of this chat thing that's bothering me, so there we go. And probably the top should be that. Oh, I have it on top chat, not all chat. I guess I should show all. Actually, I'll just show top chat here. On the, I have live chat to the right uh, where you can't see. Um, Dishaw, I'm on a five minute delay, so if they're watching, they won't be able to see, uh, see my hands during the hands. Will this broadcast be saved? Asked Mike N. I actually don't know what I set it to. Um, I don't know, but I think at the very least I'll, I'll make a highlight video at some point. And by I, I mean with some help. <laughs> 300 pound canary fun fun to be streaming it thanks for being here the lines are up once again <laughs> michael hendrick says love the stream but you know lip balm is addictive right yes i do uh Yes, I do. Nicholas asks, at what point would you quit your 50K a year job for poker? I'm currently making more from MTTs than my job over the past two years, not including stock options. Um, I would say you want it. I mean, okay, it always depends on how easily you could go back to your job or a similar job if you wanted to, if you do quit. Um, and, you know, how much, let's say you went, you played poker for three years and then tried to go back, how much your resume is harmed and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I would always lean conservative uh, with with decisions like that just because you know, at jobs, you don't lose, you can't lose money. Um, and most jobs, you can't lose money. And so uh, there's just like a, being able to play on the side and build up a bankroll on the side is really nice. But when you, when you switch just to that and you can't play for a while or, you know, you're down swinging and, and I don't know, or, or like game availability changes, I just, it's very risky and there's not like a clear um, progression like, like a normal career has in poker. So I would be cautious. I'd like to see how this hand played out. As I fold six, seven. Um, okay. So limp check. Okay, bet call makes sense. Check call. So this bet on the turn by this bet on the turn by Volpe is odd with a queen. I mean, it's it's not solver approved at all, uh, but can be not that bad, depending on your assumptions for sure. Brent Becker asked the best tools for heads up PLO. I think the best tool is Vision, which is on my website, runatonce.com. But uh, you have other 
options out there, I guess. <laughs> Chris, no problem. Um, can we delete? I think I can. Whoops. No. Uh, Moonlight Master is too fast for me. Will I be buried with my bracelet? No. I mean, I haven't thought about it, but I don't think I don't think I'd like to be. <laughs> Spencer can have my bracelets. Oof. Man. GG Berkey. It is always such a like tournaments are are brutal to uh like just his run just now in the past like hour. Uh Berkey's run really illustrates that like <laughs> you have a big stack, you lose it all except for a tiny bit, you run it back up, play some hands well, and you just get it in. With jacks way behind, and you lose. Like it's uh, tournaments are really tough emotionally. Yeah, gotta get that in, of course. Yeah, they're just really tough emotionally. And I like I know I've I've seemed uh, even keeled, but I'll be I'll be bummed when I lose this. If I lose this, I shouldn't say when, <laughs> but 17 of the 18 of us remaining are gonna lose this. Um, I will be bummed to lose it at any point. Yeah, five minute delay. Farrakh, hello, hello. I don't think it's too spicy at five minutes. Um, there's also like if a hand is very clearly taking like three minutes, I could always shut the stream down for a little while, which would be a huge bummer and pain. But uh, if I get really worried about that, I could. Queen 10 off is going to be an open against Deadpool. I think I'm committed. However, now it would have been a little close if Deadpool shoved. I think my hand's just to check here. Um, it's a pretty good board for the small blind cold calling range. And my hand, like, basically this hand wants to check unless I'm c-betting a whole bunch of my, unless I'm c-betting like 70% of hands on this board. And I don't, I don't think this is a super high c-bet frequency board. I think I'm just going to keep checking. Um... Just because the makeup of his range, I just think he's going to have like a lot of pocket fives and stuff that can't really call. Um, he doesn't have like queen five suited and stuff, I think. So, yeah, I'm not doing quite as well. Um, like against his calling range, and now I'm just going to bet three quarters and hope for the hero call to be mindful of my time bank, which is really short. <laughs> Moonlight highlight video, huh? Yeah. Yes, John, this tourney does finish tonight, although it'll technically be in the AM. 17 remaining. Is 8-4 suited to raise? It's not, but do I want to raise it anyway? I don't. I'm going to gonna use some discipline. And look at that. Discipline might pay off. I mean, I might river the flush. But <laughs> and then there were 16. Two tables remaining, or there will there will be once somebody moves. Ace six offsuit. I don't 
think I'm supposed to raise this uh, from the cutoff. D Shaw, um, I do play cash games online. I don't. I mean, I I I don't stream often. Uh, I would if there were like good cash games to, to play here in Nevada. I would I would play and stream them. Yeah, great points from Sid and the Tender31. Two years of MTT results um, are not super meaningful. It's just like there's so much variance in uh, in MTT results that you have to be really careful before you consider yourself a winning player. King 9 offsuit, I'm going to fold. Eric, good night. Thank you for the good luck wishes. I appreciate you st sticking with me this long. It is. It is. I'm, I mean, I I would not be watching a stream if I were not playing <laughs> right now. It's late for me. I'm an old man now. Uh, I feel pretty good though. Energy's fine. I think just maybe adrenaline or you know who knows. Uh, getting three bet here. I recognize that screen name. Um, this sizing against 50 I call against 60 I don't know why I th <laughs> okay good I think he's folding for what it's worth uh, okay I'm wrong <laughs> so I didn't get to my my read was wrong and I got to confirm that, so that's good. And then there were fourteen. I think this is just a fold. Frobru asks if I have a favorite bracelet. My favorite, so my favorite bracelet was my first, which was two thousand eight. It's a 5K PLO rebuy event. Um, it's an extremely tough final table, and um, and you know it was I was young and it was super super exciting. So I think that's my favorite. Um, in a different way though, winning the uh, the 10K No Limit Single Draw Championship was really meaningful because that's a really cool event, and I won it against Nick Schulman, who I think he might have won that exact event twice at least once um he's really excellent um in that game i mean in all games but in that game in particular so that um i don't know that was very cool as well five three off i'm just gonna fold Who is panoramic? I know that's somebody. I'm going to use Google. Queen three suited. Can I open? Oh, it's Tony Dunst. He is our chip leader. Going to be checking this flop back. I guess if you guys know who some of these players are, I would, appre I would appreciate the info so I don't have to look it all up. Um, pretty standard check back here. Not pleasant. Um, so Jack X, some suited stuff. I'm actually gonna make a tight fold. I think um, I think people expect a lot of calls on that board after the flop check back. 
and like they don't um they don't bluff like the they don't bluff ace high very often and you know they don't have a lot of jack x super disconnected so all right not a good flop it's not the worst flop like range versus range but i don't know i think checking i think i'm checking he's gonna check range on this card i think <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna bluff. And then, I don't know. I don't love bluff. Like, in spots like this where they check range, they just do a good job of calling. So maybe I should just give up on the turn. I just feel like I've been giving up a lot of stuff. And, I don't think he's. Why don't I think he's folding? Well, he's not folding a pair on the turn. He's, I ran out of time. Um, I'm gonna check. I think it's close. Okay, he was not folding. I think I could probably check the turn. I need to bluff some hands. Kind of doesn't like all my hands are kind of the same, but yeah. Six eight suited. I'm gonna fold. Twenty eight big blinds. Just can't do much. 13 left, but we are, uh, we've been bleeding a little bit. We're well below average now. I mean, but also, like, people have busted out. What's more nerve-wracking, shoving it all in with a bluff on the river or proposing to my wife? Um, when I, By the time I proposed, I was pretty sure she was going to say yes. Um, here we go with eights. But still, that was, I mean, it's an important moment, so I guess that's more nerve wracking. Obviously, not folding to a jam. Roberto from Peru, hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. 13 players left. Dr. Jack. I'm going to defend 9-7 suited. Andrew Rivers, yeah, we might see a root beer float. All right, so we flop top pair, no kicker. He's opening for middle position. Um, we probably have the best hand. I think this is just a bet. I mean, it's definitely a bet. Just trying to think through. Like, on rivers, it starts to get a little thin. On, like, any over... Like, a jack or a queen or a king, even. Then, it like, on a queen, it's just, I guess, a small bet. I don't know if I can big bet it. Mr. T-Man, I don't know if I'm saying, uh, would you like to see a heads-up PLO bracelet event? That'd be fantastic, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Kevin, you're 63 and it's 7.30 a.m. I'm, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Maybe I could do it if I, if I didn't have kids, like, in the house anymore. <laughs> Nick Schulman, best poker commentator, says Anton. I agree. He's phenomenal. I'm just drinking water, Steve. I'm just water all day. Duet Pistons is Toby Lewis. He's a tough player. Um, I'll just add the... If you ever see me hover over one of these and it says, like, I think 
the auto one. Uh, it's not showing up. I think the yellow one says tight bad because that's like their default, but I don't I don't mean that. <laughs> I just am used to certain colors. Poker News has them, Anton says. That's a good tip. Um, Galactar Taylor Parr. Okay. Let's check Poker News. Yep, Adam Hendricks, Toby Lewis, okay. I haven't seen a lot of river raises in this event. River raises are fun. If we're off, we're going to fold. Okay. Keep that in. Keep that handy as I encounter more players. So what did we say? Galactar, yeah. I mean, it's just a lot of good players. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Galphon. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you all, by the way, for, for letting me know who people are. <laughs> Element sales. Do I keep in touch with Zian Hack? Dang. What are they up to? Um, I haven't been in touch with them very much in the recent few years. Um, they started a bunch of restaurants. They started one, it was successful. Or I, actually, I don't even, they started one, it was doing okay, and they started more, and then I know that they've made made them successful since. Um, and that's what they're up to. Um, but I haven't been in, last time I, I ran into Hack, I was randomly at, at an airport um, probably three years ago. I haven't really been in touch much since then, a couple texts here and there. But it's so tight, you just lose touch with people so fast when you're a grown-up. Um, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is a defend, even though he's raising under the gun into one big blind. And here we are. So we'll start with a call. Keeping in mind that I have no time bank, so I'm going to have to make, like, this decision is easy, but I'm going to have to make future decisions faster. I go with no leads on these cards. I mean, a lot of people lead, but I find it challenging to, to balance. I find it easier not to worry about it. So he's betting very small. This is like, I'm very tempted to raise small in the Czech River, which seems kind of crazy, but. I think I'm just gonna call. Yeah, I just think he has a lot of like sevens that do that, but I don't know. I don't wanna risk everything. Yeah, pocket fives he had. I think, I mean, his play is definitely fine. You punish it by raising turn. Maybe raising turn and even betting river, but that's, you need a really strong read to do that with king nine. But, and I mean, I, I don't know him well enough to have that read. Because that could just be his only sizing on the turn. Although I find that hard to believe. Um, this is just a fold, unfortunately. 
Malibu is tough fish. Tough fish was such a legend. All right. Oh, 12 remaining. I'm 6 out of 12, but I'm below average stack. How much water do I drink in one day? I don't measure it, but I drink a lot of water. I'm a thirsty person. Like I've, I mean, you guys have probably seen me drink a decent amount and like refill these two cups a few times uh, throughout the stream. And I'm drink definitely drinking less during the stream than I normally drink because I'm talking. Instead of chugging water, I'm trying not to run to the bathroom every 30 minutes. Not that I would anyways. Pizzle, any uh, multi-floor house slides these days? No. No, not. I think maybe one day in my future. I hope so. Roland Holman. Hey, quit my job a year ago to play full-time, but struggling to see an end game with poker. Should I go back? Um, if you're considering it, then I think the answer is yes. Obviously, I don't have enough information about your situation, but go back, get the job security, play poker a little bit on the side. You'll play better with that job security in mind, and you'll build up enough. Hopefully, eventually, if you build up enough bankroll and enough confidence and results over time, that you can you, you can always go back again to poker. But... Um, if you're starting to feel, if you're starting to have those doubts, then you're probably not like in a great headspace to to make the most out of poker, and uh, it's it's you know affecting your your it's affecting your life. Um, so yeah, I would go back. Uh, Lutzel asking Phil if he would like to see a heads-up PLO WSOP event is like asking if he wants to see a Phil Galfon look-alike bracelet. Um, all right, so I think this is pr like can be shoved. Is it better to just call though? I don't know. Um, he's gonna play. I think it's. I think it might be better to just call because he's gonna play pretty perfectly against a shove and like fold. <clears throat> call every stronger ace. Fold some of the weaker aces. I don't know. I'm probably too nitty, but I think, like, I would rather shove ace three suited. Is that silly? That's probably silly. Um, I'll check the turn. Could really use some time bank back. I wonder if on the final table we get more. Probably not. I don't think their software does advanced things like that. Big bet turn. It's a good sizing. Um, Big bad turn. I think people, I mean, I don't know him. Mike Joseph, I should look him up. I think, I don't know, I folded. <laughs> so ace 10 offsuit against the under the gun open is, what are we, six handed? Seems kind of close. I don't know. Um, gonna fold. Seems close. Do I watch any slots streamers on Twitch? I don't. I don't. Under, I don't really understand that. A lot of people find that really interesting. I don't. I don't see why. It seems boring to me. Carlos says greetings from Mexico. Phil, I learned a lot from you. Thank you and welcome. So we get the call. And the raise. I mean, I can't do anything with these three off. <clears throat> Jorge, watching you. Play and learning is very awesome. Good luck. I hope you win and get the bracelet. Or hey, from uh, George from California. Thank you very much. I hope I get the bracelet as well. I think a seven offsuit from the cutoff. I'll fold.
Cakes Hash, does an online bracelet mean as much to you as a live bracelet? That's a great question. I think just, I think not quite as much, but I can't, I can't really put my finger on why. <clears throat> but it still would mean a lot to me, for sure. see if anything abnormal happened there. I, I doubt it, given the showdown. But we'll just take a look. <clears throat> so limp check, you limp king, queen off. Check, check. Uh, no, that was fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fixture wonders why I'm so thirsty. I don't know. I'm always thirsty. I... <laughs> basically just always thirsty most people struggle to drink a lot of water it's very easy for me it's it would be hard for me not to uh, I guess this is a fold My my short stack play is not the strength <clears throat> of my no limit hold'em game, and so you know this part is I'll be I'll be doubting myself a lot, but I'll still you know go for it if I think it's if I think it's right, whatever the spot may be. This one is going to be a fold. Did I ever go broke playing poker or just straight up? Well, not straight up, certainly, but I but I haven't gone broke. I've I've lost half my role many times, but I always step back down and and uh build back up or have so far. <laughs> it's gonna be a fold. All right, looks like our table changed, so I'm going to ah, queen-jack offsuit from the cutoff. I think it's going to be an open. Uh, I'm going to open up poker news and make sure I know who I'm playing against. There might be some tanking going on for like Greg Merson. Greg Merson, nice. Um, not nice because I want to be playing against him. Just he's a good guy. Happy he's doing well. So interesting flop. Um, my hand's pretty good for doing a lot of things with. <clears throat> Can go either way on the flop, obviously. I think I bet turn. Oh, I got my time bank back somehow. And there'll be 140 in the pot on the river. probably bluff this hand um, for some sizing. 
Ace nine suited will play. I think I got moved to the slightly slower table. So we're we have ten players remaining. They're all pay jumps now, so it is kind of. I mean, it's advantageous to take your time, but I I just want a bracelet, so. King six five rainbow. You can start with a bet. You don't have to. <clears throat> but I think in these spots where like early position against big blind, you just err on the side of aggression. On the turn, it's kind of tough because there are a lot of uh, a lot of draws that would make better bets than this. But it's also a really good spot to bet in general. Um, I'm torn. I guess I just wait for any gut shot and blast, and with this hand, just check. But he's going to be folding preflop with like all the 10, 10 6 off, 10 5 off. He didn't raise flop, so like he has a lot of one pair, and you can put one pair in a tough spot. Um, here it's pretty tempting to raise to rep like a 10. Um, but I don't think I rep it very well. Um. He has some bluffs, not that many. Not enough for me to call, I think. Yeah. Like the problem on this flop, I check back a lot of like queen, queen, and jack, jack, and I don't know. Can raise 10x, but you don't need a bluff every time. Ace King offsuit definitely going in if they will allow me to put it in. And I think this stack depth is just a jam, not like a small 3 bet to induce. I think you can small 3 bet the suited. I feel like my alarm's going off. I have to check something. happened all right hang on um i'm gonna text my wife i don't know why the like the garage door opened by itself um i mean i'm supposed to bet range here One's our break, five minutes, okay. I guess I check turn um, and check call, and then we take it from there. This is very bizarre. Sorry for the, uh, well, for being distracted. <laughs> 
I can't really uh, leave my computer though unless someone's actually broken into our house in which case I should probably leave my computer uh, we'll check this down too bad full queen deuce Uh, that's going to be a fold. Uh, I'm going to make sure nobody's broken into my house on this break. In two minutes, 45 seconds. It'd be pretty bad timing to have somebody break in there. There aren't a lot of good times, but... Sorry for uh, being distracted. Awesome gamer asks, how do you decide to take a high variance or low variance line like when you do flatted with ace nine suited? Um, I was, <clears throat> I'm not really opposed to variance here. Um, there, I mean, like the players remaining are all good, and uh, it's not like I, and I'm gonna need some variance to, uh, like I'm gonna need to get all in sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I kind of just thought ace-nine suited was like a really playable post-flop hand that um, this will be an interesting one to look back at. Uh, really interesting, uh, really playable post-flop hand that was going to make every better hand call and a lot of the worst hands fold. I think king six suited is just a fold there. Early position open, defend. That went check call. Oh, it's kind of thin. Quarter pot river bet makes sense, I guess. I think it's kind of thin. All right. Assume there'll be a break right now. Be right back.
All right, hey everybody. Um, I don't think anybody's broken into my house. <laughs> Just checked as many rooms as I could, uh, starting with my sons. What have I missed? So <clears throat> we're eight out of ten. <laughs> Fallow, thank you for uh, for closing the garage door on your way out. Need some more water. Whoops. Oh, nightlight is on. I guess we'll keep it on. It's been good luck. I mean, I'm, I'm like uh, 99 plus percent sure that the uh, interior garage door just, it opens itself sometimes if, if we don't lock it, like the wind. So I guess we need to get that fixed. Pretty sure that's all that happened. But obviously a little scary. Brent Becker says Ace-9 suited as a mix in that spot. Cool. Thank you. I look scared. I don't think I look scared, but I was maybe. <laughs> it was a little scary. Stuart Pryor, think of how successful you'd be if you actually hit a flop every now and again. Yeah, I haven't hit well, I mean I ran hot earlier in the tournament. It's been a little slow as of late. But here we are with eights. We were looking for fold, fold, button raise, and then small blind cold call, and then I shove. As played, I think we're just ripping this in. I don't think it makes sense to wait for a, like a safe flop. Yeah, that's a shove. Good luck, us. Right, this is a shove. It's got to be. It doesn't have to be. It could be close, but I think it's a shove. And I think it, you know, like ending it pre-flop is, is a good result. AJ Devine says, shoving pre can very often be the lower variance route. That's true. Because um, a lot of times, you take it down pre, um, like that, and then occasionally you get it in flipping. But like, yeah, sometimes people misestimate or overestimate the variance involved in shoving it in pre, when like most of the results come in 100% equity spots, aka they, they fold. So King-9 suited, I think, is is a defend here out of the small blind. It might not be a, a with like pay jumps the way they are. But I think it is. I'm not concerned about pay, but I mean like his opening range might be tighter because of the way pay jumps are. Second pair, he might go with 100% C-bet strategy here, including with like, you know, eights without a diamond. So I don't, I don't think I can fold to a small flop bet. Check, check. Um, I think clear turn check. I kind of, I mean, I, I kind of like my hand. I kind of think I might have the best hand more often than, I don't know. People like to bet ASEX a lot. People like to bet a single diamond a lot. 
um, with the exception of like six six with a diamond. But even that, I think, likes to bet. So I don't know. I'm I'm obviously not value betting. Uh, but I think it goes check check. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess actually has a lot of king x that has me beat. But uh, I'm just talking. My hand like my hand's very standard to uh, to play this way. Yeah, king queen. Okay. Ten four off. We can lay down. <laughs> Brad McNary. Phil comes back with some blood on him, acts like nothing happened, and wins a bracelet. <laughs> yep, still alive, guys. Thank you for for hoping for that. I was hoping for the same thing. Um, when security goes off, doesn't police or security come? No, they call. Um, they call Farah first. Phil, do you like? I'd rather not talk about gun control. Just uh, try drinking more water next time. Yeah. I think that uh, obviously the U.S. could improve upon. Uh, on its situation right now. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I should have just, I should have uh, changed my shirt, acted like everything was normal. Put some ketchup on it. I wasn't thinking fast enough. It's not thinking fast enough. Oof. I am uh <clears throat> I am tired. But feel fine. Uh like play wise. Glad that we went hand for hand. This was getting annoying. Um I'll open the other two. I guess it went hand-for-hand because one player busted. Okay. Mm Can't be folding Jack-9 suited, right? So the problem, I'm not really concerned about a, a pay jump, but people might assume I am and then fight back, <laughs> which I don't want when I have Jack-9 suited. All right, cool. I just realized I blocked the uh, lobby. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Move this table over here. I'm going to lay down the 3-4. I, <laughs> I just had a flash of like misclicking this and calling it off. That would be something. This mouse is actually a little bit like sometimes it, it, it slides super far in one direction. I should switch to a regular mouse. I'll be okay. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> All right. He track suited, 20 big blinds. Um, I think I'm just ripping it. I don't really see... Uh, yikes. I really don't know this spot. Um, this is tough. So, like, he's got a decent number of three-bet bluffs here. He's going pretty big, though, against the bigs. I don't know. Uh, I forgot that I have to click my time bank. Could have saved me. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, honestly. I think shoving is uh, fine. The thing is, his like he might have to call off with whatever he has, which hurts the value of this shove a lot, even though like he's calling off with hands that are worse than mine. Um, like part of the EV is getting the folds preflop. So I don't know about that one. That that was really close, I think. Like ace-queen suited, I would have put it in. Um, it's not all that different, honestly. Nine players remaining. Scott says I'm playing really bad. I might be. I uh, am not a uh, no limit hold'em tournament player, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, boy, Vic. Hey, curious. When you started from when you started playing poker full-time. So always the plan to devote more of your career to online rather than live tournaments. Have you always felt you had more of an edge online? You know, I started out, I mean, I was in Madison, Wisconsin playing at, at college and just playing online. So like online was my only option there. I wasn't like in Vegas and I wasn't, tra I was in school. I wasn't traveling to play poker. Um, I think I want to watch this hand back. Actually, hold on. I don't want to misclick. So I'll just move it off to the side. Okay, final table. Um, but I will watch that hand back. Sorry, it's off screen. So yeah, Q Poker doing some like thin uh, protection value betting stuff. Roland, yeah, go back to being a summer pro and enjoy it. And uh, I think, I think, yeah, the added stress is tough. It, it changes it a lot. I'm glad that you. I'm glad you found that helpful. I hope, I hope, uh, I don't know. I hope to hear an update from you in the future that things are going well. Loka says, "Who wears the pants? You were Farah. That would be Farah." She might. She actually might disagree a little bit, but it's it's fair. Just telling Twitter that we're at a final table. If they'd like to come join us. Um, can I show you the other table when I finish? So there's no other table left. Um, oh, you're on, we're on a delay. So 
Sorry. We've got the the cool final table background and everything. Um, so I wonder if I can get some reads that I don't, I mean, all these players are regulars and like, they're not going to be doing anything crazy. Trevor, Phil, you should stream more often. Poker knowledge combined with laid back vibes have made this by far one of the chillest poker streams I've seen in a while. Good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sometimes I think my laid back vibes are, uh, well, boring, <laughs> for uh, lack of a better way to put it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I have heard some other people say the same, so I, I'm glad that the people here appreciate uh, me for me. And uh, a lot of great streamers out there have a lot more energy, and they do a great job ma making it entertaining. I do it uh, this way. <laughs> and I think, you know, a little something for everybody. Everybody likes something different. Patrick Ramey pointing out that somebody's note said type bad. Yeah, they all say type bad if they're yellow because WSOP, it's not my note. Um, but when you, uh, this is WSOP's like default ranking system. And I just haven't changed these, but I, I know what my colors mean to me. So I'm not saying everybody else here is type bad, although that'd be funny to, <laughs> I should go with that. All right, so I mean we're we're eight handed now, so a fair bit of folding. Yeah, with the ace jack suited, it's not like he's three betting ace ten to call off. I mean, but he is three betting ace ten as kind of like a bluff, um, and then would have to call off against me, I think. Jonathan Williams says, I was literally yelling for you to click time bank with Ace Jack of Diamonds. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't hear it. So, yeah, this, this part of the tournament, not my strong suit, um, but I do think if I can make it to, like, top four, top three, I do pretty well shorthanded, um, especially if we can, like, I don't know, some like some coolers and some bust outs so that we can have some deeper stacks to play with shorthanded would be great. But at this point, I'm kind of just like, I don't want to sound like, uh, like defeated or something, but like I feel like kind of hanging on because I think that, you know, all of these players or almost all of these players, if not all of these players, have a better handle on 20 big blind poker than I do. Um, so I, don't play it. Don't study it. Now, I used to many years ago. I get the general concepts. I'm not going to be crazy far off, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to be finding a big edge at, at eight-handed twenty big blind poker. I'm just not. Six out of seven. Everybody pointing out everybody else has the same avatar. Did they just change to that on the final table? I like being different. Yikes, cooler for Mike. And that is going to make me the short stack with six remaining. I mean, that's fine. Don't really care. 
about being the short stack, but just stating facts. Being the short stack's not bad in that like people can't push me around because I don't have as much ICM pressure as everybody else. I guess this is just a fold. 8-4 suited, I would call. But yeah, I mean... So here's an example of where I don't know what to do. Um, this could be a jam. I think it's a jam, right? I think so. Kayopo asks if I could warp back in time to 2010. What would my win rate be in the nosebleed games? Um, it depends heads up or... Like heads up anything at 2010, probably like 30 big blinds per 100, 35. Um, and then six max, maybe it'd be like 10, uh, maybe eight or something. It's You can have much higher win rates uh, heads up. Wow, almost 11,000 subs. That's awesome. So this was... Uh, <laughs> got a lot of subscribers. Thank you all for subscribing. Um, and for being here watching. This has been fun, regardless of how it turns out. It's, unless I actually am getting robbed, then then it would not be. But every other scenario, pretty fun. Fun first stream here. Justin says, yeah, please stream more. Thank you. I, 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 I will. I'll stream again for sure. Matt Van Dam says, Phil, can you say without further ado, please? I guess I just did, right? Oof, this mouse is, is scaring me a little bit. <laughs> Queen Bee Poker, thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying Gary Clark. Watching for four hours. This has been one of the best I've watched. Thank you. I'm, I I really appreciate that. Um, Michael, more kind words. <laughs> Other Michael. It looks like a table of Agent Smiths and a guy with an orange beard. Yeah. Edward Park, another uh, fan of the very calm, low energy vibes that I emit. So that that makes me happy. Sometimes, you know. In starting a YouTube channel and, and, and thinking about streaming in general and content creation in general, I didn't do it for a long time because I thought that I didn't have the personality for it because, you know, a lot of content creators have are, are high energy, um, high energy, make bold statements, things like that. I, I'm, I'm none of that. Um, so it's nice to know. In, in the end, I decided to do it because I figured, yeah, it might be better to be that way, but there's still, there's still going to be some people who want to watch someone like me so but uh it's it's nice to to hear that everybody's everybody's into it andy millsaps points out that vlog phil would think everyone here is type bad because i'm obviously miles ahead of the competition that is true all right how did this hand play out with king eight first i'm going to play this a nine eight suited hand i hope Facing a min raise or less. Um, it's definitely not crazy to rip this in. And I think maybe from the small blind it, it's a shove, but I think from the big blind just defending and seeing three is the way to go. Interesting three to see. Hmm. So, I mean, we call against a small bat. And, yeah, it's a tiny bat. Very clear call. I don't think raising this makes any sense.
Yeah. Um, I think clear river check. He'll have some 10x hands that he plays this way. Like, there are a lot of hands that might play this way that have me beat. I don't think... I mean, I could go for value, but I think 9-8 is too thin. Like, ace-9, king-9, I could start considering it. Um, but I think 9-8 is just too weak. 10x, sure. Could go for a small value bet. But yeah, I think it's too weak. Obviously, like, not an unreasonable river check shove, but, I don't know. Yeah, ace-9. Um, but I'm not expecting a lot of bets, to be honest. Okay, sixes with not many big blinds. Did not want early position to open. I have no idea what to do, frankly. Um, if I shove 185, yeah, you can fold a decent amount of stuff. I think it would have been a shove. Uh, now it's just a fold. Hopefully he shoves and this guy saved me money. And Christopher Robin says, pretty sure the optimal 20 big blind strat is to get hands that win. So I'm sure you're fine versus the field. <laughs> yeah. That is the strat. Now I'm down to almost 10 big blinds. I guess I have 11. Exactly. Wow. That's a lot of big blinds to go in from Q Poker there. King 5 off. We'll lay it down. I mean, it's important, I think, in these spots not to force anything, but also not to be afraid. Um, because, I mean, even if I were not bracelet focused, the laddering up is not worth that much. Like, all the money is in the top anyways. So I'm not too concerned about laddering up. I just want all the chips somehow. Michael Clyburn, thank you very much. Richard Carmichael, um, I I bubbled the other, I mean near bubbled the other tourney. I think I got like 360th and they paid 300. Stefan, thank you. How much am I guaranteed? So sixth place is fifty-two thousand um, for a five thousand buy-in. So a nice, a nice payday for sure. Would I rather win this bracelet or get a hundred k YouTube subs? I, would, I think it'd be better for my career to get the YouTube subs, but I think I'd still rather win the bracelet. It's I, I just, you know, gotta chase the glory. Derek Wong, thank you very much. Dan C. Oh, you're the one that asked that question. How's it going, man? Mitch says, say hi to Farah. She's asleep now, or hopefully asleep after the alarm woke her up. Um, I think this is a fold with King 3 off. I could be wrong. I think probably... Well, I'm not going to tell you what my calling range is because then if I'm way off, these guys are going to shove differently. <laughs> But I think that's a fold. I'm not entirely sure. Um, obviously, a7 off going to be a shove if folded to. Now it's going to be a fold. Jay, very kind words. Thank you. Uh, here it's it's 12:30 a.m. So just past midnight. Uh, this was actually there were no re-entries here. So this is just the one bullet. Lance, you make a good point that uh, a lot of the vloggers are not super high energy either. And uh, yeah, I guess I think of high energy guys like, um, well, a lot of streamers are high energy. I guess vloggers are not quite as much, or not always.
Edward Park says, to be honest, Phil, I think it's quite refreshing when someone of your caliber still gets into situations where you go, I'm not sure what to do. Uh, it makes you feel human. Yeah, I'm, I think what people, a lot of people, the way they talk about poker is they speak with a lot of certainty in spots where they're not actually certain. And I don't see the point of that. Um, I usually don't know what to do. Uh, or I shouldn't say usually, but well, in this game, I usually don't know what to do. But even in Heads Up PLO, where, uh, which is by far my strongest game, I make mistakes every five, ten hands, um, or get confused. I wouldn't say confused, but be unsure about what to do every five, ten hands. So it's not. Uh, you just call Jacks there, pre. I really would like a hand that I could shove with, but can't choose my hands. But yeah, I mean, okay, no, he three bet jacks. Small bet flop, check, 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 check. That looks good from Jack. That looks good from both of them. Um, but yeah, you know, poker's complicated. Sean Smith, good morning to you, and thank you for the good luck wishes. Uh, do I care about ICM or bracelet? I care about the bracelet, for sure. I mean, if we were playing um, 10 times the stakes, then I I'd care about both. But <laughs> uh, but I care about the bracelet here, purely. Uh, Stefan, I did make an appearance on Two Months, Two Million, yeah. Plato Poker, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Christopher Robbins says 6-6. Six, six. Would have been barely plus EV as a reshove there. Okay, yeah. that's. I'm glad to hear that I was on the right track. Um, Ace-4 is a shove. I don't think King-4 suited to shove here with that many big blinds. And off we go to pay the big blind again. And Not thrilled with it, but, you know, what can I do? Yeah, I know. I'm looking to get aggressive. I haven't had, I haven't had a hand that I think is good enough. Maybe you guys disagree, but I mean, at this point, it's tough because even if I like double up, it's <laughs> on the short stack by a lot. So I'm gonna need a lot of good things to happen at this point. like the you know the least fun part of tournaments when you're when you're short and card dead or like situation situationally card dead you have like the right hands in the wrong spots hmm. all right so jack 10 off is a call jack nine off probably a call is 10 nine off i don't know Okay, we get to see a flop. You think this is not the hand I choose? Like, this flops pretty well. That's a pretty good flop for me. I kind of just think I have the best hand. He shoves ace axe, he shoves king axe. He shoves a lot of queen axe. Um, okay. Um, does he have a three? I don't know. I mean, I think I have... <laughs> I don't love the deuce. Like a three and a deuce, if his limp fold range contains like three X and deuce X quite a bit. Um, am I gonna call 10 high? I feel like I am. <sighs> okay. He can definitely value bet a three. I don't think he's value betting a deuce. 
What if he has... Well, why didn't he bluff the flop, though? With 7-4? Or 3x, for that matter. Jack x. Yeah, maybe he has a lot of Jack x. Because I think he just bluffs... Like, I think he bluffs air on the flop a lot. So I'm changing my read. Uh, I'm changing my read and folding. Another fold. I mean, I don't even think I can limp with Jack Deuce offsuit. But I'm going to need some help soon. Type Rob, thanks. Glad to be here streaming. All right, this one got to be a fold. <laughs> Thank you guys for telling me... Uh, <laughs> some some hands that I need to put it in with and what I don't. Nicholas, let's talk about the wild college days in Madison. My college days were not too wild. I was never... Uh, I, I was always kind of a, a grown-up. Tyler Vineyard. Thanks for being here and the good luck wishes. I, uh, let's see. I really wish, that, I really hope that uh, I can make a run for you guys. I mean, I know this is a run. I'm the final six, but I'm going to need a lot of help to uh, to make some moves at this point. <laughs> Look outside, says, even chop, play for bracelet. All right, I'm in. Plato Poker says, I called Domino's and just ordered a double up for you. Get ready. Thank you. I'd love a double up and a pizza. Edmund from Singapore. Thank you for the run. Good vibes. Um, I do think it's important to... I don't know... Could I have made mistakes in the past hour? Certainly, uh, probably have. But um, I'm glad that I at least was able to show like when you're not getting cards, you don't need to force anything. Sometimes, I mean, I'm not really showing it because I'm probably gonna lose this tournament soon. But uh, you don't need to force anything. Sometimes, like the cards aren't there, the cards don't cooperate, and you just wait and uh, wait for a spot. And if you never get a great spot, so be it. But uh, forcing money in in a subpar spot is is not the way to to handle a kind of slow slow run. All right. As mentioned, we're waiting for our spot. Here's our spot. So we're just going to shove ace-king offsuit, and actually kind of what we prefer to happen, even with a hand this strong, is just to take the blinds. Um, you know, 42k out there. With 100% equity if we don't get called. Getting called by the next player to act is not ideal, but... Whatever will happen will happen. Wow, a call and a jam. I mean, that's not a bad situation at all. It's just <laughs> now it is. Um, but getting getting that player's dead money out. Um, but unfortunately, that's uh, that's GG. Um, but that was a great situation, like an opportunity to almost quadruple up. Um, but unfortunately, that's the end of the road. Sixth place. I did what I could, um, and I'm not too. Ooh, and I reached bronze status here, which is pretty exciting. Um, thank you all for watching. I guess, um, yeah, it's late. I'm, I'm excited to go to bed, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, I, was, I was a little hopeful there. I'm a little bummed because uh, getting to quadruple up there with Ace-King 
would have been would have been exciting. Uh, so we get 90, 90, 90 plus that 40. Uh, could have taken us up to like almost three, you know, 3:30. Um, we'd be right back in it, but still the short stack. Um, I appreciate you all so much for watching and for all the kind words. Um, I'm sorry that I couldn't give a better run. I really wanted to uh, win a bracelet on stream. That would have been really, really awesome. Um, but yeah, I appreciate all of you. Moonlight Master, thanks for holding it down this whole time. I really appreciate it. Um, everybody else, yeah, thanks for being here. I'll do this again. I'll, I'll, I'll stream again this series at some point. I don't know if... Uh, so like the online events are every Sunday, I think, and I don't know if I'll stream every Sunday. It kind of depends wh what I'm playing um otherwise but uh i'll definitely do it again so um for everybody who uh who watched the stream i appreciate it for everybody who subscribed i really appreciate it um this was uh yeah this was really cool i uh again I'm supposed to be showing more emotion i am bummed i i, I wish that i uh that i could have taken it down but um pretty pleased with with how i played in the tournament overall and i um, very pleased with this stream and, and all of you. So thanks very much. I will uh, wrap it up here. Um, yeah, I'll wrap it up here. And I will see you all next time. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good morning. Have a good afternoon. Is it after? I mean, it's afternoon somewhere. Yeah. And uh, see you next time. Take care, everybody.